I got a mic. Is my mic on? <laughs> okay, we're live. Hey, are folks, we, live? we are starting a minute or two early because who? Chris Pine. Oh, Chris Pine. The Chris Pine. Anyways, I hear you're on an airplane. It's about to take off. Maybe on a jet plane. Okay, we got a 240 Shinkiro Guto here. Uh, let me pull it up underneath the camera here. Uh, I love you can see just tiny little bits of the cladding inside the core there from the Damascus. Uh, nice sharpening up at the tip here. Nice and thin. Uh, can I get a control? Whoa. <laughs> We're using our new camera today. I don't know if we have this one. This brand, but... Oh, we'll figure it yeah, out. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so really nice, even bevel, not hollow ground at all. Uh, I would say it's also not a hamaguri edge, so it's it doesn't taper. It tapers like a nice, clean, even V. It's it's thin behind the edge, but not terribly thin. It has a nice distal taper. Uh, but uh, nice and thick right here at the, uh, the handle. Gives you a nice comfortable grip. Uh, beautiful. All right, well, we got to start our countdown, folks. So we'll see you in five minutes. Um, let me show that 210 real quick. Chris, I hope you have a safe flight. Glad, glad you asked because we wanted to make that happen for you. And uh, yeah, we'll see you later. See everybody else in, in five minutes.
Hello. Hi. Happy Friday. It's Friday. <clears throat> gotta get down on Friday. You gotta do what? Get down. Don't you tell me what to do. Welcome to the uh, Knifeware Fall Garage Sale Unboxing Live Stream and Q&A 2023. That's right. That's right. <laughs> All of those things are correct. Yeah, yeah, we're here. We're showing you the knives that we've got for garage sale. We've got a table covered in stuff here. Yeah, we we have another table covered in stuff and behind that a table <laughs> covered in stuff. And, and a mystery wheel. We're, we're going to systematically go through the stuff while answering questions that you might have. Yeah, we had a bit of a cold open there uh, because somebody, Chris Pine, the famous Chris Pine, wanted to see a knife before his plane. He was off. in Wolverine, right? Is that Chris Pine? Oh, maybe. Um, he's been in a lot of stuff and I couldn't tell you any of it. I think he's a cook. Okay. I don't know. Like like the movie star is a cook or the Chris Pine? I think Chris Pine's a cook. Yeah. Okay, I got yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's more likely. Okay, tell us how this works. You can ask questions. How, how are we structuring things? Let people know. Yeah, so we've got a whole bunch of knives that are brand new that we've never seen before. Uh, like literally an eight foot table stacked like six or seven high. And so we're going to go through them kind of line by line today and unbox them in a vague order. Um, we've got, we're probably going to start with uh, some Tadafusa. We've got some actually some guests from Japan. If you can see, that's why Naoto's not on camera right now. He's showing our guests from Japan around. Um, they're our friends from Samurai Edge, and they're just checking out our warehouse. So um, Naoto will be joining us in a bit here, but we'll probably start with some of their stuff, and then we'll just kind of go through all the garage sale stock today. We're live for about four hours, so the first few hours we're going to try to get through that new stuff as we answer your questions, and we'll, we'll do our best to keep up with your questions. Um, and then at the end, we'll just have uh, like an hour of open Q&A. For folks, you know, ideally, you can get help finding a knife before the sale starts, so that on Monday morning you can just click on the knife you want instead of like yeah. trying to ask questions. That, that, that is the point. Is that is the point. Is on Monday morning. There's a ton of stuff that goes on sale. If you're new to this, what we do here at the garage sales, we buy all kinds of great stuff. When we're, you know, Kevin just got back from Japan. He finds cool stuff throughout the year. We meet new blacksmiths. Sometimes there's products that we just wouldn't ever have enough of to stock our stores properly. So. We have a garage sale. It starts on Mondays because we all used to be broke ass cooks. There's really great deals at this sale. So opening the doors on Mondays gets most of the cooks around first crack at the stuff. Um, now we're all online. Uh, there's a ton of stuff that goes on sale first thing on Monday and uh, it goes very quickly. So for those of you that know the drill, today's about getting to figure out what things you're going to want uh, to, to buy first thing on Monday morning. So let's strategize over the weekend. Let's answer your questions here and now and get you sort of positioned to, uh, to make that, that purchase first thing on, on Monday morning. What time does it start on Monday morning? You're not Nathan. Where did you come from? You came from Secret Japan. Here. You came from Japan. What time does the sale start on Monday morning? 8 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. 8 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. Don't forget there's a time change on Sunday. There is a time change on Sunday. I was going to say, isn't it daylight time? But no, it will be 8 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. That's our time here. We're standing here in Calgary. Uh, but uh, yeah, the store in Ottawa opens at 10 a.m., but that's 8 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. So that's when the doors open on the website. Uh, you can go to all of the stores. We actually don't sell the store inventory on Mondays. Uh, because of a lot of reasons, but mostly because it just ends up being a real hassle for everyone involved. So online, best strategy, buy online first. And if you have a store in the city that you're located in, head on down to the shop, check out what else they've got. And you know, like as always, we find, you know, you've ordered a bunch of stuff for this and, and there's gonna be stuff that shows up on Monday and we won't get it, a, you know, in stock until like Wednesday or Thursday, so. I can give you some hint though. Like, oh, you do? Yeah. Oh, okay, good, good. Some, okay. Some yeah, photos yeah. right now for some of the stuff. Check back later in the Check week. Check back later yeah. in the week. There is, I know there is like super exciting life. Oh. Coming What's it from, called? Can we tell them? I could probably, hopefully they will arrive on time though. Oh, we don't want to disappoint people. <laughs> but they, they've been shipped out of Japan. So I know that it's actually mm -hmm. on the air. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it is one of those knives, like very famous blacksmith. I've uh, been making knives with a lot of, un it's like hinting, unique yeah, pattern. It's, it's of, definitely hinting, yeah. yeah unique yeah. pattern of the uh, hammer patterns on the blade, you probably know. Oh. And he made something that's not a kitchen knife. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, I don't want it. Yeah. Maybe, it's I don't even know cool, what it is. Okay, cool, what, are we, what are we doing now? Okay, we got a couple other things that are unique this year. Um, we have wanted to reward our online shoppers. So actually this is in store too. Um, if you are spending over 300 bucks this garage sale, 
you can get a knife or logo hat, my personal favorite, or one of these three t-shirts, the Ramones, the Ramen, or the Knives for the People, 100% uh, off. It's free. The discount is automatic on the website. You just have to add the shirt or hat that you want to your cart as well. Uh, yeah. Wait, so if you buy 300 small Canadian dollars worth of stuff, you're going to mm -hmm. get one of these things for free? You get to choose it? Yeah. Awesome. You just, yeah, add, you, you just add which one of the three or the four Ooh, that you want. Ooh, okay, cart. cool. This, this. We also have... Another exciting thing, and this is exclusive for people that are tuning into the live stream Monday, because you guys always come and hang out with us for several hours, and we want to, we appreciate it. We want to, to do something for you. So we built this ridiculous wheel of wheels. And so we're going to spin the wheel every hour on Monday, and whatever <laughs> it lands on, it's a bunch of stuff that's either free or half price. So we've got, yeah. like, yeah, food scoops. Yeah, that's true. Food scoop, 50% so, off right now. And that's anytime you buy a knife, you can... Add whatever the hourly deal is to your cart, and it will automatically get that discount. King Tong. Yeah, King Tong. Yep. That's so great. Oops, no, I no. love that, Nathan. I love that you showed up at work one day, <laughs> and you built a clacker wheel like you're a carnival barker. Because I think <laughs> carnival barker, to make one carnival those, barker was in your past life. Yeah, like, you definitely. were at some point. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. step right up, and I'll guess your weight. <laughs> like, yeah. that was you Sometime at some point. Sometime in the... 20s, yeah. I, I feel like this is manifest destiny that you have built a clacker wheel for this. Sweet. I'm so excited by this, and it's just fun. So let's let's have fun, yeah. right? What yeah. else are we trying to yeah. do here, Absolutely. really? Right? So yeah, yeah. Um, I think that's everything before we get started. That's all the housekeeping, more or less. We are going to be live on Monday, probably start about quarter to eight in the morning. Um, that is a great time for you to ask questions, just if you're kind of generally shopping the sale. But if you want to kind of pre-shop and know what you want before the sale starts. Today's the day to get your questions in. Yeah, um, yeah, we'll be around until four four Mountain <clears throat> Time. So, so sometimes we get regular questions like, "Can I see great Nikiris that are under two hundred and fifty dollars?" Right. So we're gonna try and stagger some of those standard questions in there. Um, but other things that are interesting to know, like from my personal experience buying knives, that I want to find out about a knife that that you might not know to ask are, you know, obviously there's the length. There's you know, how's it feel? Where's it balanced? Uh, and we got a scale, we got calipers, we can measure stuff. But, you know, now and I, whenever we're picking up a new knife, we're always grabbing the blade. And I'll show you. We're always grabbing a blade, and then we, we put our fingers just behind the edge, right? And then we're pulling back up towards the spine. We're trying to feel how this knife is beveled. We also turn the knife, and we look at this part of the blade here. It's, oh, I hope we can figure this out on the camera. Uh, it's it's a choil. This is the part that you are all knife nerds watching, obviously. So you all know that this is called the choil of the knife. But when you look down at that, you get to see how thick it is behind the edge. You get to see the shape of the bevel and how the knife has been sharpened. Um, what other kind of stuff? Oh, you know, we always look to make sure the knife is straight. That's, you know, when we sell knives, when we pack them up and ship them, we go through a big process like 28 steps that we do of checking the edge. We check the straightness of the blade. We check the straightness of the edge. We make sure the handle's on straight. Mm. We make sure there's no real big scuffs or dings or dents. Uh, we test it. We test the sharpness, I mean. Uh, all kinds of stuff. We really do ensure that the knife is in good nick before we send it out the door. Yeah. Uh, but um, yeah. We get, a, we get a quite a few that's like, sometimes that the blade isn't from the, the spine, <clears throat> but it's not from the edge side and like it's little. Yeah like this yeah. and you know we we catch them actually quite good yeah yeah well, i have quite a few knives that's like oh okay sit aside and we'll fix them and yeah. you know make yeah. sure everything goes out it's you know it's such prime condition right yeah that's our job yeah yeah absolutely. yeah, yeah. great Should um we start? are we starting yeah we let's have some do stuff it. at the end of the table there to get you uh you know what i'm gonna start right here at ajikataya because these are stunners um, this young man is a phenomenal blacksmith and son of a phenomenal blacksmith named Hinora. And also, he's Hinora as well. Just seen him. That's true. <laughs> uh, his, his name is Hinora, just like his dad's name is. Uh, that, of course. So, it, it, the, his father's really famous. He's, he's a craftsman, but he's also uh, an artist. And, uh, and just an exceptional history of making incredible knives. Uh, so, as is a lot of tradition in Japan and a lot of places, we, we, you know, we follow in our father's footsteps and he's, he's doing an excellent job at that. Uh, Naoto and I actually got to watch him making knives a couple years back and 
he is getting better and better. Look right? at the shape. It's so cool. So this is that Hakata style, right? With this spine that rolls up to the top and then the, the like Kiritsuki style tip. Yeah. We like to, we call it the K tip. Now tell me about them. Like, what do you know about this? This is white number two and stainless? Stainless clad. Oh, wow, beautiful. Yeah. It's, Hakata shape has been kind of becoming a little bit more popular, right? The, uh, so Hakata is a place in the uh, Kyushu, the area is called Hakata. Famous for uh, ramens and mm, some mm -hmm. of the, uh, We do need the history. Tell us the lesson. Give like us that. the lesson, Professor Naoto. As far as I know, there is probably only one or two blacksmiths who I guess the um, authentically making knives in Hakata. The Hakata knife in Hakata. Hakata shape knife in Hakata. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. One of whom is the uh, Oba-san, who is the uh, master of the uh, Miyazaki-san. Who, who, that's why his uh, Miyazaki's knives are looking like that. But it's such a versatile shape, right? It's got really nice, tall, <coughs> he, like really tall at the heel. It's got a nice swoop curve so that you can rock it very nicely. The way he forges is fantastic. It's not only the uh, the shape, the way he forges, it's got a really nice thick part piece where it, it attached to the handle, like right, right there. Yeah, when it's widening just before where my fingers are here. Yeah, and it tapers very nicely towards the, uh, towards the tip. We got a quick question. Uh, Tom was asking, how is that functionally different than a bunka? Not much. <laughs> I, I think this one in particular has got a fair curve on that profile mm -hmm. of the edge. You know, one of the things I like about a Nakiri, and one of the benefits I think you get from that blade that doesn't taper up towards the tip is, is my turn. <laughs> you get more steel, right? You got a bunch of steel right up here. And I feel like when you're chopping something, you're picking the knife up and dropping it down, you've got more weight to throw around up at the tip. And Ooh. I think that's one of those things that helps with the follow through, right? And I think when you've got this Hakata, you've got that fine tip like you do with the Bunko, but you've got a lump of metal up here. So you've got some mass. Uh, so when you're doing that chopping motion, right? You know when you chop a cabbage uh, and the knife gets about halfway through and then you have to finish by pushing? You've got a bigger, heavier knife. You're picking it up and it's going to follow through. It definitely makes sense. It does have the bit more weight right here so that it's easier to do this mm -hmm. motion. And uh, uh, tell me how many of your friends have one of these. None, yep. right? So, I mean, the aesthetic <laughs> of this knife is super cool. Yep. I mean, functionally, that's also helpful. Ah, oh, look at that. that so that, cool. How that it... makes total sense, actually, doing this yep. motion. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I, this is one of the ones that's on my list for this sale yep. because it is such a unique shape. Yeah. Yeah. I also really like the petty that we got here. And to me, this is jumping the... the I, don't call, I, don't I know, wouldn't it, call it a petty. Yeah, it, it's like a, this is like a small Guto. Yeah. And frankly, I find I have a couple of these knives, like the Yuki Kobanka. I have a couple of old Masakagis that are like this, but having a short but tall knife gives you like a mini Guto, a lot of functionality to this knife. You can make it do a lot. Uh, I think these are really valuable in a, in a set, that, that height for a lot of reasons. Yeah. Oh, I do actually have the, his Nakiri and it's fantastic. It's, oh yeah? Yeah, it's very, yeah. very similar to this. Yeah. Next. Let's, yeah, let's talk about that. In between, real quickly, one of our friends was yes. asking, will you guys get any oh. more of the Yu Kurosaki Chukabochos? It is in order. <laughs> I, I double checked the, our back order the other day, and yes, they are on order. Haven't oh, seen them for the last couple years. This. this is like another, and this is Tadafusa, uh, and this is like another little Hakata style, right? That's beautiful, a little shorter. Right, and we got stainless clad on Aogami number two, blue number two, carbon steel. A little bit like more reasonable, I guess. The uh, yeah, two yeah, twenty-five. It's a great price. Yeah. yeah. We oh, have listen, Tadafusa quality is really hard to beat. It, it very, very for, well for, made. For a dollar, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, and what is this? So oh, that this is, is Tadafusa cool. SLD Tsuchime. Tsujihiki. This is very light. Oh, is it? It's, um, I don't know if I could tell the story about that particular knife, but basically there's someone who wanted to make this Tsuchime pattern and they made a whole bunch once and they found it's too hard to make them with the Tsuchime on, so they decided to 
not to make it anymore. So that's like one of those knives that's basically kicking around. Still fantastic knife. It's like very wow. nice. Wow, yeah, and that's nice. This is like and, this knife is the essence of the garage sale. It's like yeah, right. Th this knife is never really going to be seen again, right? They made it. It didn't work for them functionally as yeah. a business. It wasn't a great idea. Yeah. This is two thirty nine, two hundred thirty nine dollars. That's what a two seventy. Yeah, a two seventy Sujihiki SLD steel with stainless steel cladding on the outside. A beautiful little is it chestnut wood? The handle? Uh, walnut. Walnut, walnut. Walnut handle? Yeah. Uh, that's a fantastic knife. Uh, and that size of blade, this is truly a great garage sale deal. Nice work now, Tony. Any, any left over? Uh, sorry, left. So, any left handed person in the, in the chat today? We have some left handed knives here. Oh. So, just so you know, like for those of you who's not really familiar with the, how the Japanese knives are made, 95% of knives that we carry are ambidextrous. They are sharpened from both sides, so you don't have to be right on totally, the handle. Yeah. There are a category of knives that's like Yanagiba, traditional Japanese knives like Yanagiba, Usuba, Debas. Those stuff are more like leaning towards the single bevel. Single bevel knives are sharpened from one side and flat on the other. It's got a little convexity, concavity there. But so it makes the either for left-handed or right-handed people. And making the left-handed bevel knives are a little bit more scarce, I guess, in Japan because people do still train them. They still whip their hand. No, they don't. I, I hope not. What? No, they don't. They don't whip their left hand if they use the uh, you know chopsticks with their left. I yeah, being right-handed is rare because you've got it beaten out of you, right? <laughs> and I think a lot of people did uh, that, are, that come from a lot of places. But uh, usually now, for the privilege of being allowed to be left-handed, you just get to pay more money for a left-handed knife. A little bit more. Yeah. yeah. But the, uh, this, is, this series, the Karafusa Hocho Kobo, has been really, really popular um, because it's the, um, the way it's been actually finished. Like, really, really well-made Yeah. for... Like <clears throat> beveling job, polishing job. Look at like how flat this that the ura or she it's called the, the. Yeah, I, I have a lot of time for these knives too. I've tried using a couple. Uh, they they do the job incredibly well. Yeah. Now tell us why you want a deba, left or right handed, doesn't matter. What are you so, gonna do with this knife? Deba is fantastic knife for a butchery. Like the butchery, the fish. Like it, mm. it is designed for a. Uh, fish butchery, like uh, filleting fish. And this is a Japanese style fish filleting yeah. blade, right? But you know what? This size, 105 deba, you know what I would use this for? Mm. Deboning chicken. Oh yeah, yeah, yep. for sure, yeah. Yep. This comes so handy for deboning a chicken, and if you're left-handed, this is Excuse the perfect me. tool for that. We only have a couple, I think, here, so, yep. you know, if you're looking for something special, you know, you know, these look like that chef's knife and it's fun. We, we often have people who've been to visit Japan as tourists and they come back and they, they bring in a knife they bought in Japan and they say, yeah, I bought this knife. It seems weird, but I need to get it sharpened. Usually I have a whole bunch of chips along the edge and it's a deba. And we're like, oh, that's cool. You got a fish filleting knife. They're like, I, I just want an all-purpose knife. And th so the shape of this knife is like our normal style chef's kitchen knife, but the purpose is very different. And the edge when they're single bevel like this, gets very, very thin. And like all Japanese knives, the harder steel we're using for the edge is giving us a sharper knife. These are supremely sharp because even though the spine's kind of thick, it comes down to uh, an edge where instead of being beveled like a V shape, it's flat on one side and about 15 degrees on the other. So it's like very, 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 very thin. Uh, the, the difference with the bevel, the knife drifts a little bit as you cut with it. So you do need to learn how the knife moves. It doesn't go straight. Like a wing, there's unequal pressure, so it's going to move, uh, which when you're cutting fish is actually quite a benefit. When you get into cutting vegetables, it, uh, it really changes things. And, and, you know, a single bevel is not a great knife for, say, like dicing uh, potatoes for a stew. It's just going to feel weird. So Jarrett is wondering how rust prone is that L L SLD? SLD is a little bit rust prone. It's kind of like in the semi. It's, it's not really. It, you know, it, like... It'll tarnish on you. I mean, I've seen a bartender who used one. So they used it for lemons and, and lime six hours a day and it stayed yeah. covered in the acid and it tarnished and it got some pitting. Um, it, I mean, it's, it's a little bit l less stainless than something like 
VG10, yeah. but it is definitely not white carbon no, or blue no, carbon. No. So. The, if you're just using them regularly, you may see a tiny bit of patina, but generally speaking, they should have enough chromium to protect that knife from rusting. It'll turn gray and cloudy, but it's not going to tarnish your feet. And because I, we just <clears throat> talked about left-handed blades, I just wanted to bring this, like, kind of skip the line and talk about this. This looks like the regular Gyuto on the, uh, like, overhead camera. <gasps> right, it just looks like the uh, regular Gyuto, right? Oh, I know what this is. On the back, it's actually single beveled. And, and this, this is, is left-handed. Yeah. So this is made by the uh, Hiroshi Yao Yaoji-san. Oh, no, mm -hmm. Yaoji... No, Takahiro? I can't remember. No, first thing. Yaoji san from Echizen. He uh, he learned all the skills by at the Kitaoka san's place and he started his own workshop a couple years ago. And he's been putting out like these do, really beautiful. Do, do we have any right handed versions of this knife? Yeah. Because I'm not left handed and this knife is gorgeous. Of course we do. And when it's a Gyuto, it's a lot thinner, so we're going to have a lot less of that sort of pull and drift. It's weird holding a left handed yeah, knife. Right? Yeah. Yes, we do have right-handed version for sure of that as well. Oh, so for you ambidextrous people, you can get one for each hand. Oh, oh, look at that. That is stunning. Okay, this is blue carbon steel, number two, blue number two. Uh, it is 546 Canadian dollars. It is so nice and thin. Uh, if you've got every other Japanese knife, or if you really want to step up your game, or if you've got a single bevel and you're like, I, I kind of does what I want it to, but I, but not really. Uh, and then I guess finally, if you want to be able to cut stuff incredibly thin, incredibly fine, mm. if you want to Julien stuff as fine oh, yeah. as you could possibly Julien something, yeah. this is absolutely the knife. We have 240 and 210 as well, so. Oh my goodness. Yep. Okay, so that was a 240 at 546. The 210 is $463, strikingly similar in how much they weigh. This 240 is super thin. Okay, Kay. that's fun. We yes. have some cool things. Yaoji. Yaoji is spelled Y-A-U-J-I. Yaoji single bevel. Let's talk about something. Somebody else is spin the wheel. Fun and cheerful. They want to see the, the wheel spin. Ah. Wheelie? <laughs> That won't go into effect till tomorrow, but I think we can manage a wheel spin. Yeah. The sale starts on Monday at 8 a.m. Mountain Standard Time, and that's when the wheel does the thing. But the wheel is fun, so I yeah. don't see why we shouldn't. Yeah. We should take that to our Christmas party. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I don't know yeah. if it fit inside yeah. the Sultan's tent, but we can try. Yeah, yeah. And, and it would be like, now you have to do the chicken dance or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, have, we have fun parties. Something uh, fun and cheerful that's like, you know, pretty reasonably priced. I think we can talk about these maybe. Yeah. Do it. Yeah. Well, yeah. what else are we doing? So, you know, tsukasa? Mm -hmm. You know how many tsukasas are in the blacksmithing world in, in Japan? 70. Nah, probably. I was it just no, a guess. No. Tsukasa is actually not really popular, like not most popular name in Japan, right? Like not a most popular first name. So there's the tsukasa we just showed you. Uh, the night? No, we didn't show you, but the, uh, we mentioned uh, Tsukasa Hinora. Hmm. There's another Tsukasa in the, uh, in the other region, it's called Tsukasa Suzuki-san, oh. who makes the sickles. There's another Tsukasa in Tosa. These are from Tosa? Yep. They look like they're from Tosa. Mm. I like Tosa looking knives. You know what though, it's really, really well made and well priced. How much is that one? 210 white carbon number one. Whoa, that's $135. Yeah. Pretty rugged though. It's not like super, super finesse, thin, you know, like super, super thin knife, but. Whatever, I got will... a couple knives that are nice and thick like this and yeah. I use them when I'm just banging stuff out, yeah. right? Yeah. And if you're cutting meat, you don't really need the thinness so much mm. as you do when you're cutting a vegetable. Wow, these are really cool. That, is this that... Funayuki? Does this say Funayuki or the Gyuto? Is this Gyuto? Gyuto one fifty. Yeah, cool. Very cool. Like cheerful. It's it's not necessarily the best um, best gift knife because the it is a white carbon number one steel with a, a carbon steel cladding. Rusty. So it, very it, rusty. It yep. rusts a little bit much easier, but 
if you're looking to add to your collection that's like something that's super well made yet the um you know doesn't break your bank that's fantastic you know what one of the things that we always find we get good choices from tosa as well we have them often at the garage sale is if you're on the fence about a carbon steel knife and you're not too sure if it's something that's going to be a knife for you then this is a great place to start and try out Linnea. go ahead sky <laughs> Linnea is wondering if there's a Suji in this line. No. Not. Is there? No. Hi, Linnea. How are you? <laughs> uh, if you're the same Linnea. Um, okay, so do we need to find a sweet carbon steel Suji then? I think Nathan's on it. Nathan's going to find yeah, us a sweet carbon Suji. I mean, the, uh, the, 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 the last one we talked about, the uh, SLD Tadahusa, was really, really cool. Yeah, that's very yeah, cool. That was really These cool. are definitely of, of what we've unpacked so far. And hold up, we, we gotta give the people a wheel spin because they keep, they keep asking for <laughs> You ready? Mike, get out of the way. <laughs> what a bunch of nerds. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> this is the Hatsukokoro uh, Kumokage Blue number two, $317. Really nice tall bevel, right? So you've got the thickness of the spine, which is nice because it's going to give you the weight, the weight to follow through. But the long bevel means right down the edge is very thin. Uh, and then the classic Morataka Kuroshu with the Algami Super in the core. Yeah, these are my favorites. I, I love Morataka knives in general. I just, I just like what it feels like when you cut with them. Although I will say from those last ones we just had, that Gyuto was pretty narrow. Like it didn't have the big tall heel to it and the edge was quite straight. I think you'd be able to use it as a slicer. Uh, frankly, like I like to cut lots of big pieces of meat uh, and I'm trying to find myself the perfect 300 mil Gyuto for that job because I just think Having that height isn't a bad thing when you're cutting raw meat and, mm. and just like the yeah. weight and it just, yeah. And 300 mils, because yeah. why wouldn't you? Yeah. Yeah. Next, you know who was actually in Japan very recently? Kevin. Yes. Did I pass? Kevin yeah. definitely was in Japan. Kevin was in Japan. And he, you know, he went to see, uh, you know, some blacksmiths like, um, companies like Tojiro and some blacksmiths like the uh, Hinora. That's, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's one of the yeah. reasons why we have some of the uh, Mutsumi Hinora knives Great. there. Awesome. But the, uh, so when he was in uh, Tojiro, he found this that we had before. <gasps> and, no. And we... Does this match my serrated bread knife? It may. Oh, I love that bread knife. Because this, they discontinued this whole whole knife, right? I but know. It was actually, Where did this come from? <laughs> it, it was a bit popular when, you know. Japan, <laughs> so, yeah. I'm going to put you on a clacking wheel. Uh, okay, these knives are, I mean, it's. It, I'm a chef, right? And you're like, why does a chef want this knife? Because it kicks ass. <laughs> Look Am at I this thing. To say, no, I'm just kidding. This is like, this reminds me of that sandwich knife that you have in school when you're like buttering toast or whatever. And cut, cut. Except yeah. it's bigger and it's made with really good steel, like VG10 steel. Yeah. And it's got these serrations. Like this is the like, you're prepping lunch for your kid's knife. Yeah. This is the like, uh, I'm going to go stay at an Airbnb knife. This is the like, oh yeah, yeah. The knife that kind of is going to really do everything. And uh, the Tojiro Flash is a, a really nice knife. It's got kind of a funny handle with this like die cast core and stuff. So it's, it's, it definitely has some weight to it. It has this really nice taper here on the handle. So it's very comfortable. But these serrations are nice and smooth. So they're not going to shred stuff. Mm -hmm. Especially if you're cutting like softer bread, like mm. brioche and stuff, yep. it doesn't shred it as much. I, I find those more robust, like the big serrations also stay sharp way longer mm. than like the traditional yeah. serrations. Lordy actually just wrote a really good blog that just went up yesterday oh, yeah. about that knife. It's uh, only 150 bucks. If you need more convincing. Yeah, like back when we had the Tojiro Flash, they definitely, like, it was 10 years ago too, they, they cost more than 150 bucks. Yeah, so yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a pretty yeah. good price. It's, it's a big price. And so as the... Uh, these... I'm not allowed to buy knives until the end of the first day, and I, I doubt there's going to be any of those left, but if there is, there's a really good chance I'm buying that thing. So, Tojiro had this line 
uh, of knives with the, um, it looks like just a classic. What? No. But this is the, the line of knives that really? they made before. And these are some of the stocks that they had. That's crazy. It's the, or, or the SG2 version of the uh, Tojiro Classic. Yeah, we've had these Tojiro Classics for so long. It's like as long as I've worked here, which mm. is like 12-ish years. The, the, I think, you know, I love when, when you get a, a, ro a roll of knives from somebody, like a young cook, mm. and they've got some Sinelli's and a couple Victorian Ox or a Henkel, and they've got one Tojiro in there. Mm. And you sharpen it. It's always the, the VG10 steel. Yeah, yeah. And you sharpen it, and it's just so much sharper than the rest of them. And I always think, like, this is like a Tojiro Classic with a VG10 is like what every cooking school student should get on their first day. But this, made with that powdered stainless steel, really steps it up. Like, they're boring looking. They're yeah. just a knife. That's, yeah, but it does the work. It's fantastic. Great steel. It's nice and thin. It probably won't chip as easy. It's like really... Listen, we like powdered stainless steel. It's often much more expensive. It's harder for the, the blacksmith to work with. And... And, and it's, it, it can be a, a harder material to sharpen. Like it doesn't wear away very easily. So on one side of the coin, it's not gonna dull very quickly, but at the other side of the coin, it is difficult to sharpen. And you really do wanna be able to take it through a progression of finer stones. Uh, if you're buying a knife from us and you've got a store in your city, like we'll do it for you. Uh, learning to sharpen is not that difficult either, but SG2 is a really superior material for making a sharp kitchen knife. And that's a Santoku. And that's $171, and it's made of SG2 steel. Yep. This is ridiculous. So yeah, this is, well, how are we finding these? This is the Tojiro Classic SG2. How did you label them? Tojiro High Speed Powder Stainless Steel HS High Speed P <laughs> HSPS. <laughs> so HSPS, Tojiro SS. HS, uh, whatever. Whatever, you'll find them. Between stacks of knives, uh, we got a couple of questions. Mm -hmm. Go for it. Uh, Mikhail was wondering, what is Go Yoshizawa's relationship with Hatsukokoro, and is it similar to Nigara? Go Yoshizawa-san is the uh, head of uh, Nigara-san, Nigara Hamono. Nigara mm -hmm. Hamono is the, um, the company's name, Nigara. It's, and uh, Go Yoshizawa-san is the head blacksmith. Um, relationship, well, they sometimes make blades for uh, Hatsukokoro. Mm. Mostly don't, the, uh, they put their uh, engraving on them. Hatsukokoro is kind of weird, right? Because Hatsukokoro, sometimes like you see Hatsukokoro and you, on the back of the blade, it says Nakagawa made and stuff like that. We kind of state that, you know, like it says Nakagawa by Hatsukokoro or something like that. So Hatsukokoro <laughs> is kind of this brand that asks different blacks to make the blades for, then, you know, they they basically get a permission to put the Hatsukokoro on or just go for the Nigara. Yeah, well, they're out of Sakai, and Sakai has a long tradition of, of building knives differently mm. than a lot of places where they contract a, a blacksmith to make a blade, mm -hmm. they give them the steel, they say, I want you to make these shapes out of this material, and the, 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 the guy does that. Yeah. They then take that raw formed blade over to someone else who then sharpens it. Often that, that person who's sort of Commission the work, then takes it home, puts a handle on it, polishes it, mm. puts it in boxes, and sells it to their customers. So it's just a system they've got. And, and Hatsukokoro is, is sort of working within that system, but they're also trying to break it a yeah, little yeah, bit. Yeah, exactly. So exactly. it doesn't make sense in a lot of ways because it's different than everybody. Mm. So, yeah. It kind of it breaks it and kind of try to expand into the different areas. Yeah, so, yeah. so Yoshidawa-san makes knives for himself and his own company, Nigara, and he also makes the blades. Sometimes I see, like we but, see the uh, Hatsuko, but mostly though, the uh, most knives that's made by Go Yoshizawa-san uh, are engraved the uh, Nigara Hamono. Yeah. I really like the analogy of like uh, contract brewing, mm. like, you know, uh, like Big Rock makes really good beer. Mm. So some people just come to Big Rock and say, hey, can you make me a beer that tastes mm. like this and this? And I'm going to design the label and market it and all that kind of stuff. But can you do the beer making part? Is that, the, they were so is that good like AGD? Yeah, AGD? Yeah, yeah, like AGD or uh, I can't remember what. They Or, or uh, Alberta Distillers yeah, yeah, just yeah. down the street, yeah, right? Yeah. Like they, they make bullet rye because yeah. they make yeah. rye better than bullet does. So why not just buy it from them? Yeah. 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 That's great. No, I'm just going to talk quickly about the, uh, this, yeah. uh, the find here. Okay. New line of single bevels from Tojiro. No, it's the wrong way. 
Oh, was it? Damn. Okay, so the uh, it's great. The uh, white carbon steel with the great Tsuchime on it. It's they made this line so that the um, the single bevel knives are pretty reasonable. Like something like this, 240 Yanagi is 206. <laughs> For those of you who wants to get into the uh, sharp or uh, uh, slicing the uh, sashimi and stuff like that, this will do the uh, great job. Or something like you know, if you get into the whole fish butchery and stuff, this deba, like really nice, thick, thick spine, right? Tapers it down and it's like, it's great. It's a little bit of roughish, but you know, it's, you get the really nice uh, feel of the single bevels. That, uh, that Kurochi Tsuchime, the hammered finish on them is yeah, so it's, beautiful. It's, it's, it's stunning. It's, it's a really badass looking single yeah. bevel. And I, I assume someone's yeah, asking had, for these knives? We yeah. had somebody asking, Sky, who is that? PH808 yeah. was that? Was asking, mm -hmm. so if you're listening PH808 about some unusual shapes, we've got more coming. Um, now, Toe, do you maybe, do you know of any others in this pile here? That, that Tojiro flash sandwich knife is definitely one of them, or American utility, as we call it. But why don't we just talk about a, a couple of oddballs here real quick. And, oh, God. Uh, oh, God. Yeah, we've got, we got, I mean, garage sale is cool because we also get to bring in crazy stuff that normally might, might, you know, not be super popular, but that's kind of what people come to the garage sale for. So you get some unusual stuff. These are very funny. Sakai Takayuki, Coreless Damascus. They really wanted to call it tank and we refused that. <laughs> no, you can't call it tank. It's called toll. There Bunga. is only one tank. Yes. Well, and the and mini tank and the sheep and, and, and the but that, tank, but that's which we no do have, way. which we do have, but Coreless Damascus VG2 and VG10, it has the this way, tall bunka and koto bunka. I don't know if I can. You're right, tall <laughs> koto bunka. I love that. Yeah. So to put it in completely plain English, there's no core steel here. It's just two types of steel folded. And what's the what's the idea? Is that I mean, it's, the, it's generally, the two steels are pretty similar hardness. No, no, no. It's, it's quite a bit different. Quite a bit different. So okay. the VG, basically the idea or what they were trying to do is that the VG2 wears yeah. out a little bit faster than VG10. That creates the natural serration. Okay. So you get like a micro serration. Exactly. From the two steels. Yeah. That's, and, that's we can, the, uh, and, yeah. and that's the Damascus, right? Like, can we see those two steels in the two different patterns here? Naoto? Hmm? Like, yeah, it goes one line through. is one steel, one line is yeah, the other. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Neat. That handle's pretty stunning too. Not yeah, to be it looks like uh, Wenge. Uh, wenge. So, wenge. So when we're talking about core steel, like often, if you if you may not know this, but here's a here's a f interesting shaped knife. But a good example is typically with our Japanese kitchen knives, the blade is laminated with a soft metal on the outside and then a hard metal in the core. And the core steel is the one we're always talking about, like VG10 or blue number two, or whatever. That's the good stuff. That's the hard steel that's going to result as the edge. But, but because that steel is so hard, it can be very delicate, very brittle, uh, and a little bit hard to make, uh, to forge as a blacksmith. Uh, so they, they laminate a softer material on the outside. That protects it. Uh, that allows them to put some indentations in it. Uh, that often leads to a knife that's got stainless on the outside, but carbon steel on the core, which is like the best of both worlds. Um, yeah. So, uh, to, to see a knife that's the coreless, uh, as we would sort of call it there with the, the two layers of steel mixed together, is, is quite unique. Yeah. So, some unique shapes. Oh, this, did you talk about that? No, not yet. Kay. Sorry. Okay. Oh, I mean, these are like, you know, one-off um, Higo knives. Higo no kami sada koma. Sorry. It's, uh, you know, like we have the Higo folding knives. They started making like these really cute these knives, one of, one of a kind, because you know, we have 30 different SKUs, and the Sky had to take all 30 pictures, because th these are all different Yeah, these are great. What a great gift. It, yeah. It's like, I feel like this is what that Scottish guy wants in his act actually yeah. wants in their sock yeah. to you yeah. know, deal with the haggis. Yeah. Uh, it's <laughs> a fun little dude, craft like. knife. It's a fun little craft knife. Uh, I mean, if, if anyone ever actually sends you mail, uh, that's like, uh, worthwhile, like you'd be, is a big, great little letter, letter opener. These are pretty unique as well. It looks like a Sakimaru Yanagiba, but the, um, the Kitaoka-san calls it the uh, Matsuba. 
Matsuba means the uh, pine le pine needles. Mm. But the uh, like really nice carve, like 120, like 210 millimeters. So it does really <laughs> nice smooth, like follow through <coughs> of the cut of sashimi and stuff like that. It's really nice. It's nice handy size too, right? Yeah, and that it has is a, a good small, size. Yeah. That's about 120. Like, this is also really Let's good. See the back side? Single Whoa, bone. that's really yeah. cool. And Kitaoka san's been actually doing something super unique. Um, he, he's probably inspired by all fellow, um, you know, coal blacksmith colleagues or the blacksmith friends in that area. Mm -hmm, and like mm -hmm. Kurosaki doing all wow. crazy hammering and stuff like that. Sure, yeah. So they. Oh. Boy, did they ever. Yeah, right? Miyoroshi was like, look at this like crazy hammer pattern. Yeah, Miyoroshi is like a Deba, similar purpose. Yeah, it's yeah. a little shorter. A little bit skinnier. Yeah. Yeah, so Miyoroshi is basically, it's a Deba, but it's, you still can slice sashimi with because of the little bit of skinnier profile. But look at this. Uh, That's it's crazy. Sashimi. It's like so you, you know, this little guy, this, this uh, Kitaoka Matsuba, Matsuba, M-A-T-S-U-B-A, this little blade, I think is very cool. And I, I think what would be cool with it, you, know, you see the, the uh, Ketsuramuki oh, yeah. uh, cutting technique in Japan where you're using that Yusuba, which looks like a Nakiri, but it's single bevel. And you rotate a daikon around in your hand and you're supposed to like peel this long sheet mm. of, of the daikon, which is bloody impossible. Um, I think this would be that awesome really for handy. trying to learn how Absolutely. to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a little bit more comfortable. Yeah. And uh, I think it would, You'd just be great at peeling stuff or like if you're trying to like you know like if you're trying to like skin a sardine mm. or something oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. or yeah 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 do, do you know it's awesome for, uh, like just every day mm. butchering chickens it's so good mm. oh yeah that's right you have yeah, one yeah. of these yeah, oh, yeah, I, yeah, use yeah, it, yeah. I use it all the time and that that curved tip is really great for getting around the oyster especially oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right, oh right. sure yeah, yeah right, it's right, awesome right and uh and if you know you're unsure about dropping like 300 bucks on a fancy Hanasuki, you mm. could get that one. Right. And then it could become like a different knife in your kit eventually once you. Although there is the, the uh, Hanasuki by Kitaoka san as well, single beveled. That's $300. That's exactly what the Nathan was talking about. Oh. <laughs> yeah. We better get to some questions here. <laughs> yeah. Let's do it. Yeah, so. Uh, well, Wait, Glenn, is that a mini tank? <laughs> yeah, Glenn, Glenn Kings wanted to see the mini tank. Oh. Uh, they also Kings, wanted to know if there watching. was only one tank. There is only one tank. There is only one tank. Oh. Did you hear the sound? <laughs> we have a mini tank. This is mini tank number one of two that were made on the 16th of May of 2023. Yeah. <coughs> no. Tank oh. are such incredible knives. And this is a mini tank. Obviously, that means it's smaller. Often imitated, never. They're, these are very limited. They are very rare. They only come wrapped in paper. They're almost legendary at this point. Um, the fun thing about them is they're absolutely phenomenal. Like the way they're made is incredible and they're such a unique shape. Uh, this will go very, very, very quickly uh, Monday morning. Yeah. Now on Monday morning, this is what we suggest you do is if there is something that you are dead set on, like over the weekend, you're like, that's it. That's my knife. That's what I want. And then, you know, uh, maybe I'll pick up a couple other things. What we strongly recommend is you buy that thing. If you're like, I want that mini tank, you load in, uh, you get the website loaded, you get your auto fill set up. You, you have everything good to go. Cause you, you, it's like buying tickets to a Bruce Springsteen concert in New Jersey. Like they are going to go super fast. I would say, do you say this already? Double check your autofill. Like yeah, make sure the address is right. Cause we've had that happen a few times where people are just, you know, they're trying to get their knife so they go through it really quick. Yeah. I've done this. Yeah. I got stuff almost delivered to my old apartment <laughs> because I was in a hurry, you know? So yeah, the idea we're saying is like, if there's something you're dead set on, buy it right away. And if you want to come back and look at some other stuff, make yourself a second order. We don't care. That's fine. And um, <laughs> just just pull the pin on that knife because if you wait a few minutes, you'll go through the checkout and it will be like <coughs> denied and you won't be sure why that's happening. And that is because someone else has it. Uh, next up, we have Albert Anderson was wondering about the Kyohei Shindo Sakimaru Sujihikis. Uh, and so I just grabbed both because I didn't know what size. 
<clears throat> Look at this beautiful box. <laughs> <laughs> you you want you want to hold it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. Kyohei Shindo. Tell us about Kyohei Shindo while I show off the knife here. Well, the uh, Shindo-san is this young blacksmith who was born and raised in Hokkaido, moved to uh, Okinawa for school and wanted to become a blacksmith, so he found himself in Tosa area. He learned his like skills through some masters, obviously, but like a lot of the works done by <laughs> himself. Um, but he's actually been trying, like, getting a lot of really cool jobs like things done this one here it's said the damascus steel on the outside algami number two with the carbon steel cladding look how thick and you probably noticed already mike the, mm -hmm. it's super like robust i guess <laughs> right it's I, solid i just put the uh scale down here uh, um, uh, oh yeah zero cool so this is a 12 inch ruler so just to give you the perspective yeah. of it right the blades and 300 he, millimeters yeah. Like, generally speaking, the uh, three, is that 300 mil? Yeah, and it's 283 grams. Give me the perspective, because it's exactly really hard. Which is exactly 10 ounces. Because it's hard. I, I brought the slightly different size, but the, this <clears throat> Kurosaki Zios 270 is 177, and that is two, 283. 283. About a double? Yeah. A little less than a double. I mean, blade length is slightly different, <laughs> but the, um, it's robust. It's like really nice, meaty knife. Okay, Kyohei Shindo, Algami number one. The price is 511 um, That tip is so cool. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, you get this knife, all you're going to want to do is slice stuff, and, and I hope it's raw fish. It probably but, cuts very like um, Yanagiba though, because it's yeah. super nice and thick. But like cutting meat too, I, oh, I, yeah. like I was saying earlier, I like cutting steaks a lot, pork chops or whatever, like that would be banging. We actually had another question over here. Uh, somebody was asking for something that, uh, I can't find it now, there's a lot of comments here, but somebody was asking for a thin protein slicer and also something to scare late lunch. Damon Spector. Damon Spector, that's the one. And this Boy, he's been watching since 2020. You want to scare late <laughs> line cooks? Don't you just look at them with that that look of death that says, "If if looks could kill, you'd be dead by now." <laughs> Here it is. Found it. Thin slicer. Well, I mean, what, what about that uh, Yaro Kobe? The 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 three. <laughs> that one. We, I mean, we got to show that thing yeah, off. I don't even yeah, know. Like, I, I it just, might not even fit in frame. I, I don't know like, where it it's going to, you know, yeah. Like, which, oh, this one. Because we only have one. We snatch it. The, uh, yeah. yeah. Did we answer all the questions we were hoping nope. to here? Nope. Okay. No, with those knives, yes. Should we, should we show this then? Yes, no? Yes. Okay. All right, David, this one's for you. Like. <laughs> then, 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 then. It's like Wait the uh, the window liquor music video. Wait more. You ever see that Wait one? more. Oh, the handle doesn't fit. Oh, there you go. <laughs> 360 mil? Yeah, 390 mil. Yorokobi copper Damascus with the Kurochi Tsuchime. It's acid etched. It's And I love how you can see the copper on the spine. Yeah. This is a piece of art. I mean, Ooh. it's a knife. You could use it. Yeah. Oh man, like it's, it is gorgeous. Look, and look, look at look like at, the sharpening. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, here. Look at that, it's like crochet right here. It ends, instead of like going here, it's like, oh. Yeah. Man, this. I mean, I can't afford a Rolls Royce as a car. But I could afford a Rolls Royce as a knife, you know? Yeah, it's only $22.35. Yeah. Because it's not Rolls Royce price, right? It's a lot cheaper than a Rolls Royce. Yeah. But I like it more. OK, I got one more thin protein slicer. Oh, and there's, there's a side with Inspector. that, too? Oh, yeah, Hold on, let's show everything oh, that yeah, goes with that actually, knife. Actually, no, you got Let's make sure we're side. doing our job properly here, guys. That is. This knife, A, beautiful. B, long. C, uh, comes with a Saya. Uh, and this is our call, Yaro Kobe. Yaro Kobe. Yaro Kobe. Yep. You already know about this. Yaro Kobe means pleasure. 
It means pleasure. It means pleasure. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's an appropriate name for that now. boy. Yeah. Yes. Uh, we got one more thin protein slicer for Damon. Just you know, in case you can't snag that your Kobe first thing, or you know, you're paying bills at the restaurant that you own. And I'm assuming by thin you want the blade <laughs> to be thin. Uh, this is nice. It's got a really nice bevel. Uh, like it almost feels like it's a bit of a convexity, or sorry, a concavity. But it's not really. There's just an, a really nicely pronounced ridge here, and then it tapers in behind that ridge. So when you're looking at the choil, uh, I, I'm not mastering the choil shot here. It, 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 sorry, it's like a diamond shape profile on our uh, on the on the blade. So your food's going to ride up off that ridge. And then there's going to be nothing behind that ridge for it to come in contact with. Uh, this, this knife is gorgeous. I actually was using something similar uh, to slice uh, cured serrano or cured prosciutto. Uh, and, and that's like hard to cut through. It's dense and it's kind of sticky and the proteins grab your knife. Uh, this knife drifted through. It was very, very nice for that. So I think if you're trying to cut proteins very thinly, you're going to try and reduce the amount of drag you've got, right? because you want it to just peel off. Um, yeah. This would be nice, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Okay, we got a couple more questions, and then we got a commercial break coming up in a few minutes. All right. And that's Gecko, G-E-K-K-O. Gecko. Okay. So, 90 some was asking if there was any knives by Takumi Ikeda-san in the garage set. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> I was talking about the uh, his knives today. Ikeda? Ikeda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. See, we have Kurochi and we have a oh, AS yeah. with the stainless clad somewhere. I know. The yeah, way he's been making knives is so incredible nice, these eh? days. Wow. Very, very thin up at the tip. Yeah. A little bit thicker at the heel. That's a very nice way of building a knife for the user because you've got a bit of a, a bit of strength back here, yeah. right? Where you want it. Right, you want, you're gonna do all the fine stuff up at the top. So you got a thinner blade up here, a little bit thicker at the back. Jesus, that, right? The way Jesus, he, that is that nice. way he makes these days especially has been such an incredible, oh, right? Okay. Like this too, like the- You can tell that he was taught by Andrew, like- But still though, he also developed but, his own. He, but he's getting better. Exactly, He's right? getting better than that. Like, oh my goodness. again, it's like really nice, thick, spine right here forge tapers it down he learned a lot from actually forging the tank too right that's right yeah yeah so it's it's a real and from what i can see there aren't that many like low spots like a uh, we call it the echo ball it's but there aren't that many low spots really 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 nicely made um this one here as with the stainless <coughs> clad crochet with the uh, rosewood handle this one is the white carbon steel Number two with the uh, Damascus fish. I love that knife. Well, look at I, how I also like a simple too. looking knife. I, I'm not like crazy about like crazy fancy looking mm. stuff. I, I appreciate it, but personally, um, I'm the one that looks good in the relationship, right? Yeah. Not the no, knife. No, 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 no. Yeah. And so I need ugly knives. Yeah. Yeah, the, just like the, the grind on it, right? Yeah. When you feel it come up on the shoulder, it's like it's nice and thin behind the edge, rides off that shoulder, nice texture. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's 398. What's a 210 Koishu cost? Something like four, maybe? So, I can't remember that, anymore. To, I'll be honest, like this blade here, this Anru AS Kuro Tsuchumi 210 Guto, that, that's a Koishi. That's very similar to the Masakagi Koishi. A Kiki. Uh, just saying. Those are ridiculously good knives. What do we got now? Talking to me, Goose. You're a Goose, by the way. I guess someone's looking for the Eurokobi rainbow. Uh, yeah, we were talking a little bit about the Eurokobi rainbow. Um, let me find that. So this one That's here is actually Hayabusa, sorry, yes. Hatsukokoro Hayabusa rainbow. Mm -hmm. That was uh, Motivationally Challenged on YouTube. Yes. Motivationally Challenged is looking for their third knife. They have a Nikiri and a Petty. And they were also wondering if the Gyuto 210 is too short for like a long knife. A lot knife? A long knife. A like the longest knife they've got. It probably depends on the comfort level. Like 
210 is my go-to. I do pretty much everything with my 210. For my wife, um, this is too long. She doesn't use 210. Um, so it really depends. Um, but 210 Measure your do. cutting board. Yeah, but 210 will do the most jobs in the kitchen. Uh, I think you need to make sure your cutting board's big enough for one. Uh, I think you need your blade to be less than 70% of the, of the length of the cutting board. No, I mean, it's, I mean, okay, let me say this. I can make a 210 do pretty much everything I need it to. When I come into wanting to cut a whole bunch of stuff, uh, like I'm making a big pot of stew, I got to cut a whole bunch of vegetables or it's Christmas or Thanksgiving, you cutting a bunch of stuff, or I got a big squash, or I got a big fruit like a watermelon, or, um, or I want to butcher some meat and portion and cut steaks or pork chops or, or cut whole sides of salmon. Uh, you know what I'm getting at here? Like bigger objects, the bigger the knife, the easier the job. Joseph. Plus if you're doing a bunch of cutting, right? Like again, you're going to make a big pot of ratatouille. You're going to freeze it. You're doing some meal prep. The bigger knife is going to make the job so much easier. You're just going to slide the blade forwards and it is going to cut everything you want. It's going to stay sharp longer because there's more edge. It's got a bigger, bigger mass, so it's going to just slide through stuff better. I don't know. It, it's great if you're like getting into a squash or, yeah. you know, some of those things that people struggle with sometimes. If, if you're just cutting normal food and making food for a few people, three, four people, you know, you're going to be comfortable with a 210 to be using it every single day. You might get more use out of it. Um, we totally haven't answered your question, but I think, I think yes, maybe. <laughs> Yes, maybe is the answer. Okay, we got one more, and then uh, we have break. a commercial break coming right up. Yeah. So, uh, long-time viewer, person from Denmark, I think, mm -hmm. uh, Chef's Nice Enthusiast was asking about uh, a convex grind, white number one workhorse, and that was the knife that I found. What do you mm. think? White number one workhorse, definitely, it's got a little bit thicker uh, grind for sure. I mean, like, to be quite frank, the, uh, there is definitely some um, low spots. Like, you know, in, in, in any knife, like, because of the, the way that they use, right? right, right there. Uh, but the, um, it's a little bit thicker. It's definitely a workhorse. Um, the, it's crazy well priced. Yeah. Another thing that, like, Shindo. Tsukasa, T S U. I'm sure we have Shindo Kyohei's <laughs> knife as well. His knife is a little bit thinner. So that's not necessarily the best choice for that. What size are we looking at? 210? Convex uh, not 210? Undefined. Undefined. I just figured 210 is a good workhorse size if you're working at home. You know, I would go to it for a 240 personally. Because Shirogami. You, you know, in a restaurant setting or if you're making a lot of meal prep. Speci specifically number one stew, right? Yeah, white okay. number one workhorse. Because the, uh, there aren't convex the, grind, yeah, ideally. There aren't that many makes yeah. the. Uh, um, uses the white number one carbon steel. Mm. Um, Hinokuni sounds great. It's not maybe the idea of the workhorse. His knife may not match to the description, but definitely it's great convex or little convex grind knife. Because <coughs> look, I don't know if you can see them in the camera, on a camera, but can't really see them but it does you can see the uh, the grind marks that goes this way right yeah yeah this yeah one. they're nice so this one here what it is is that it's actually finished by hand and would you right. repeat the name of this knife uh hinokuni sakai yeah. hinokuni h-i-n-o-k-u-n-i and, and he's a he's a young guy that's really coming into his own yeah, yeah yeah so he he finishes by hand so there aren't that many little spots on a on the bevel mm -hmm. as well so it's it's pretty cool I kind of threw that in there. I, it's white yeah. number one. Um, I think I think a lot about this guy's knives. I think they're fantastic. Uh, this is uh, this is white number two with an iron cladding. This is Mizaki. Um, he does a beautiful job making these knives. It's three hundred and thirty bucks. Uh, I would call this a workhorse. I would call this a workhorse. Um, it is not going to be as tough as a convex grind, but he does do a very nice job sharpening it's not concave at all it's it's thin but not not too thin yeah well i mean like the the way he sharpens like there there's no way there's the, like any concavity no it's right? it's also done in a way that makes it next to perfect yeah right all right well i think it's time for a commercial break we uh it's very exciting 
We have uh, official sponsors for the first time ever on our live stream. So I hope you enjoy an exciting message from uh, HelloFresh. <laughs> Hi, I'm Reverend Dr. Nathan Guro, founder of the Bijotan Charcoal Cleanse and author of the best-selling Amazon ebook, Yakitori Your Way to Better Health. I'm here today with a revolutionary new medical technology, Swarf Water. Now I hear you on the other side of the television saying, but Reverend Doctor, what is Swarf? Well, Swarf is a magical substance produced when a knife is sharpened on a whetstone. Micro particles of steel are ground off from the knife, mixed with particles from the stone, and ground into an incredibly fine powder, then washed into the bucket from the water from the sharpening process. Now for years, we were just throwing Swarf down the drain and flushing it down our toilets until we discovered its incredible healing properties. Now, master knife sharpeners like Fujimoto-san work tirelessly around the clock to ensure a clean, ethical source of Swarf. Now here's why Swarf water might be the right health solution for you. Iron in the Swarf can help give much needed nutrients to iron deficient folks and anemics. The carbon from the steel binds to toxins in the blood and the gut giving you a cleanse like no other. Most importantly, the microabrasive technology of diamond and silica can break up impacted stool, giving you the colon cleanse you always wanted, eliminating the need for your daily enemas. Shake, pour, drink, repeat. Those are the four crucial steps when consuming Swarf water. First, shake. You want to make sure that the Swarf is evenly mixed throughout the water. Second, pour. I don't think this one requires any explanation. Mmm-mm, look at that nutritious swarf. Third, drink. Ah, refreshing. And four, repeat. We recommend taking a cup of swarf water at least three times daily or more often if you feel its properties not working properly for you. Get your 500 ml bottles of swarf water for only $29.99 from your local health food store or new age practitioner. Ask for it by name or call now and get a 24 pack for only $6.99.99. Don't delay, call now for your full case of Swarf water delivered right to your door. Is your wallet feeling a little light from trying so many phony health cures that just don't work? Join our pyramidal structure sales team now as a Swarf water brand associate. Get your friends and family in your downline and you can get promoted to Join our multi-level Join our multifaceted, hierarchical, commission-based sales ecosystem and gain your financial independence today. Medical studies have yet to find Swarf Water to be linked to any serious health issues to date, and it's found to be at least as effective as anything marketed by Gwyneth Paltrow. Try Swarf Water today. So you don't Alive. get to watch the the. You know what? Right? That Swarf Water is so good that I couldn't even grow a beard until I started taking it. And now I have this just beautiful, luscious, gorgeous beard. Uh, yeah, no, I don't don't drink Swarf Water. It's probably terrible for you. In, in case that wasn't perfectly obvious, that was a joke. Uh, welcome back, folks. Hope you enjoyed our commercial, our, our wonderful sponsors. Um, we are on to hour two of our uh, unboxing Q and A live stream. So the goal today is we're we're going through every single new knife and line that we have for the garage sale uh, this fall, and we're going to talk about them. But we're also here to answer your questions and help you shop. So if you have a question about a knife that we're looking at, uh, pop that question in the comments, and we will get to it in a timely manner. Um, if you you know just don't know what you, like, you have a vague idea of what you want. Like, oh, I want a stainless steel Santoku, or I want a gift for my mom that's under 200 bucks or whatever. Uh, pop those in there too, because we'll, we'll make sure we, we get all of those. So that on Monday, especially if you're shopping online, you just know what you want, and you don't have to ask those questions while you're trying to scramble and everybody's buying stuff. Uh, if you're just tuned in, uh, this is the Knife or Garage sale uh, live stream. We're, we're just previewing the sale. Uh, every year we go to Japan, we meet with old friends, make new ones, uh, and we, we go through their, their workshops, and we kind of just buy all the weird stuff that they have. What's this? Oh, okay. What's wrong with this mic? <laughs> um, <laughs> I have a new microphone, apparently. Uh, but yeah, we go, we go, um, if I sound terrible, it's just because I've had a cold for three weeks. Um, <clears throat> but we... Uh, yeah, we go visit all our friends in Japan, and, we, and Kevin goes to their workshops and kind of just points out all the stuff they've got lying around. It's like, hey, can I buy that? Can I buy that? 
oh, that's discontinued, great, I'll take that. And so we have a lot of stuff that's like a great deal. We have a lot of stuff that's uh, just rare, that's hard to find throughout the rest of the year. Um, we bring in makers that maybe we can't get enough of their knives to stock full time, but we really love them and we want to carry them. So we have some of that. We have prototypes and, and limited edition stuff, uh, refurbished knives that are formerly used and we've, we've tuned up. Um, and yeah, just also a lot of great deals and gifts. So yeah, we're just gonna go through all those today. The sale starts uh, November 6th and it runs to the 12th. So it's at 8 a.m. Mountain Standard Time on Monday. Uh, and there, don't forget there's a time change in Alberta on Sunday. So um, yeah, starts online, shop online. If you have a store or if you live in a city where we have a store, Calgary, Edmonton, Ottawa, Vancouver, or Toronto, uh, head down to the shop because they got a lot of cool stuff and it's exclusive on the first day. So all the stock that's in the store on day one, uh, you cannot get online. So it's uh, you know very much worth going down to the shop and, and checking out what they have to offer. Uh, we'll also be live on Monday uh, for, for several hours, starting just before eight in the morning. Uh, we're gonna be here to help people shop and answer questions as we are now, but we also have product demos and, and cooking demos. So we're gonna demonstrate a couple of different kinds of frying pan and, and cook some steak and eggs for breakfast. Nacho's gonna make us some ramen for lunch. <laughs> Robin, um, <laughs> Robin for lunch, uh, and Mike's got a couple demos that he's gonna do. So uh, yeah, come hang out on Monday. We're we're spinning the clacker wheel on Monday. We've got different deals every hour, so you can get you can get an item free or half price when you buy a knife. Uh, and on Monday, if you spend over three hundred bucks, spin that wheel. Thank you, Nato. <laughs> and if you spend over uh, three hundred bucks on Monday, you can purchase a knifeware logo cap, a nice than people t-shirt, a ramen bowl t-shirt, or a knifeware Ramones t-shirt. This is a classic one. And these will be 100% off. So you get them free if you spend over 300 bucks in store and online. Okay, uh, should we talk about some knives? Yeah. Okay, here's your list in case we have more, more questions there. We do. Um, in the meantime, while, while Sky's getting us ready for some questions, Actually, just before we dive into some knives, we All right. had a garage sale uh, logistics question. Garage sale logistics. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I love logistics. Greg said, uh, last year's sale, I picked four knives I wanted, was online when it started, and immediately when the hour the sale started, they all went out of stock. How? Yeah. Um, well, the sales become very popular, more than we ever anticipated originally. <laughs> and so um, people grab stuff really fast on Monday. So here's what you got to do is you got to pick the knife that you want the most. And on Monday morning, you add that to your cart and you pay for it and, and you finish that transaction. Because if it's in your cart, that does not reserve the stock. Um, because otherwise people could just have the inventory reserved for like an hour. So um, pick your favorite knife, buy that one first, make sure your autofill is correct so you can just blitz through checkout. Um, and then go back and go grab the other stuff that you want because we do free shipping over hundred bucks in Canada and free shipping over 200 bucks in the USA. So we might have to um, ship you multiple orders. And it, obviously that's not ideal, but um, that is definitely the best way to get the knives that you want. Um, if you, again, if you live in a city with a store, uh, you can always go on the website, try to grab that rare thing you want first. And if it is out of stock by the time you get to checkout, um, go down to your local store because they also have all sorts of exclusive stock and just, you know, you can line up before 10 and and, uh, and grab your favorite knife then. Hope that answers the question. Uh, these are some, speaking of limited edition stuff, these are from Masashi Yamamoto-san. He recently celebrated the 10th anniversary of his workshop. Uh, he's been making knives for longer than that, but he struck out on his own 10 years ago. So he came to visit us back in... September, September, September <laughs> the end of September, beginning of October. Um, it was right around Orange Shirt Day and and, uh, and Terroir, so it's all a bit of a blur. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he he made a, a limited, very limited number of uh, Masashi Hakuin knives. So these are SLD, same steel as the Kokuin. But these are a polished Migaki finish. Um, what I love most about um, my Masashi knife that I have is that he sharpens pretty much all of them a little thicker down at the heel and a little thinner down at the tip. So the tips are super thin and precise, kind of lasers, whereas the back end, still pretty thin, but a little closer to that like workhorse category where you can get into like some nice rock chopping and, uh, and not worry about being so hard on your edge. And so, big fan of his stuff. He also is able to push SLD steel to a point that is harder than 
it normally gets from other makers. And so these are, these are uh, in terms of like Rockwell harness, these are around 63, 64, which is pretty exceptional. That's definitely up on the upper limit of, of Japanese knife steel and means they're gonna stay sharp for a crazy long time. This is the 210 Kiyotsuke. And then we've got the Bunka down here. I want both. <laughs> I'm hoping there's one left after Monday. Um, I just bought a Bunka this year, so this might be a little more in my range. I love those. They're so pretty. They're so clean. and I don't even like Migaki knives. Like almost all my knives are, are like black brochu finish, but um, those are quite pretty. I would make an exception for those. Uncle Greg wants to know if there will be any actual garages for sale this <laughs> actual, any Any actual garages. You know what? Um, depends on, on how much you offer me, Greg. I could, my garage could use an upgrade. I might, I might make you a deal. <laughs> what does a garage cost these days? They're like, 20, like 30 grand? Or like the door? No, like the, I, the my garage doors are new. <laughs> They're fun. That's the only part of my garage that's in good shape is the doors. <laughs> Everything, all the, all the stuff is rotting because my the previous owner of my house didn't know what eavesdrops were. Um, <laughs> Moving on, we have some Kurosaki knives. Uh, Kurosaki's kind of known for his, his rock star approach to knife making. Uh, and that's pretty evident in these guys. These are the um, Senko SG2 series. And Senko means flash, spark? Flash. Flash, oh, I flash. got it right the first time, sweet. Yeah, and so they've got this like hammered sparky finish on them, um, which is really cool, inspired by, by the flashing of the forge. Well, we got the, uh, those like art show turquoise handles. Ah, yeah. I don't know if you can call green ones or turquoise, but. Hey, you know, turquoise yeah. adjacent maybe. Right. But they all have this really rad uh, Kyotsuke style tip on them, which is, my mic dying again? No, they're just on different transitions. Oh, oh. <laughs> all right. I thought, it's like the audio sucks because my voice is shredded, <laughs> not the mic's fault. <laughs> Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, but they all have this really rad Kyotsuke style tip. We're seeing this style of tip pop up a lot more. It originally comes from, I think, a single bevel design. Or no, I guess it comes from the Bunka originally. Well, like, there's Kyotsuke um, single bevels as well, so yeah. it's... But when I started at Knifeware, it was a pretty rare shape. Yeah. And now we're seeing Bunka. We only and had the Kiritsuke from Kitaoka, the single bevel, yeah. right? It's a little bit taller, flatter. And now we have Kiritsuke Tsuchihiki, yeah. Kiritsuke Gyuto, and Kiritsuke Santoku, which some people would call a Bunka. And Traditionally Kiritsuke speaking, and... Kiritsuke, the, the single bevel Kiritsuke was the design to cut the, um, well, what they call it the uh, Yosemono. Um, mm -hmm. what, what that means is that the, uh, you know, in Japan or it, like the Western world, uh, when you're making some, when you're making some like, you know, you, you have this like cooking sheet and you, you pour some liquid with the gelatin in it mm -hmm. and you like solidify and yeah, make a... Like, like a terrine almost. Yeah, terrine, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the um, kiritsuke was to cut those food. Oh, like traditionally interesting. In the, in the, yeah. Okay, cool. Because it's a little bit flatter and a little bit taller too. Right, because right? you just want a really clean cut because yeah, yeah. you've got all the stuff and in the, the inside that doesn't really, you. It, it, They say it's a kiritsuke tip, but tip... The, Shouldn't just marketing. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so, for, but, the, yeah, for now, the cough drops, Mike. Now lots of people they they've been adapting the, um, the you know Kiritsuke tip. This one's great. It's got the you know Arusha turquoise handle. It's beautiful. They may have blue and green, and they have also have some other type of handles. Yeah. Can we get a cough drop sponsor next time? That's a good idea. Yeah. Sponsored by Reclaw. It's pretty dry here. It's pretty dry. <laughs> it's also cold season, and everybody's recently been hit with a gnarly cold. And uh, I also talk loud, so I just wreck my voice this time of year. Um, somebody at the like top of the live stream was oh. asking about full tang handles. I don't know if they were looking for something this fancy, but this is that full tang style where you can see the steel mm -hmm. from the knife going all the way through the handle, usually on both sides. And if you're looking for a full tang handle, it don't get much better than that. That's, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. Oh, there, rest in. Since, you know, I'm here and before I lose my voice, I want to talk <laughs> a we're, few things that we have the, to really take turns on Monday. I feel very, um, not proud, but very special about. Mm. Kisuke Manaka-san, mm. the uh, young blacksmith, he's actually, well, I don't know, he's, 
here's my age. My age. The right. uh, younger blacksmith in the, the blacksmith region. Um, we're a good friend of with us. Uh, he, he's a good friend of ours. Uh, we go to uh, visit him a time to time whenever we can. Um, you yeah. know, he we first started working with him in 2020, right? Yeah. Yeah. And he's been putting like you know making like such great knives. Um, he's proud himself making knives with the hand forged welding in house type of stuff. You, and he's been yeah. I was just gonna say you can tell he's gonna be a big deal pretty soon, because. Like the, from the year we first got him, he was really popular with like the knife nerd crowd. Yeah, like yeah, the yeah. people that tune into this live stream saw his knives and we explained how they're made and people were immediately like, oh yeah, I get that. That's yeah. that's awesome. So he elevated that the skill and into making something like this, right? The uh, hand folded oh, Damascus oh, oh. with the uh, Aogami number one in core, Aogami number two in Shirogami, I believe, to uh, make the clotting like this. <laughs> um, it is a beautiful <coughs> knife. But you know what? Last time I when I visited him, you know what he told me was that the he doesn't like much sharpening. Right. He yeah. He, he likes making knives, yeah, but he doesn't he, like that. Yeah. He the... like he loved forging. He loved forge welding. Look at but that. But the um, he's like, you know, Naoto san I hate sharpening. Yeah. Fair enough. And fair enough. You know, he still does fantastic job, though, right? But yeah. <laughs> then, then this came to mind because the uh, you know the uh, this uh, sharpener in Tosa, um, Miyoji Naohito Miyoji, mm -hmm. he's been, also a big deal with the yeah. With the, with and the knife I know I know that he takes <laughs> someone else's knife and sharpens them. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That that's that's his whole. That's job. how the uh, how yeah. the uh, you know how the Sakai ran. So I was like, hey Manaka-san, you may be able to talk to the you know them. So you yeah. may have to send the knife to um, Yojin san to get the sharpening job done. Mm. And he's like, oh, that may be a good idea. And that's like I went there last November. Yeah. So year after, year later, we have two nice knives. Um, one is this ATS 35, 34, sorry, forged, forged welded and forged by Manaka san. <laughs> And sharpened by Myojin. And you can tell right away because like Manaka-san's sharpening is very good, like you said. Yeah. But the consistency and the polish on this and the is, bevel is clearly like, yeah, 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 yeah. like in a different on a different planet. So we have one of ATS34 <clears throat> as well as the uh, one made with Aogami number uh, two, I believe. Yeah. The uh, that is sitting in the one of the stores. Which one? I can't remember. <laughs> I think it's in Vancouver. I Sweet. think it's in Vancouver. Yeah, yeah. As we mentioned, that the store inventory is um, kind of, you know, it's not, it's not going to be sold online for the first day until the six o'clock of that their um, what you call it local time. Yeah, yeah. So, so at the end of the day on Monday, if you didn't get your dream knife online, it may actually pop from, up from from about five p.m. to seven p.m. Mountain time. Um, inventory is going to start going online. It's yeah. not an exact time, like it's, it's actually kind of a slow process yeah. to do, but Ellie's going to start putting inventory yeah. up around five. It may, probably. yeah, it may pop back up. Yeah. So don't, yeah, so that's what we actually sent lots of like even one off knives or the unique handle knives to the stores too. Right. So, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we want to make sure everybody gets an equal experience as fair as possible between mm. the online store and the, and the retail stores. Yeah. So. Another thing that I just, just, I know there are a few questions coming up, but another thing I wanted to really talk about is the, uh, this All Sakai. All Sakai is this uh, knife company. Is that like Old Yeller? Huh? Oh, oh. Sakai, is this knife company in Sakai that, you know, um, ask blacksmiths to make knives and sharpen them? Like n these days they are known as a uh, hado. But they've been around for a little while. Hado, all the Hado knives are sharpened by the Mariyama-san, but the, uh, they had that company before as well. So they sent, they, they found few of the uh, old stocks, mostly. So if you look at our uh, this tag tag here, so some like old stock Inagi, they're really good, like Shirogami and stuff. Some really good find though is this. No. No. It's a really good find. It's such a hard find. Naoto can't even find it. Maybe it's sitting <laughs> on the shelf. But 
there is, uh, when you go on the uh, online, there are some knives by all, all stock with Shiraki name on it. So, oh, yeah. So Shiraki-san <clears throat> is this uh, legendary kind of blacksmith who retired pretty recently and passed the torch down to Nakagawa-san. I cannot, we cannot, cannot, cannot guarantee that knife was forged by Shiraki-san himself. So I can't say that. Don't say but that. It is from the Shiraki Hamono. <clears throat> right. When the Shiraki Hamono was still existent. Yeah. And they, yeah, yeah. they got the, uh, you know, blade and... Well, you can go to Gordon Ramsay's restaurant. It doesn't mean he's cooking your food. Right? <laughs> right? Probably I better that probably. way. Probably better that way. Now, one thing I just want to mention, if you're looking for these things, when Nato saying saying Sakai. It is spelled O U L. O U L Sakai. U Sakai. But we have like all stocks, pretty good price for what it is, like Ginsan stainless steel, white carbon steel, and all that stuff. Yeah. Overall, mm -hmm. the uh, if so, if it doesn't say Shiraki, carbon steel knives like this is forged by Yoshikazu Tanaka. Ginsan are forged by Yamatsuka-san. Just for your... Total Sakai style, right? Sakai style, yeah. Different, different person forges the blade. Yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. But yeah, just wanted to mention before... So I got a couple of knives here to answer some questions. I forget the, the name of our, our caller here. Uh, Powell L. Powell L, okay, Powell. Listen, your question is Nigara. <laughs> we got a Nigara Kiritsuki 240, and I've got a Gyuto 240. Your question is... Is the edge actually 240? Well, I found this thing oh. here called a ruler. This is a, uh, a beautiful ruler uh, made in China, Westcott. I, you can get it at Staples. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's accurate. So I'll show you what it is here. We've got this. Get it lined up. So there you go. Proof is in the pudding. I would call that 230. 35 instead of 240. How am I doing? Am I got the heel, got the tip? Yeah. So this Kiritsuki, billed as a 240, is actually 235 millimeters of edge length. And if I grab their same knife in the Guto, Uncle Greg wants to know what the Rockwell is on the ruler. Ten? Two. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's about two, 237 on the Guto. And uh, this Rockwell, mm, it's about a 27. <laughs> you get good at that after a while. You can just bite the knife and you know how hard it is. Try it. Uh, okay, I will tell you some things about Nigara though. Uh, I've got a Nigara Bunka with a really cool handle. Uh, I use it all the time and I'm just pleasantly surprised with it on the regular. I've got an SG2 core. These are VG10. I think I used it for about nine months and then I started to lose an edge and I thought, oh, maybe I should actually put this on a honing rod. Like nine months, you know, a few times a week using it. I got a lot of knives. Um, Originally, when we were getting the Nigaras, they were very, very thin, very delicate edges, kind of like along the Masashi lines of things, but, uh, and that was because of how thinly they ground them. Uh, and, and now to work with them, they're, they're not as, as much. And I am pleasantly surprised with how I feel using it. I don't feel like it's the most delicate thing on the rack, if that makes sense. They are certainly beautiful. They're very consistently made. Those finer points of them, like, the grind, the shallow, there isn't really any shallow grind marks or grinds along the bevels. They're always really nice and straight. Uh, they're just, they're really put together really well, especially on the, de on the details. And like anything, it might not be for you, whether it's the looks or the price or the, or the way it does its, its thing, but they are really excellently put together knives, so. Okay, next was, tell me about some refurbs. So I got you some refurbs. A few and far between these days. We don't have a lot. These knives are awesome. What happens is sometimes someone buys the wrong thing. Uh, something breaks. Uh, we have sample knives in our stores on the wall. 
And uh, yeah, we try and keep them really nice and sharp because they're demos for you to try when you come to our store. But um, we retire them after a while, after a couple of times that we've hot rotted the knife or thinned the blade. We, we retire them because they start to feel a little different. What happens is our man Nauto, who's pretty darn good at sharpening, takes them and he, uh, he refinishes them. Some people say these are better when they were new. I don't know about that. But what they are is a way better price and they are basically new. I will make them active so that the, they, you can see them online soon. So this is the thing that goes for sale in, in about four minutes on Monday morning at 8 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. It, it's gone. These are very sought after because they're an excellent deal. Um, now, I, like I look at it and I know he's done stuff because I can sort of see like a little bit there, right at the heel, but it's pretty hard to tell. I think this one's interesting. I can see in the deep part of the, oh, look at this camera. Jesus, this is nice. <laughs> Look at that, you can actually see some rust deep in the Kurochi finish. And you know what, when you're buying one of these knives, it kind of comes in the as is, where is, you know, you still get a free sharpening from us on it, for sure. But uh, something like that's, you know, not something that is gonna come out of the knife really easily. You could probably, if you wanted to deal with it yourself, you could, but you'd likely lose the Kurochi finish. Now, if you just want a really great knife, this is Yoshimune. Nikiri Hammer Tone, this is $94 at what, and 20 cents. Um, They're anywhere from 35% to 50% off Yeah. from the uh, retail price. And some of them are really, we made it very good deal. This is the Hato Sakai Kobunka. It's $210. I think it's like 40% off. This is 40% off. If I have you go to website, no idea you will why. be able to see them, uh, like how much uh, discount is that's given. Look at this guy. This is a Ginsan Santoku. It's $118. And you know what? It's got a little scratch. Oh, no, that wasn't a scratch. That was just a mark. Uh, it's been resharpened. Uh, it's great. You know what? It's great. Is it perfect? Probably not. Is it a great deal? Absolutely. I'm going to tell you something about this. This is one of my favorite knives of all time. This is the 240 more attack of Guto, blue steel, number two. I was along the lines of some of the first knives I ever bought were these more attackers from Kevin, back when I was still a cook and he was starting out selling kitchen knives. Um, you, you can argue that there's knives that are better than these for whatever reason. Some have faster gigabytes or more RAM or something. I just love cutting food with a more attacka. I love the way it feels. I love the way it travels through the food. Um, it just feels right to me. I'm a big fan of more tacos. Uh, what else do we have? We got, like, we got a Koishi here. It's $212. A 210 Koishi Guto. Like, that's a steal. An absolute steal. You know, and some, sometimes you might be like, wow, that would be a great first knife. It'd be a great last knife, too. Like, it's really hard to beat a Koishi. Um, especially this, this 210 Guto. That's like, this is a killer. Again, yeah, you know, we've, we've done it here. We don't have a sandblaster. We're not making things perfect. We're doing a damn good job, right? But you can saw the... That's 50% from the original. You need the light to hit it. You see that? Ah. There's like a little scratch there. Big deal. Yeah, so that, that's 50% from the, uh, the original price. It's got a chip on it and I moved it and it's thin and polished. Half the price, and it's definitely more than half the knife. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, sorry, I just found these ones. For those of you who know about little, little bit of Shiraki Hamono, I found them sitting at the... Uh, oh. So this wave out for Aogami is very, like, signature. Um, Montanlen, or the... Uh, the what now? This, this, this line. Mountain? Montanlen. Montanlen. What does that mean? So that's basically where... The, it, wavy, wavy. it just means wavy line. Wavy I love line. these crazy cool words. Yeah, and you're like, know, it just means it. like yeah, yeah. tall guy. But yeah, this one here. So the, these two are uh, from Shiraki Hamono. Again, we can't really say who actually forged and made it, but definitely when the Shiraki town is still around, that's where, when it's made. It was his shop. Yeah. His apprentice, who has now taken over and changed the name to Nakagawa, because yeah. his name is Nakagawa. But, Might yeah. have been Nakagawa who made it. You never know. You never know, but... <coughs> But here, Excuse me. We, we, we've been told that, you know, we can sell them at the, uh, 
you know, Shiraki Hamono. So. Are we showing these now? Do we, what are we doing, Sky? Apparently someone's asking for factory second for uh, this. Yes, let me find that question really quickly. Um, yes, Neil was wondering, the Tojiro large multi-purpose Nikiri uh, factory second is noted as being slightly bent. Can yes. you explain this further and how the bend could affect performance? Oh yeah, that's slightly bent. <laughs> you may be able to see that on the camera too, no? I'm just trying to line it up. That's a bad side. This side will work better. Can you see the gap? There's a gap. It's bent. This blade is not straight. I think you could probably reliably like <coughs> bend it back if you were gentle with it. Yeah, uh, do you know what? We yeah. have tried bending it back and then it bends back on its own. That is just the way this thing is. It is slightly bent. That's why, uh, what's the uh, price on that one? Do you know what? If you're right-handed and you want to use this to peel watermelons, I think that bend is a benefit. <laughs> Absolutely. It's a benefit. It's a feature on a bug. <laughs> so um, it depends what you do it. You know what? This kind of knife is awesome for cutting pizza. You have yourself a really cool stone pizza grill in your backyard, and uh, you want to just make beautiful cut pizza, that's good. Yeah. If you're trying to uh, julienne something, uh, you're probably not going to be so happy. It, it is a bit flexible, because it's a single piece of steel. I don't know, what are you going to do with it? Tell us. If you tell us a little bit more about what your expectations are, I can let you know more or less whether or not you'll be happy or not. Yeah. How much are these? How much are these? We don't have a price. They are bent. Between one and one thousand dollars. Thank you, <laughs> Captain. Obvious. Well, Nathan's looking at the price for that. Uh, Chef Knives Enthusiast was wondering when does the Knife Nerd Guide to Japanese Kitchen oh. Knife Part Two come out? That's, so that's good. We were just talking about this. What a great week. question! We're just starting to craft that, and we're hoping to get them on the shelves for Christmas next year. Now that we've told you, we actually have to do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> October 2024 is kind of our deadline that we've imposed on ourselves. I don't know if you've ever written uh, a book, but it's real hard. 39 bu bucks for what? that guy. Yeah, so I, that, you'd be insane not to. This is why Kevin doesn't let us buy knives until the end of the first day, because, like, this would be gone. Yeah. Uh, speaking of discounts, jo Joseph Beadsley was wondering, is the stock on your site now the discounted price or will they discount further next week? Everything Ooh. is priced as it is. It should be right now. Should be. Should yeah. be. We, do you want to explain why? Because most of the stuff isn't stuff that we get normally. Mm. Like it's primarily new stock that yeah. we get for the garage sale. Yeah. So we don't want to make a fake price and then mark it down to do you want a price to? price. We can make it a bigger price and then put a discount on it. Some of the some of it is, some of it is discounted like that old Sakai, right? That old yeah, stock the, is the old stocks are a discount. discount. It's a Tuning. brand new knife, but the uh, you know because it's the old stock, we yeah or, yeah we. we yeah, a lot of these are knives that we just got a great price on, so we're yeah. passing that along. Yeah, yeah. The Tuna yeah. Hisa's are twenty percent off. Yeah. The uh, the Tojiro Flash Bread uh, Bread American Utility whatever is only one hundred fifty because they gave yeah. us a great deal on yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah, we're just trying to put out some honest good stuff for some honest good prices. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Nope. The prices don't go down any further. We're as listed. Uh, mm. CG. What's that? <laughs> CG was asking about gardening tools. I don't know if we got any specifically for the sale. I haven't seen any. Not but, specifically. But we do. We do have one that we haven't talked about yet, and some other great stuff that I, I have. Some, at home. some of you probably. Do you have a great big hoe? <laughs> Ow! Ow! Great Ow. back scratcher. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> yes. What we have is we've got a hori hori. Hori horis are cool. They're like a little shovel slash uh, kind of like a toothy serrated blade if you're trying to like strip bark off of something. This is a great little Japanese tool. You see them in a few places now. They're kind of popular. And you can actually sharpen it and get a decent edge on it. Yeah. If you want something that's like on your belt, multi-purpose multi garden thing. Yeah. Uh, so we've got the Hori Hori. Oh. We've got a great big hoe. Big hoe. And you know what's good about this thing? Is this is made out of steel that's been hardened and it is sharp and it is sharp in a bowl. It's good. Like, it it's is a good size. It's like really good size. Hoe. Right? It's really easy to rehandle. Mm -hmm. it, it's like, it's a very good tool that looks 
rudimentary, but it will last you an incredibly long time and it will work better than just the mediocre Canadian tire guys. Big head shears. Smooth. We need, here, where's your mic? Don't move. <laughs> I pruned my apple tree with those this year. Yeah. They're, they're well, not these ones. Yeah, no, not that pair. Right? There you go. Big head shears. And we have the small pruning shears from Toyama and yeah. Like these are oh my those, God. Uh, those Toyama uh, shears are amazing. Hmm? Sickles? Sickles? Yes, we should. Yeah. They're really nice. Yeah. The Toyama shears, oh, they're so. just the standard kind of bypass shears or I think some people call them a secateur. I don't know if that's the right term for it, but uh, I got a pair. They're just a, a really great, sharp, super sharp carbon steel blade. Just like a Japanese kitchen knife, harder steel stays sharper. Can you chip it a little easier? Yeah, well, don't cut rocks with it or don't use it to cut wires. But uh, I can cut a branch on a softwood kind of tree, even you know, like the thickness of a thumb you can just cut through. It's pretty incredible, so. Okay. Deals, what deals, are... deals. Deals, deals, deals. Uh, okay, so somebody was asking, Sky, what's the person's name? What, what are we looking at? The thing, uh, cookware. Cookware, uh, Jennifer Batuzzi. Jennifer something. Yes. Jennifer Jacuzzi was asking about uh, Will cookware. Will any cookware make it to the garage sale, donabe or frying pans or woks? Yeah, so we have uh, a bunch of stuff, a bunch of cookware for the garage sale and some things that aren't for the garage sale, but just cool. Um, we got a whole bunch of stuff from Kuhn Raikon uh, that was on, on sale. They're clearing out their warehouse. And so we just got like a ton of crazy stuff. We got a pumpkin peeler. These are actually really great little things. They're little kids knives. We've got a straight edge and a little slightly serrated nice. edge knife, right? Fun if you're trying to build some good habits with your children, you know, they're your children. You, you can tell if they're uh, ready to use a knife or not. Kuhn has these really great vase grinders where you, you unscrew the top. You know what I think about this company is everything just looks good and they're tools that you probably have already and use but they make them uh, really well. So they're just a very good version of, the, of a normal thing. Uh, you know, we, we have this cool can opener from them, which uh, operates by like separating the lid from the, the sides of the can. It actually doesn't cut through the top. So you don't end up with a lid with really sharp, rigid edges. Uh, um, although you do get the sides of the can that are really thin and kind of sharp, so I don't know how much of a solution that is. Um, and sometimes when you use it, it's like a, a test of your intelligence. Uh, but yeah, we got lots of fun stuff from Kuhn. Fun little whisks, right? Satisfying. Uh, and some good little tools there. But we have some more other, more, more fun stuff. What else do we have? We got, we got lots of time. We're, we're in no hurry today. I like these, I was playing with these the other day. Oh, They're just like cool, yeah. good old kitchen shears. Yeah. But they've got this little tab here that locks it. Oh my God. But the tab is spring loaded. So all you got to do is just squeeze them a little bit and it pops open. I, uh, and it's got a bottle opener because everything cool needs to have a bottle opener on it, right? That's how they go. Do you know why I need that? Because I hang out in my garden and I prune my tomatoes and my other plants and harvest stuff. But I have a pair of kitchen scissors. So I put them in my pocket, but then they open in my pocket. So I need those because they latch closed and then I can open a beer while I'm doing my gardening. That's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. I like the, <laughs> some of the stuff we got from Coon is just so dumb. <laughs> this duck spoon is so funny. I don't know why it's so funny, but look at this. Look at, look this at dumb the size. Face. What is the purpose of this? Look, look at the drawing of <laughs> the duck wearing headphones, having a chill in the lake, saying, I measure a tablespoon. <laughs> it's like, what? It's kind of interesting how it's got this little shape here. I don't know what that's for. But. Any of you chefs out there with a spoon fetish, you need this in your, your chef spoon collection. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, Naoto got these. These are just really neat little, I think these would make great stocking stuffers or just like, I don't know. I feel like most people's mom would really like these. That's not an insult, it's like a compliment. Um, but yeah, these are just like little mini mandolins and like grater things. That's a, a julienne slicer, a little like micro grater for garlic. 
or nutmeg with a little like, is it catch? You know, this little guy's really yeah. thin, right? It's got a very thin blade, mm -hmm. so it's gonna be very sharp. Probably do truffles on that. I was that. gonna say, I, I think this makes a very handsome little truffle slicer. Oh, we should've used that. We got a video coming up, an ad coming up with truffles. We should've used that guy. That's beautiful, right? Yeah. Yeah, so these are really neat. I think, like what I said, I, I think they with, make great What do we do with this little covers. brush? That's, that's for cleaning out your, your little micro grater. This guy. Just for getting all the garlic out of there. Garlic, yeah. radish, ginger. And then just like a cute, cute little grater. But yeah, if you want, again, like if you want to teach your kids how to use stuff, or if you need some gifts. I think or cool. just have that like ideal, everything is miniature in your kitchen. <laughs> yeah. Or you have one of those kitchens with like a lot of knickknacks on the wall, you know? Uh, other cool cookware that we got, this guy is a tare bucket for when you're making yakitori. So this guy, it's just a nice stainless steel bucket, but it's got a couple cool features. First of all, when you flip the lid off, well, that doesn't do it, never mind. Other one. When you flip the lid off, it catches on the side. What? Look at that. And it's got this little bar in the middle, so you can drag your brush over it. Yeah. You know, you know, uh, you ever watch Bob Ross? I do, yeah. When he, when he cleans his brushes and he goes, beat the devil out of it. Oh, classic. Right? the best part of the show. Listen, you can put any kind you of be, sauce then. be the Bob Ross of the Ecuador. If you're going to brush anything, like you want to use barbecue sauce, I don't know, egg wash, what else do you brush? Like if you're working in a restaurant and you're egg washing stuff, right? Oh, this yeah. This would be a great place to keep oh, your egg there's wash. There's nothing worse than drips of egg wash. Oh, because it get hard and gross. Yeah, it dries yeah, yeah, out yeah, yeah. so hard. Or but you can kind of like butter on stuff. Yeah. Like I used to work in a diner, so oh. you just keep that on the flat top, and then you could brush your bread Dude, for like fried sandwiches with garlic butter. Because fried sandwiches are how you're supposed to make a sandwich. Yeah. 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 Uh, this thing's really smart, actually. Yeah. Now I'm just kind of <laughs> fantasizing. I think we should do like uh, the joy of yakitori, like like Bob Ross inspired <laughs> grilling video this summer. I'm in. Yeah, I'm into that. Cool. Oh no, I have to eat yakitori at work? Right. No, <laughs> right. Those are the worst days when we just make food for a video. Um, this guy is super cool. This, this little box here. Anybody know what this is for? Ooh, ooh, ooh. I do, I do. What's it for, Mike? It's for making your own dashi. And you need to find yourself a piece of uh, dried bonito or katsuobushi. Uh, or katsuo. Mm -hmm. Right? And so this is a katsuobushi slicer. This is very much like a little plane. There's a drawer here where your shavings of your bonito go into. And uh, this thing comes out. I, it, right? I just love how dignified this is. Like, you respect this, this dried fish so much that you've got like a jewelry box to collect all the shavings, Oh, look, the and shavings, it's, this right? is like cherry wood. Yeah, it's beautiful. And they're fun to operate. Uh, if you need the blade to stick out a little bit more for a bit of a deeper slice, you have to tap it on one end with a mallet or the other if you want to adjust it. Mm. Uh, it's quite tricky to use. I have one and I found that uh, the secret is you need to be able to ha just gently glide this thing over top. Mm. As soon as you start pushing on the, the katsuobushi, it just like cracks it. and it, it, it like, It's so hard, right? There's a real art to using this, but if you're into making yourself dashi, Dude, the flavor compared to that bag you get at the grocery store in Chinatown that's like already pre-sliced, it, it's so there's so much more aromatic character to it. It's it's really worth it. Uh, it you do need to figure out a way to get the katsuobushi. No one in Canada is making it. Sometimes it's hard to come by. Do you know what you can get in Canada? But I bought it on Amazon for. one time. Not not to spoil our next ad, but it is coming up soon. Uh, Isaac used this to shave truffles, and it worked super well. My God, it would. Right? And That's absolutely What's cooler, perfect. if you're going to drop the cash on a truffle, what's cooler than like having this special drawer to collect all your beautiful truffle shavings and then you take some gold tweezers and you just gently place they them have to be gold? in the pepper dough? Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah. Or they could be black to match the truffle. That, that's really smart. Yeah, I think it's pretty cool. Isaac come up with that? No. I no, I didn't think so. <laughs> He was very caffeinated and hung over that day, so he was, wasn't coming up with a lot. No. Um. Castle Bushy Slicers, a.k.a. Truffle Slicers, a.k.a. just a beautiful thing. Yeah. Beautiful. Speaking of beautiful things, these are not part of the garage sale, but these are two pieces of gear, oh dear, uh, that are indispensable in my kitchen. Whoop, there we go. 
This is a carbon steel pan and a cast iron pan. I can't look at that cast iron pan, I'm gonna buy That's it. so nice. Um, I'm actually gonna be demoing these. So I mentioned earlier, we're gonna have uh, product <coughs> demos and like cooking <coughs> demos on Monday. And so I'm gonna do a little comparison. I actually did a video recently on our channel where I compared a carbon steel and cast iron pan side by side. So I'm gonna do a, an abridged version of that. I'm gonna cook a steak in this and fry some eggs in a carbon steel pan. But uh, these are gorgeous. They're, called, they're from Smithy. They're made in North Carolina, I wanna say. Um, and they're just phenomenal. The main thing that sets them apart, besides their looks from like a regular cast iron pan, is how smooth they are. If you've ever cooked in a vintage cast iron, like a really good one, it's just, it's so much more non-stick than like a rougher lodge. Yeah. And, and that's because they spent all that time machining out the surface. And so that's, that's how these are made and they're, they're phenomenal. I'm, I'm uh, you know, like soon. I've got a, about an 80 year old cast iron pan I bought for 20 bucks at a, a flea market. Mm -hmm. And I have a really hard time justifying buying another one, mm -hmm. but it's only nine inches. And I feel like 12 yeah. is a much better size. Well, I've got a Finex 12 inch, cause we used to carry Finex, but this guy's actually bigger. It's 12 inches from the bottom as opposed to the top. You mean it's actually it's 12 actually, inches? It's not like yeah. the, the, the Mac computer 12 inches. How much um, is Three. I'm really trying hard not to say it, but you know what I'm trying to say. It's free. You can't measure from there. You got to measure from the inside. <laughs> That's fair. So uh, they're just beautiful. They got this cool little ring on the bottom too. Uh, the, flip it over. Did you tell them this? I did not yet. This little ridge here on the outside, it's like slightly raised, maybe a couple millimeters. Mm -hmm. The thing that's nice about it is if you're using an electric stove or a flat glass top stove, like cast iron does have a tendency that's to kind of warp a little bit, but not on the outside, it warps in the center. Yeah. Uh, this little so ridge- that, Then it rolls around on you and it's a little Yeah, it even, spins yeah. around like a top and essentially you can't use it. So this little ridge keeps it sitting nice and flat. Uh, it's like having, you know, uh, four legs on a stool is, and that, that's a bad analogy. Never mind. Skip that. <laughs> but listen, it still works even if it's on a, on um, what's this called on an induction because it's yeah. still magnetic on the edges. Or glass and, top. Which, and, it, and a glass top. It, I, I've used it on a glass they're top. They're so good. So good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I also find compared to my Finex, it just seems to heat more evenly. Like that is a bit of an issue with cast iron. It doesn't heat very evenly. So you got to preheat it a lot, but this generally got hotter, faster and heated more evenly than even my, my fancy Finex. And then, yeah, the Yamada hand hammered walks. This is the 36 centimeter, which Nacho says is too big, but it's, it's perfect. This is the correct size. <laughs> this is the correct size. You can use this over your fire pit, trust me. And so you can make like nice fireside noodles um, or just on your stove. Fireside noodles with Nathan Garrett. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, we got so many video ideas. <laughs> not good ones, but we have them. <laughs> That's what yeah, well, you know, not every idea can be a banger, right? Well, uh, what do you think, Scott? We have we got questions? Some questions. Yeah, we uh, had somebody asking to see the Sunihisa knives. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. Let's talk about some more knives. This one just says Meguro Bocho? Question mark. Yes. The answer yes. is yes. Meguro Bocho. Yes. Yeah. Done. That was easy. Um, Sunihisa. Let's. So we got a lot of Sunihisa knives. They have like twenty different lines or something along that line. So. We're just going to kind of work through these in order. How close are we to commercial break there, Sky? Uh, you got about 12 minutes. 12 minutes. Okay, we won't get through all these. There's a lot of Tsunehisa knives, and they are all 20% off. So if you are looking for your first Japanese knife next week, or you're looking for, you know, a, a gift, or you're Whoa. on your budget because groceries are expensive, uh, you know, you want to buy your Christmas presents next week, these, these Tsunehisas are the way to go. They're phenomenal quality and beautiful for a very very reasonable price. Yeah, Something you'll find of... in all of the knives that we send to you, uh, you might not know this, but we put a thing in here we call a care letter that we, uh, by we, I mean Nathan writes. Uh, and then there's information about the whole knife uh, and, and a story about Japanese knives. And, uh, and then on the backside, we always have this like instructions kind of thing. It's like sort of the do's and don'ts. Uh, I'll be honest, there's more don'ts than do's, but um, <laughs> If you're going to give one of these as a gift to somebody, it's really a great idea to just get them to read that. Uh, otherwise, I would say in general, the, the best advice we've kind of come up with when telling people about how to use a Japanese kitchen knife is, you know, twisting and scraping the edge on a cutting surface is going to dull any knife. Uh, and otherwise, if you wouldn't try and chew it with your own teeth, try, don't try and use your Japanese knife on it. The chances you're going to chip uh, are, are kind of like the Venn diagram crosses over with what I do and don't bite with my own teeth and what I do and don't... Um, 
cut with my Japanese knife. And I'm not crazy. I don't like chew on ice or something. Like, if you want to do that, go ahead. But uh, that's my story. What else we got? Sunahisa, holy cow. Well, I mean, this is what we're supposed to be doing today, right? Is unboxing these things, so. Look at this beautiful petty. This is like Whirlpool Damascus here. I do like a petty knife with the Western style handle. I'm not really on one team or the other when it comes to handles, but I do find on a petty knife, it does give you a little bit more of a weight to it, especially when the blade is really thin like this one. With the Japanese handle, you might find it's kind of big and bulky. Uh, but yeah, this one's really quite a stunning knife. Look at that thing. So if you want this one, it's called the Tsunehisa Ju, Ju Q. J U K Y U. Ju Q. Q Ju. Nine. Isin Sanchi Go Rook Sicha Q Ju. Nine, ten? I don't know. I'm trying to learn Japanese. Not really. What else? VG1. This is a great steel. VG1 is uh, still nice and hard. Uh, not quite as resilient as a VG10. Uh, beautiful little pocket wood handle. $122. Okay, so this is a, this is a 210 millimeter Guto. This is a chef's knife. This is a kitchen knife that you could use in your kitchen every day from now until forever. This would do pretty much everything you need yeah, a knife to do. A kitchen knife you can use in your kitchen. What will they think of next? Right? Right? For 120 bucks, if all you need to do is buy a knife so you can cut food and go to a grocery store and buy whole food and buy, buy yourself ingredients and, um, and make real food as opposed to stuff that's pre-cut and, and expensive and, you know, oxidized, uh, 122 bucks would get you there if that's what you're into. I, again, like gifts, like I've got, you know, I've got a gift exchange this year with a hundred dollar limit. I think I could push that to 120. Sure. Well, Just and sometimes like, I don't know about you, but sometimes you have friends, you, you hang out at their house and sometimes you end up cooking and then you realize like they have terrible knives. So you just sort of give them a gift slash plant a knife at their house. So when you're over there, you can use it. You know who we are, right? Oh my God. This is like <laughs> so many, so many Tsunehisas. This is like a fifth, may, no, not even, of, of the Tsunehisas. All right, what do you want to know about Tsunehisas? What are we going to talk about here? That petty, I think we were just oh man. Looking at all of them. Like, there were a lot of questions earlier about, like, oh, like, I want to get a knife under a certain amount of dollars, or I want to complete my collection, or get some first knife kind of stuff like soon he's is an awesome place to start for any of these and and a great combination of steel types vg1 we have aus 10 we have vg10 uh we have uh, uh what else do we have vg1 uh this is white carbon number one with stainless steel cladding this looks like blue number two. Oh, this oh it's shirogami this is white carbon look at that <clears throat> nice Oh, look at that. That, that looks so rustic. Said? That's so cool. When I when I first got That's into Japanese knives. That's $116? What? Bananas. When, when somebody says, I want a Japanese knife, that's, that's what comes to mind for me. And that's a stupid good price for that. <coughs> Excuse me. This uh, SK4 Chukabocho is pretty cool. If you, want, if you have bigger hands or you feel like you need a bigger knife for handling squash and tougher things, but you don't want something that's like massive, like some of those Chinese cleavers are, are pretty wild. Um, this guy's quite big, but it's not super heavy and it's pretty manageable for most, most folks, I would say. It is carbon steel, but it's not the kind that rusts if you like blink your eyes too slow. So this guy's pretty good. Uh, so this one, Hachi, H-A-C-H-I, Ginsan is a great steel. I really like Ginsan. It's very similar to white carbon steel in a lot of ways, but it's stainless. Uh, I also do really like slicers. This is a 270 mil Ginsan slicer with a pack of wood handle and it's 237 bucks. It looks great. I'd stand at the head of a table and carve roast with that. That would look awesome. I also like this handle, you know, it, it, compared to like their, the, the, I'm gonna get it here, right? It's a bit of a more slender handle and I, I kind of like that. It gives you a, 
makes you feel like you're holding something a little bit more delicate. Um, very nice, very nice. Nicely balanced. Yeah, way to go. This is a great knife. Do you have a Niju on hand there? I don't know. I don't know what a Niju is. I'm going to need you to get me a Oh, beer. wow. Wow. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, but that one got a laugh. Usually you guys don't even listen to my jokes, so I'm pretty happy with that. All right. I'm going to see if I can find you a Niju. Do you need me to? Uh, no, we just got somebody in the chat who's looking at one of those. The, Thank the you for Niju noticing that. I need you, Mike. I need you all day. And Looks like day. Brenda needs you, me. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, that horse is very beaten and dead. So let's move on to these knives. Uh, okay, this is the, maybe the last of the so We'll cover the rest of them after our commercial break or later on. Keep those questions coming, though, because we're you. live for like two more hours still. Uh, we want to make sure everybody gets their questions answered today. These guys are, are what? I actually don't know the name of these. These are the... Ichi. Ichi! Oh, the number, number one. one. Number one. Yeah, awesome. Western style handle, but it's, kinda, it's got some cutaways that slims it down, takes a bit of weight off, makes it a little more comfortable for, you know, if you don't have big gorilla hands like me. That's a, that's a pretty comfortable knife. Not heavy either. Usually a lot like the Western handles kind of beefy they're cool looking yeah. I really like how the collar's got a bit of an angle yeah and that little feet like that little taper your kind of like your pinky sits mm -hmm. yeah it's really cool it's comfortable it's a nice knife they're light hey <laughs> like this yeah. is a light knife especially especially as a knife that's got that western handle that's got a really light feel to it I like it because if, if you are more comfortable holding your knife by the handle like we always tell people to hold their knife like this but some people aren't comfortable with that, right? So if you like holding your knife back here, it feels great. But if you like holding your knife up here, it also feels great. It's, it's kind of perfect for any grip. Is that the Niju? No, this is the Jushichi. Nice. Oh, yeah. 211, that's a super good price. These are super light and thin. These guys, like, we, we use the word laser a lot in the Japanese knife world to describe knives that, you know, cut like a laser. And this guy is in that category for sure. Super flashy. Super thin. Like, if you want to impress somebody that you're having over for dinner, yeah. pull this knife out. Something that's nice when you got a knife that's thin is that it's not going to split food apart very much as you're cutting. Mm -hmm. Right? So it's going to cut nice and cleanly, and, and it'll just make it easier as you're cutting. Yeah, if you want to thinly slice <clears throat> potatoes or cabbage or anything, really. Okay, did we get to the Genbu yet? <coughs> I, see, I see a few knives. All right. Well, we will we will do these last, and then we'll we'll cut to commercial, and then uh, and then we'll come back and answer the rest of your questions. And by the way, thank you everybody for tuning in today. We always appreciate you guys showing up and supporting and. Listening and hanging out and asking questions. So this is for Mikhail, who's asking about the Genbu by Itsuo Doi-san. These are stunning. I want to make sure I got the right knife here. Sometimes I get mixed up. I believe that's the right one. No, these are the Homura Gurren, right? Yes. Which one are the Genbu? <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. I've grabbed the wrong one. Which one are the Genbu, Sky? Uh, let me find it. All right. Riveting television while we try to figure out what <laughs> knife that, you know, I should probably know what it is. Let's see. Oh, super shiny guys. Yeah. I don't know if we have those in the warehouse. So I might just have to show you these guys instead. Let's check the old I'm inventory. I'm looking. I'm looking. You're looking, Mike? This should be in the single bevel section over here. John May wants us to weigh the Gurren, so he's curious. The Gurren? Yeah, the ones you have in front of you. Yeah, okay. I can, I can make that happen. We don't have, uh, maybe we don't have weight, weights on the website for those. Okay. Yeah, so the Genbu Sakimaru is in Toronto, uh, Mikhail. So hopefully you're in Toronto and yeah. you, you can go take a look at it there. Um, we also have, that's a Ginryu. And then the Genbu... 
uh, Deba, which kind of looks like a Hanasuki, is in the warehouse. Which one? Uh, the, um, sorry, Sakai Takayuki Genbu by Itsuo Doi. The, uh, the, it's a 180 Deba. It's on the other side of that wall. All right. Sorry, guys. Like I said, riveting television. John May wants us to weigh... Thanks for tuning in, John. Good to see you, as always. Wants us to weigh... Okay, we're in milliliters. There we go. Grams. So this guy with the Kitsuke tip there is 334 grams. That is 11.8 ounces. And then <coughs> the... This guy with more of the Sakimaru tip is 332 grams. Yeah, these are beautiful. Doisan, I mean, super talented, as you probably know. He uh, learned everything he knows from his father, and he's just a just an incredible blacksmith. Hey, Naoto. I think these Gurren are, the are my favorite knives by him. Okay. And yeah, uh, C.G. Martin was asking about a tuna knife. We have one on the wall in our studio, a Megro Bocho, but we do not have one for sale right now. So uh, I we, found we it. I'm coming. In I found the it. I got store. it. I think we still have the one from when Masashi-san visited. Um, so if you're interested, get in touch. Uh, you can always email us, tv at knifer.com, if you want to grab one. And then he's this. no longer allowed to take our Maguro Bocho off the wall because he keeps ripping it out of the drywall. Well, <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, Sky. It's, the, it's not my fault the drywall. Oh, drywall. yeah, of course you want this knife. Yeah. See, the problem is when you tell me I'm not allowed to take a Maguro Bocho off the wall. Like, I've looked at that thing for months and haven't taken it off the wall. But now, next time I walk past it, it's coming down. Well, think for a second before you pull on it. Yeah. <laughs> Have you tried pulling that thing off the wall? That magnet is strong. Look at that. Look at that mirror wow. polish. Yeah, like we're just silent. We're just staring. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. I'm, just, I'm hypnotized, if shiny. I'm being completely honest. The handle is not that shiny. There's some plastic on there because this is a premium knife and they want to protect it. Um, yeah, yeah. But it's it's, pla there's plastic on that handle until you get it and then you take the plastic off. Right? Oh, yeah. No, this is not an action figure you leave in the package. Like, this is, this is a knife you use, but it's... Just a beauty. Woo. You can almost tell what kind of camera we're using. <laughs> and it's got this beauty Saya. Yeah. Sayas are awesome. I love this like black speckled kind of look to it. Yeah. Sayas are a really nice way to, to store your knife and you know they, they do what you need it to uh, and they do it with a bunch of style. Uh, we're in this never ending kind of quest to find the one that fits them all. But to make a really good one, it's got to be basically built for the knife. And it's, you know, it's a challenge. And, and sometimes when it leaves Japan, it becomes smaller yeah. as the wood dries out. And, uh, and it shrinks in an awkward way. And then it doesn't fit the knife anymore or, or scratches the knife. Which is why something like that. Now, while it's not going to work on something big like a Deba or a single bevel, just having a stack of these classic little blade guards around is really great. Like... I went to my drawer, I got a knife I need to sharpen, so I bring it here, I slide it in the blade guard. It just does everything you need it to, right? Yeah. If you're gonna go uh, stay at an Airbnb, they'll have knives, but you know they're gonna suck. So like, yeah, they're, sometimes they're you just bad. need a knife. Get a blade guard, it, it's like just kind of a must have type of thing in your set, yeah. right? Yeah, if you don't like getting cut all the time, uh, they're pretty important. Um, one thing we, we talked about when it first came out, but this was like eight months ago, we did start getting some universal-ish sayas that are made in the US. They have a magnet inside them, so they lock right on, no pin to lose. And we sent the guy our largest of a few different sizes and shapes to try, to, to make sure that they're big enough to kind of fit, you know, like a Masashi Guto or mm -hmm. a Masakage Nakiri. And so those are pretty universal. If you have a weird oddball knife that you want a Saya for, I would still get in touch and ask if it fits, but yeah, they're, they're pretty awesome. And they're, they're very well priced too. They're well under hundred bucks a piece. Um, okay, before we go to commercial, this just showed up in the warehouse. Um, these aren't even, we haven't even announced these yet. Like, nobody knows that we have these except for the people in the warehouse in the office. But these are chainmail pan scrubbers. This is Sir Scrubs a Lot, ye olde chainmail pan scrubber. Who lets you design this? <laughs> well, uh, I told Mason he should make a medieval inspired package, 
and he did it because he's a which way is right side up smart person other way flip it around oh we're in mirror mode right there we go why'd you rip it off because i want to show people because that doesn't look like anything <laughs> just a just a it's dime bag full of chain mail <laughs> it's just another magura bocho on the wall <laughs> yeah okay so this is a uh, fall all in all, all. You know just what? another Megro Bocho so on the wall, Mike. We had these as like samples, <laughs> and uh, I was reluctant to bring it back and share it. And I can't, yeah. I can't tell you like because of how good it was. I almost wanna... exclusively cook inside of cast iron and, and and carbon steel, and stuff gets stuck to the pan. Right, you burn things. You want to scrub it off, but you don't want to lose your your sacred seasoning layer. Yeah. Right. This does it. Right. I have a copper pan. I did on the outside. Don't do that. It kind of scratches it. The mm -hmm. material is too soft. But mm -hmm. listen, these things are awesome. They're just awesome. I, um, I, I have a dirty secret, and that's that I really like using plastic sponges from the dollar store because they just hold soap better than like a cloth or something environmentally friendly. But I use them for like way too long because I don't like throwing them away. So I use this guy, and it saves my sponges from getting disgusting. That, that, first of all, it's just disgusting. But That's fine. Nonetheless. This is great. And, and we had a great photo of someone who had put this on their cat's head and their cat looks like a knight. Oh yeah, I'll So go. I think their cat is actually now Sir Scrubs a lot. Yeah. But uh, you know, just a bit of fun. Yeah, I, um, I started some, cause I get up real early to make lunches and walk the dog <clears throat> before I go to work. And usually everybody's asleep when I leave. And so I, I made my daughter some oatmeal, but I went to walk the dog and I was very sleepy. So I left the oatmeal on low. And when I got home, the oatmeal was very black and crispy. <laughs> crispy. Yeah. And so I, I, you know, chucked it in the sink, put some water in it to soak, and then I left to go to work. And I came back after work yesterday. And I was like, oh my God, like, this sucks. I hate, burned, burned pots are probably the worst thing to clean. Oh, yeah. But I used this guy to scrub it out. And it was like a good minute of scrubbing, but the stuff, the burnt oatmeal came off the pot, no problem. Here, here's Quinn's cat with a uh, <laughs> ready, ready to crusade. Oh, ready, ready to take back Constantinople there. <laughs> cat Constantinople. <laughs> We're getting a lot of love for Not the, Istanbul. Uh, the chainmail scrubbies in the chat. And uh, Kevin Kent says we know about those chainmail scrubbers now. Yeah, we do. They have arrived. Yeah, yeah. They literally just showed up yesterday. Um, we're, we're telling people about them soon, but I said, you know what, screw it. Let's, let's tell our good fans on the internet about these ahead of time, because they're pretty cool. They're great. Uh, they are, you can buy them now for 20 bucks. We haven't launched them yet, but if you really want one with your order, you can pick one up for 20 bucks. Uh, okay, let's show you a marvelous commercial about a very expensive bowl of ramen. All right. Enjoy. Here we go. All of the chefs of the internet will hate me. <coughs> Bless you, or not. I thought we've already determined today that there is no God. Today we are making tonkatsu chicken ramen. Isn't tonkatsu pork actually? So what is the burner's name? A beautiful pot here. For those of you who don't know, I am the cheese man. We're making a cheese inspired ramen. Pour in chef pincers. I have a pair myself. They don't pay me to say that. Oh, whisk, do you sell these too? One might even consider it the right tool for the job. Emmental, fontatsu. Contact, contact to? A lovely microplane blade. Can you believe the cheese strings, the cheesiness of this cheese? Chopsticks. Ooh, that's uh, what a fucking waste of my time. And we're back. Parmesan, because it's 60 month parm. I know what you're thinking. Golly gee, 60 month parm in my tonkatsu? I have a little store in Calgary. You have to find it from there. I got you all your provolones and burratas in here. You might be thinking, burrata, trench coat. Yep, the pockets are wet. Okay, I'm trying here to showcase all of the products. Is, is it helpful? Okay, okay. More, Daddy? These are from our dear friends at Cow's Creamery and PEI. From the boom operator. Ooh, hands. Ooh. Yeah. There's nothing like warm cheese breath on your neck. Okay, next thing we have from Xavier David. So this is a crottin, which roughly translates to goat from goat shit. They're, yes, they're very popular in France. The cheese, not goat shit. I'm not sure what they do at that. Ooh. This is Riappel Brie from Fromagerie de Ile in Quebec. I think I'm gonna give up my career. It needs more Emmental still. Our fondue tonkatsu. We figured it out. Okay. If you can't tell, when they asked what we're doing, I said, just start the camera and we'll go. It's turning into a nice broth. Okay, it needs more cheese. If I had life advice to give, it just needs more cheese. So now we're at, with the addition of the reappel, we're at five. I don't even have a website up right now. It's gonna be even better for them to find it. We have a special treat for you today. The truffle. Ooh, 
Truffle scented life. That'll be the name of my biography. This is called a Katsu Obuchi slicer. Katsu Obuchi slicer. Directions. Would you like to translate this for us? M mine's a little rusty. It's like, what was that old? Will it blend? Will it cuts? Kats will it Katsu Obuchi slice? Oh, it did it! I have no face. Needs more cheese. I might just use this all. Life short. Ooh. Oh, oh, found a new sound. See how much coffee I've had? Tiny fish coat. It's gonna make some sort of filthy euphemism talking about a cute box, but I'm using restraint. What I love about this one is there's cheesy jokes on it. <laughs> how do shellfish find their way home? Muscle memory. This is Alps 7, made in Japan, but it's called Alps. You see the sharp blade here? And then that's why I'm not gonna use it. So it's chorizo mussels. They look delicious. If you're a fan of conservas, Oh, that's the right amount, I think. I'm smelling it now, perfect. Okay, I think it's time. Oh. The ramen. You can put it in the hot tub style, like this, where it's just chilling. Put little arms on it. Oh, would you, are you implying I should put the lid on? The starch in it is starting to stick in the broth, so we're all set. Not to say that we don't know what we're doing. More parm, just like pasta, gotta finish with beautiful parm. Just makes your heart happy. And clogged. I got the thumbs up from the producer. Ooh, mussels. One, they're, they're oil, two. Nope, just kidding, you thought I was gonna do three. <laughs> Suckers. It's still very hot. We nailed, you know what? I'm so sorry, I'm the idiot. It deserves another one. Oh, right on top, okay. Right at the apex of my caffeine high, I can feel it. And again, genuinely, it's caffeine. I might even share it with my friends. If you have any of the wonderful products you've seen today, the cookware, the spoons, not this spoon. We have it all. Okay, ready? It's one easy number. 1-888-669-6168. That's right, 1-888-669-6168. Operators are standing by. 24 hour service, right? Who's on the phone all the time? Who orders knives by the phone? I do. That's who does. Thank you so much. Hi. And we're back. I hope you enjoyed that marvelous commercial about our friend Isaac. Um, he didn't want to say the name of his cheese shop because he likes to be an international man of mystery, but it's called Say Cheese. It's in Calgary. You should go buy cheese there. Or truffles, or what else does he sell? Olives? Chanterelles. Chanterelles. Yeah. I just go there and ask him for $20 worth of, um, uh, oh God, what's that good Alpine cheese? That we like? Comte. Comte. I just go, go there this? and buy Comte every, every week. So this, this, yeah, let's show this guy off first. This just showed up. <clears throat> like the, the? We, we just got a box from um, Shibata-san and the guys are literally unpacking it now. There are no photos of this on the website, but it will be available for purchase online Monday. Photos will probably go up Tuesday-ish. Okay, what's it called? This is a Yu Kurosaki folding Ooh, knife. What? Yeah. Comes with a really cool sheath with blue stitching. This is Kurosaki knives. No. Yeah, it's pretty. Oh my god, that awesome, is right? so cool. Um, <laughs> I don't know what it's made out of or what it costs, so I'm gonna look that up. But my god, do I need it? Oh, that's satisfying. This is one of those things that is gonna be out of stock after the first 30 seconds of the sale. So it's got a nice liner lock here. So when you want to close it, you push the liner mm. steel out of the way and fold it closed. The one hander. I'm a fan. Uh, very cool. What is this material? I don't know anything. It looks like that, G10. That looks like G10 or micarta. I, I love how they've alternated the layers there. Oh, Kevin says, sorry guys, I bought this Kurosaki folding knives and didn't tell you. What? <laughs> Kevin? Wait, for yourself? For you or? Confirm or deny, Kevin. I don't know if you know what sorry means, actually. <laughs> I don't think you're sorry at all. <laughs> I, if I bought this myself, I wouldn't be feeling sorry. I'd no. be feeling pretty happy. Well, you know how he can make up with it. Uh, C.G. Martin was asking if we're getting any penny farthing specials this year. So, you know. So, Kevin, <laughs> swing on go, by Kevin. the warehouse, hop on that bike and crash it into a table and uh, you'll, you'll make C.G. Martin feel better. I saw somebody driving an electric penny farthing in Edmonton. <laughs> Good Lord. That's, uh, wow. That's, that's, that's in, wild. Only in younger days, Nathan. Yeah, right. Yeah. 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 Um, 
Okay. What, okay, what are these? So these are some these look like handles. special handles. Yeah, every year we get some really crazy handles. And I brought them out partially because I know you, I think you know the story of this guy. I think, I think you went to go visit these folks. No? Okay, that must have been Kevin and, and Ellen. Well, Kevin, if you're still watching, you know the story of these special handles. I know th basically the story, actually, Sky, you were there for that video. We got some yeah. special handles. And is this the wife oh. of the handle maker? Yes, it's it's the wife of the handle maker who specializes in this yeah. type of dipped acrylic art. That's yeah, not and it's it's like Sumigashi. It's, it's like that, but it's but it's not because it's not paper. So so yeah. dipped like they're likely floating in ink, like an oil based ink is floating on top of water, right? And then they they make a design in the ink, and then probably dip the handle into it. And then as a result, as you push it through the water, the ink wraps around the handle. That's my guess yeah, like as to what happens. They've also made like water droplets of lacquer intentionally. So it's textured. only on the bottom. So you have more and grip. And the top, so you have more grip. Because it's this like, the paint on it is yeah. very, very, very smooth. So it doesn't interfere with the look, but it gives it more grip. It's oh, goddamn genius. I love genius. when people think about right? stuff like that. When people do smart things, and then my they, favorite. And then, and now it's on a Kurosaki Senko Nakiri. Yeah. That's a great choice. Senko is such a beautiful knife. Uh, Kurosaki's, we're such a big fan, obviously, like, we're losing it when he, this guy shows up with a pocket knife, so, like, <laughs> yeah, we're you know, a little excited. we've been a long-time fan of the Kurosaki, uh, Mr. Kurosaki, Kurosaki-san. He is an excellent blacksmith. He makes beautiful knives. He loves to make things with really nice fit and finish, uh, and apparently, this handle fits perfectly on that knife. Yeah. Speaking of which, this is a Tsunehisa. That I was raving about that really light, thin blade earlier. Oh, yeah. And so this is a really nice, understated kind of handle. It's a dyed, I want to say maple, but it might not be. It looks like it, yeah. Certainly looks like it. But, uh, yeah, it's just a nice gray dyed maple. And I think gray is a color that does not get enough credit. Okay, we need to talk nice. about how you find these on the website because I believe it's one product, right? And one then there's product, a drop down well, menu? Well, okay, so no, there's one product for, for each each shape. Yeah, the refurbished yeah. ones are all one product. Mm -hmm. The This one, there's a couple of Senko Nakiri, so it's the same okay. product, but then there's a couple of different. So this is option three, so that means there's at least three different Senko Nakiris. Great. Same with this one. The, actually, this one should be the only one. So this is the Tsunehisa ZA18 with a, with a and customer. And so we're going to find this under a section in the garage sale category called special handles, right? Custom, custom, custom handles. handles. Yeah. So you want to find these, you got to go through the website and navigate to custom handles, and then you'll see the option number. We've got them labeled. It's going to be the same one that yeah. you see, right? It's the same photograph that's in the picture, so you'll get the exact one. Yeah. Yeah, um, if you click on the option, it'll pull up the photo for but that. But you'll find the different options in sort of a drop-down <laughs> menu, so. Yeah. yeah. This guy, uh, option two, this is a Nether Sunahisa blade. Is this also Z18? SLD. And so Ooh. this guy's an SLD Damascus. Amazing steel I was talking about earlier with that Masashi. Just a stunning blade. And look bit at of, that handle. Bit of texture of that blade. You can see how it's not perfectly reflecting the light. It's got a little, little something something going on. Whoa. There we go. Look at how it's tapered here, right? And oh, the Damascus yeah. shows up there where it's tapered in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it tapers back towards your hand. So it's a, it's, it's, you ever have those knives that are just cut and that edge is really rough. Yeah. And, and when you're chopping, here. especially like as a person who works in a, in a restaurant, <laughs> if you're doing a lot of chopping, that just chews up your finger. Next thing you have this gnarly callus on it. Uh, yeah. But uh, that's a nice little finishing touch. And I, I also like that they've combined the like blonde buffalo horn and the darker buffalo horn. Oh. So quite, there's a little bit of blonde over there. Yeah, it's a lot of color variation oh, in there. Oh, we got info from Kevin. Oh, oh we got uh, He said, those handles are from Yamakin Handle Maker, and these handles Sweet. are made by the owner's artist wife. Uh, she makes awesome and beautiful handles, and they feel great and look better. Uh, and says, Thursday at 2 p.m., I'll be riding the penny farthing through the warehouse. Watch for <laughs> specials happening shortly after that. <laughs> Fantastic. We even, Kevin, we even brought the penny farthing down. I don't know if you can see over there. But it's it's right by my winter bike, uh, and we, we built that we it. built that uh, that jump that you wanted us yeah. to build too, so yeah. you can take air on it this time. We've right. got the clowns that are going to be juggling flaming bowling pins yep. for you. Uh, we've got that big like Canadian flag jumpsuit that zips up for yep. you and your helmet, crash yep. helmet. Everything you asked yep. for, it's all it's, it's already all, for all you. prepared. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We don't want you to be disappointed. Uh, and then okay, last last custom handle, and then we are gonna. Uh, unbox about 40 different knives <laughs> from Nigara Hamono. Uh, this is the 
Silver 3, Nishiji Damascus. It's a Gyuto 240, which is the best size of knife, in my opinion. If you want a nice, nice long blade, Who is this not from? too tall, Nigara. Homo. That's from Nigara. Hey? Yeah, it doesn't look like their usual stuff. It's a little more rough, but in like in a good way. Like it's not rustic looking, but it's got a really nice I texture. I really like this blade. aesthetic where it looks like a rock. It yeah. looks like someone found a perfectly shaped rock and then ground it into a knife. What do you want to do with your knife? I want a rock! <laughs> na, 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 na. I want to open boxes. Good lord, yeah, let's move on. Um, okay, yeah, so we have a ton oh, of. Oh, yeah. what is this? <coughs> this this stuff is that is Nigara so Honosuke. And look at that handle. Ugh. So this is such a cool knife. So a Hanusuki looks very different if you know what a normal Hanusuki looks like. He, he, you're going to typically find it come up to a finer point. It'd be like more like a, a triangle. This has got a nice straight edge to it. And uh, it is a hefty boy. This thing is nice and thick. And this handle is so slender. But wow, is it ever cool. Uh, okay, I want this knife. Yeah. How I'm... many knives can I buy? <laughs> Oh as my many god. as you want. Oh, and the hand. Oh my god, look yeah. at these. All right. I didn't know about these. I'm not normally a fan of these wild handles, if I'm being completely honest, but the ones we got this year for these Nigaras are so crazy and so cool. Um, so it looks like we've got these Honosukis. You know, it looks like a Kobanka almost. However, this is a Honosuki. Uh, really big, fat, wedgy blade. Chunky, holy. This would be so good at taking apart a chicken, even little fish. This is a very cool knife. A duck, a turkey. It, it would be good on slicing a lot of stuff. It wouldn't be great if you were trying to cut thin slices of carrots, even thick slices. Yeah. That density would crack like, a, like an axe a bit, but oh my God. And a bit of a bigger Hanasuki too. <coughs> All right. Okay, Nigara is doing such cool stuff. Okay, what else have we got? Yeah, they're, they're really having fun with things. So this is Nigara. Honosuke, these are SG2 uh, is the steel. And again, we've got that same option thing. So this would be a uh, uh, 170 millimeter long Honosuke from Nigara. Uh, and then you would go into the drop down menu for the options for the different choice of handles. I love the, the Tsushima pattern. It's like this kind of, they have like a hammer with a hexagonal shape on it. Oh, oh, I gotta, hold up. You haven't seen these ones yet, so I want oh, them to be no. a bit of a surprise. That's only 600 bucks, eh? Okay, okay. Hold now I, I hope close, we don't close have. Your eyes. Close your eyes. Please, there's no two tens. Close no two tens. No two tens. All right. Can I open them? They're in a no. Hold up. Hold up. Oh my god. There's no two tens. What about now? What about now? Nikiri. All right. Bunka. It's a bunka. Take it's a, a look at these. Oh what? <laughs> I love these so much. Oh my <laughs> goodness. So good. Stunning. It's so but good. But you know what? They feel so good. And like you're saying, yeah. you know, sometimes you want to hold up by the, hand, by the, the, the blade like this. Well, you do that on a Santo, you're going to cover up a bunch of the steel. This knife is weighted in the handle. That's, that's common for a lot, of, a lot of knives, especially if you're more into the German style of knife. You want to hold the handle, right? But uh, this, this is, yeah, these are quite cool. What a surprise. I love the IKEA handle. And I'm, I'm saying that in the most loving way possible. <clears throat> yeah, I sure. love it so much. It's, it's beautiful, actually. It's like so wild. What a fun looking colors. <laughs> yeah. I know you said you didn't want there to be a 210, but check that out. <laughs> these, are, these are a real problem, man. <coughs> I'm really, I'm really having trouble yeah, with these. Yeah, you see now, now when we get to the 210, we got that balance point right here at the back of the blade, right? That feels bang on. Right where it ought to be. I don't know, I kind of like the black and green. Yeah, I think so too, yeah. I Makes me think of the Green Hornet. Yeah. I think I think I honestly prefer the, the blue and yellow, so that means we can each get one. So you can have the color of the Swedish yeah. flag. Yeah. It's, I just love it, it's a great combo. And uh, yeah, it's, it's like, look at this, look how tapered that handle is. Like it's, it's almost a bit like a Masakage Zero, but it flares out way more and, and in way more. 
It's like kind of hourglass shape. I'll, it's I'll really honest, comfortable. Though, I, like these sort of turquoise ones mm -hmm. with the sort of marbling to them. They almost, in a way, they kind of look like that Celadon pottery, but not really. That color is so nice though. What handsome knives. What beauties. All right, well, let's keep going. You know what we didn't do, Mike, when we started back up? Tell them what we're doing and who we are and where we're from and yeah, why we're here. Exactly. So if you are just tuning in or maybe this is your first time experiencing the Knife for Garage sale, uh, every year, Kevin, the boss, uh, and or Naoto and or you know, other staff go to Japan, um, to mostly just to visit the folks that make our knives uh, and to catch up with them and see what they're up to these days. And sometimes we go and take some photo or some video. Uh, sometimes we go to meet new friends. But uh, while we're there, we typically uh, see what they're up to, what kind of new stuff they've been making, um, if they have anything that like <laughs> they made 10 years ago that's been sitting in a box gathering dust for a while. Believe it or not, that happens often. Uh, or just whatever like, they want to get rid of and they, and they want to give us a good price on. And so we have all sorts of stuff that comes back from that trip. We have these crazy custom handles that are like the newest, hottest thing coming out of Japan. We have uh, old stock that's just, they're trying to clear out that they give us a great deal on and so we give you a great deal on. Uh, like that Tojiro uh, American utility knife that's 150 bucks. Um, we have knives from, from new makers and, and younger blacksmiths like Hinokuni Sakai or Tosa Tsukasa that come in at like in the $150 range for a carbon steel hand forged Santoku, which is just bananas and, and relatively unheard of so we try to have a bit of something for everybody um, you know if you're looking for something crazy rare or, or or one of a kind we have that if you are looking to get your first knife for a good price we have that if you're buying christmas gifts for family loved ones we have that um, <coughs> the sale starts on monday november 6th starts at 8 a.m mountain standard time in uh, online and 10 a.m local time in store in toronto ottawa Calgary, Edmonton, and Vancouver. And then it runs all week long, so a lot of the crazier stuff does go when the sale starts, but we have pretty great stuff the whole time through. Um, on Monday, we are gonna be live here on YouTube. We are gonna be spinning the wheel of deals back there. Spin that wheel. Spin that wheel every hour. We're gonna be doing uh, cooking demos and other kinds of demonstrations for you. Oh, yeah. um, we're going to be answering questions, helping you shop. If you, if you haven't figured out what you want by then, we're here to help with that process. Um, and we have some other great deals too. If you spend over 300 bucks next week, you get, you can purchase, and by purchase I mean get for free, but you have to add it to your cart, a Knifeware Ramones shirt, or a Knifeware Ramen Bowl shirt, or a Knives for the People shirt, or my personal favorite, just a good old Oh, that's way too small. I gotta open that up. Uh, so <laughs> if you spend more than three hundred bucks, yeah. more than three hundred bucks, you can choose one of these. Hundred percent off. Free T-shirts. Yeah. So you just have to add it to your cart, and it'll be automatically discounted. Well, I love a free yeah. T-shirt. As well, we'll be spinning the wheel every hour, and there is a different hourly deal. So for those of you that are tuned in on Monday, uh, you might get a shot at something you really like for fifty percent off, or even free. Well, I don't know if you know this, but the first thing Knifeware sold was T-shirts. Yeah, hence the wear. I was, I was one of the first customers to buy knife wear t-shirts. Yeah, right? C customer number two? One? Yep, three. customer number two. Damn, that's, that's, that's pretty close. Customer number two, <laughs> I bought three t-shirts. Before we get into the next set of knives, we got a couple of questions here. Mm -hmm. um, one person was asking, will the refurbs be in their own section of the garage sale website up before Monday, or is it a login and see what there is on Monday morning? They'll be up before. They should be up now. Now to out of them this morning. Yeah, it said it shows active, but it's just going to be in the garage sale section. So you'll just need to click through the pages because I don't. I don't believe it's searchable. Yeah, it. It's so. Ellie makes the garage sale stuff. Not searchable over the weekend, so that people aren't confused and trying to buy stuff they can't buy before the sale. But she did make stuff searchable. For today, so that y'all could could look these knives up. Um, let's figure that out, because <coughs> they should be available online for people to see. Cool, I'll message you. Um, yeah, th we, there's not a ton of them this time around, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll find that and then we'll pop a link in the chat there. 
This problem with doing weird things sometimes is the uh, <laughs> computer doesn't always let you do exactly what yeah. you want to. Okay. We do a pretty good job, I think, making workarounds. Yeah. But, you know, if you ever have a suggestion, just send them our way. We'll, we'll, we'll happily listen to what you got to say. Yeah, we haven't figured it all out. Uh, oh, they are not on the website yet. I found it. Yeah, they're hidden from the website, so we'll get that fixed pretty quick. <laughs> Uh, C.G. Martin was wondering how many of the Kurosaki folding knives are available. Oh, I don't know how, how many are available, Kevin. Kevin well, yeah, we just, we didn't, that that's Kevin a surprise, took. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if we only got the one, then there's between zero and one available. Goodness. Okay. Uh, John May was wondering, do you guys ask Nigara for special orders with these handles? Uh, could you pick a handle style and blade finish and length and make them ask them to make it? Maybe. <laughs> I, think, I think you might have taken our guests from Japan to their hotel. I see. Um, I mean, they're pretty open to feedback, so if we were looking for something specific, I think that would be possible. Within the realm of possibility. We don't yeah. at this point. Yeah, I mean, the thing yeah. is, we're pretty happy with what they make. <laughs> and and unfortunately, the realm of possibilities is is huge, and so yeah. Right now, we just really like what they make. Speaking of liking what they make, we just got these. This is our launch. These are actually going to become regular stock for us, or, or hopefully, if we can get enough of them. But these are their new-ish VG10 Damascus line, and they're just phenomenal. And. Yeah, and right now they're a stupid good deal. This 210 is 265 what? Canadian dollars. Yeah. That's ridiculous. That's, that's like... That's amazing. That's, that's a, insane. These are such That's ridiculous. That price is very, very cheap. <laughs> and we do have a, 210, a 240 somewhere, too. Like these aren't the biggest ones. Yeah, I've awesome. just sort of been going by, by size a bit. Oh, uh, yeah, so. I got you. Okay, what do we need to talk about with Nigaras? Uh, uh, whoa, 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 whoa. We need to talk about that. Look at that. Well, can I see the screen? No. How am I doing? I can't see what I'm showing you here. Give me a sec. Sky. You're in frame. Okay, look at this. This is an SG2. You're beautiful. You're killing Slicer. It. But I mean, I want to cut steaks with this. I want to, I want to, I want to cut all <laughs> kinds of stuff with it. Look at this. It's got this curve to the edge. You know, you could chop all day with this thing. Oh my God, it feels so good. And the way it drops down from the spine like this, right? That kind of leaves you a, that, that shorter blade, right? So it's going to be great for slicing with a lower height, but it gets you a little bit further off the counter so you can chop with it. And, the, you know, this looks like a classic European style butcher knife. Wow. Okay. Okay, game on. That's cool. Uh, all right, what else we got? Sorry, I got I got a little excited about that guy. <laughs> oh, the it scimitar. Happens. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's I'm a fan. that's the word scimitar. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I have a yellow handle Henkel one. Sometimes of those. called a breaking knife. Oh yeah. Do we have a popping and locking knife too? <laughs> oh. Those are different dance disciplines, Mike. Oh, sorry. Yeah. And there's okay. So that one was a two seventy. This is a 300, because uh, 300 is the right size. That is the right size for cutting meat. Um, oh no, I wanted a 300 mil guto, but this is like, my, I, have a, I have a couple of slicers that are really thin and light, and I think they're a little too light for when I'm trying to cut strip loins and stuff. But this has got some really nice weight to it. And I like the curved tip like that, as opposed to the pointier tip. I could use it for doing some like Ooh. kind of skinning type of things yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, where you don't want your tip to poke through. So when the tip's kind of pu pushed back that way, as you're making that swooping motion, it's not going to bust through the skin. Oh no, not again. I don't need more knives. <laughs> All right. It looks like I have something here that's not a Nigara. Does that mean there's a question about this Sekai Takeyuki? That is the Sanpo, which Owen was asking about. Beautiful. Cool knife. Yeah, I'll let you talk about it. Okay, um, the, uh, just for those of you that were wondering, the retired sample knives are now available online. 
I want to put this so underneath. But look, it look them up. Look up. I feel like I think that's re dangerous. Retired demo. Uh, or yeah. Anyways, I'll put that link in the chat. Thanks, guy. Mm -hmm. How's the taper on that guy? Because that's got a thick spine. Yeah, it's got a bit of a bit of a distal taper here. Uh, it's got a very nice balance. It has it has a really nice tall bevel. Right, kind of kind of going all the way up to there. That's more than half the depth of the knife. So we've got a knife that's pretty nice and thin behind the edge. It is definitely not the thinnest, but definitely some weight to it. Kind of a hard edge on the back spot on the spine, but that's easy to knock off. But this beautiful kind of almost like airbrushed look to it. That's beautiful. And that's a white number two. What is that? 180? 210. 210. Sanpo. Guto. Nice. Cool. Really That's nice, pretty. cool shape. All right, we got more questions, Sky. I'm just going to clear up these uh -huh. knives a little. We had somebody ask about the Gihaze earlier. Yeah, listen, Gihaze are great. Uh, I'm going to go find one. Gihei, um makes a really traditional kind of a look to their knife. Um, I think I saw one right here. So, something I remember from a customer who has every knife and all of the nice ones, uh, just a real avid knife fan and knife collector, has, uh, has told me that it's their HAP40 Gihei that they use. And that's the one that they use all the time because uh, it's not precious, right, in a way. Like it just, it's very simple. Very simple design. It does what a knife should do. However, this is made out of a steel that's called HAP40. HAP40 is very, very hard and very, very durable uh, in, the, in the sense of wear. So that means it's going to be able to stay sharp for an incredibly long time. Uh, in fact, it, it isn't quite as easy to chip as some other knives. But the downside is if it does chip, it's going to chip really big. And if you're going to try and fix it, to grind that steel away is going to be very, very difficult. Uh, I think Kevin gave me some great advice when I was learning to sharpen and of course coming across all sorts of different types of steel it was that when you sharpen HAP40 you do the same thing as you do all the time. You go all the way up to a 10,000 grit stone and then you feel the edge of the knife and you think oh yeah that's really sharp and then you go back onto that 10,000 grit stone and you keep going for several more minutes like maybe six or ten and then it's not actually as sharp as it should be until when you go to touch it it scares you. It gets so sharp that it almost feels like when you touch it that it's like it's, you can feel it before you touch it, if that makes any sense. It's like magnetic. I don't know. It's sticky. When you touch it, it is so sharp. It is so sharp and it holds its edge for so long. And uh, it, yeah, these are sleepers for sure. They're kind of like the diamond in the, in the normal looking. Just looks normal. But if you only want performance and you want your food to be the one that looks good, and you want to be the star of the show, not your knife? Pfft, absolutely. Half 40 Nigara, or sorry, half 40 Gihei. Yeah, Giheis are awesome. And that's G-I-H-E-I, Gihei. All right, let's, let's look at something else that's just bananas. Like so. Like B-A-N-A-N-A-S? Like, like B-A-N-A-N-A-S, like, like, B -A -N -A -N -A -S. like <laughs> stupid awesome. Has no business being this awesome. Whew. I mean, anytime, anytime you, you're rocking up the, in the Howood box, that's like not messing around, man. Check wow. that out. Some like galaxy lacquer going on here. <laughs> yeah, right. A bit of airbrush action. You should do that on your Whew. bike. I should. You should get your bike galaxy lacquer. Like my fat bike? Yeah. Thing with like, it's called the Moonlander. That's amazing. Yeah. Oh, ho, ho, ho. whoa. I haven't actually seen this blade yet. I what is it? I don't want to touch like, this because I'm going to stain it. It looks like a poem. It, yeah, I, it, it must be. Unfortunately, the guy that reads Japanese is left for the day, but... If anybody wants to whip out their Google Translate... I wonder, <laughs> I wonder if I could read this with my phone. Let's see. Let's test out Google. Okay, let's... All right, Google, we're okay. putting you to the test. Okay, let's move everything away from the background. Oh, no, we'll make it easier. Might take a minute. Okay, you get that set up. Thrilling, um, thrilling television. So this is a show stopper, this one. Yeah. Uh, Rinka, is that right? 
Rinka. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, somebody called it in the comments. <laughs> nice. So this is a beautifully crafted showpiece of a single bevel. What is it? 330 mils. This is, this is what, you know, you open your first sushi restaurant or you, you like, you get a Michelin star for your sushi and you get this knife. This is, this is a, like stunning. Okay. What do you think about it? How does it feel? It's pretty awesome. <clears throat> it's, uh, it's not as heavy as I expected. Like these, these single bevel, especially the long single bevels can be pretty thick. And this guy isn't really like it. It feels pretty nimble for how big and heavy it should be. Uh, I love the engraved cherry blossoms right. yep. in the blade. Like, look at that. Is this, this is from Michiko san right? <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, so Sakura, we've got yeah. a little card in here from Michiko Kubota uh, is a knife engraver. And this is what Michiko does. She works with a company called Sakai Takayuki out of Osaka in Japan. Oh, we got YouTube channels and stuff. And, um, and so they are, they're getting, they're commissioning very beautifully made knives, putting very beautiful handles and sayas together. And then um, she sits and engraves these stories and these cherry blossoms and all just like, it's just a, it's art, it's artwork. Oh, here we go. <laughs> so my Google, my Google thing is just putting the English on the knife. And I gotta say, knives look a lot less cool when they have English on them. <laughs> Okay. If you look at the things, <laughs> things you, you see, see, you'll see the... You'll see them? If you look at the things you'll see... Okay. Uh, Mikhail says there might be a card with a translation in the box. If you let the viewer know the true nature of things, I'm in this world. Uh, that seems wrong. Oh, oh, oh. It's too late, Michael. They're Mirror of this world. I feel like it's giving me a different translation every time because... Okay. I am this world. Don't let this people, world's Nuremuru. Don't let people know what's wrong with you. That's I like. That's my <laughs> favorite translation. Kevin's like, what did Naoto buy? What is that? <laughs> it's, it's awesome. It's so cool, and you can have hours of fun pointing Google Translate at it and coming up with different haikus. It says, uh, "To let people who see the moon know, mono no aware." the moon might exist as a mirror of this world. I don't think mono no aware was meant That's to be that. That's not Japanese. That's I think it says it. to let people know, or to let people who see the moon know, the moon might exist as a mirror of this world. No, no, to, okay, so to let people know, who see the moon know, the <laughs> sadness or pathos of things, the moon might exist as a mirror of this world. There you go. I don't know, I don't read that. It's very nice. It's very pretty. Well, I hope someone gets me that for Christmas. Yeah, right? <laughs> Mariah Carey, rewrite your song. All I want for Christmas is this 1979 Canadian dollars. That is not order. as much as I thought that it was. That is a lot <laughs> less dollars <laughs> than That's I for sure, this yeah. To cost. Yeah, no. I, I was would, like, only 1979? I thought it was going to be like troll killer prices. That's like... That's like only one and a third mortgage payments. That's really not bad. <laughs> well, what? Nato, you got anything else to say about this? Made by Michiko-san. Anything else? We, we figured out the poem on it. What? We read Google Translate. Uh, Why is it so cheap? <laughs> we found the card that's in English that was inside the box. Why is it only $1,979? Just a, just a smoking good deal for a crazy knife? Yeah. Um, cool. It's, uh, the blade is made by uh, Yamatsuka-san. Uh, mm. Oh, Yamatsuka-san. That's Ginsan. That's Ginsan. Yeah. Nice. Amazing. Cool. <laughs> okay, putting that back in the sheet so we don't mess it up. Uh, so we got a couple here uh, from Myojin. Oh. Myojin Riki. <clears throat> it's, it's steel. The special steel. Not special steel, but it's... Well, it's the cobalt special. That's what's special about this knife is the steel. Cobalt special is cool. It's not something we see a ton. Uh, we had some Kurosaki with the cobalt special. And uh, it's funny, they, they show up with that, like, you know, uh, there's always this, like, 
Rockwell hardness thing that we get with knives, and that hardness often indicates how long a knife's gonna stay sharp for. And that's kind of a rough measure of it. The Cobalt Specialist seems to be a little bit less hard. The Cobalt typically is added to steel, like it's in VG10, and it, it helps to keep it uh, a little bit tougher, like less, less chippy. Uh, and this Cobalt Special has a little bit more of that. I think I'm, I think I'm right here. But, um, man, I've seen a bunch of chefs with these knives, and you know, chefs drive knives pretty hard, so they do want a durable blade. Um, but they're not feeling like they're losing their edge any faster than what they're used to. So whatever they've come up with here, this Cobalt Special, it's out of Takafu Steel, I believe, is just really quite excellent. Um, and Myojin knives are really nice. Younger, younger kind of pair of, of dudes putting some knives together with really nice construction. So again, this is a very simple looking knife, but that's fine. You can make the food look good. Lots of core steel exposed. So we're, we're gonna have a very, very thin edge, uh, but it rides up to a pretty solid shoulder that's uh, kind of smooth, it's tapered, it's not like a hard edge on the shoulder, but uh, this thing's gonna cut very smoothly uh, and be very sharp, and wow, wow, that is a very thin blade. So we've got a Cobalt, we got a 240 and a 210, uh, 562, 460, kind of the price range here. Yeah, Myojin, M-Y-O-J-I-N. Cobalt Special, what a great steal. So if you've got a chef that needs a good price or needs a good gift, or you just want to cut a whole bunch, uh, maybe you're going you're gonna to buy that beautifully engraved knife and not use it that much and still need a knife that you're going to use on a daily basis, this is a great place to be. Speaking of cutting a whole bunch and getting a good price for it, this is another one of the discounted oh, knives that is glued into the box. Yeah, not anymore. Not anymore. This is a Tojiro Wanhute Chukabocho, Chinese cleaver. Um, normally $73, pretty dang reasonable. Huh? You're upside down. Oh, that's now, right now they can read the Japanese. <laughs> yeah. um, but this guy is 35% off next week. So it's 47 Canadian dollars, which is like Ridiculous. 30 American dollars. Um, yeah, it's pretty great. It's, it's big enough that for a larger handed person, your, your knife isn't getting lost when you pinch up on it, but it's small enough that to somebody who isn't comfortable with enormous knives, this is gonna be a pretty approachable Chinese cleaver for somebody that maybe is afraid of an enormous cleaver. Basically free. Yeah, basically free. So I tell myself, when I do my budgeting, anything I buy that's under $50 is free. It doesn't count. It's boy math. Yeah, it's a treat. Yeah, it's just a little treat. <laughs> um, knife math. Um, yeah, no, that that is, Probably the smokinest deal of the week next week. All right, the last, the last of the Nigaras. The, let's. The well, I think we know what we've got here, but let's just. You know, our job here today is to unbox these things, so let's finish unboxing them. Let's un some boxes. Uh, but you never know. There have been a number of surprises in Nigara today, so I think it's worthwhile checking them out and opening them. Yeah, I mean that. Just like fucking. Look at I that. think I might have Look just spied that. something. I think I think I just saw something that was made by Ken Kagura on the counter there. What? It might not be what you're thinking. But he's it is. retired. He doesn't make knives anymore. Wow. Well, I don't know. Maybe every now and again he just like shows up and makes some take, knives. Take, takes a break from fishing. You know, it's like the Rolling Stones are, haven't been around for a long time, except for they keep going on tour. Right. They got to go press the money button sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Two of the Beatles are dead, but they just released a song. Right? <laughs> Did they really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. God. AI Beatles. They like AI oh, fixed God. John Lennon's voice. Yeah. That's stupid. Well, <laughs> here at Knifeware, our only guarantee is that we have no knives made by AI. <laughs> that is the only thing that we guarantee. I don't know. We have to do a commercial for that next year. <laughs> yeah, <we do>. um, <laughs> Can we material. please have I, our employee in Edmonton, come? <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. These knives are made by I, who is an actual person. Um, yeah, look at that little, little drop down in the spine which gives you a little more knuckle clearance when you're working with this guy. We sometimes get requests, it's not a frequent thing, but we sometimes re get requests for a sujihiki that you can also use on a cutting board. Like if you're working grill yep. in a restaurant and you need to be able to slice open a chicken br or a duck breast or something, but you also sometimes need to like, I don't know, mince up some parsley or something. This guy has enough belly, enough rock, and enough height that you could use it on a cutting board as a, as a knife, like as a chef's knife but it's got that long skinny 
uh, quality that you want in a carving knife. So I, I think that's pretty cool. Dude, where's my water? Uh, there we go. I'm gonna put these on the shelf back there. Yeah. Oh, Yaro Kobe. I just found another Yaro Kobe. Mm. They're so cool, and that's a that's a really fun shape. We gotta show off that that Yaro Kobe Sakimaro again. One time is not enough for that guy. Yeah, the Yoro Kobe is this um, layered copper. Look at that. This Kinda is looks so like... hard to take pictures of. Yeah, it's like... so <laughs> reflective and so, yeah, it's so, ah, it's, it's hard to describe, but it's just beautiful. But sometimes I, I use the word hypnotizing to describe What's it. What's the matter? This is definitely in that category. This, this looks like the, uh, kind of like the Unknown Pleasures album cover. Like with the, the topographical map. I don't know that one. You know the one with the squiggles that everybody rips off? Oh, yeah, I know that band. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I Joy Division. the name of the band, but I know the name of the album. Joy Division. Joy Division, thank you. The yeah. squiggles. Just a beauty. I don't know what else to say about it. I Actually, you know what I'm going to say about it. It's got some texture. The layers here, when he etched them, gave it like kind of a, an indentation on each layer. And so... It, 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 it just feels really interesting. I think it would release food a little bit better. It reminds me a little bit of a Saison's knives. You know, they had that really interesting texture on the Damascus. Yeah. This has that kind of 3D effect. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah. You know, we actually had a little discussion in the comments earlier uh, about the copper Damascus in one of the other knives. I think it was that Sekimara, uh, Yanagiba. But uh, somebody asked if, if it would turn green over time as it oxidizes, like, uh, yeah. it, as copper does. Yeah. Uh, which, like, I think it, it might. I don't know why it wouldn't. I don't, I don't know why it wouldn't, and I'm sure, like, it would come off between sharpenings as well. Somebody else in the comments said that they, they had one, yeah. and it would start to tarnish after a little while, but they yeah. would just polish it up. Yeah, I mean, Barkeeper's Friend is a product that we love for removing patina of any kind or rust, um, and it's, I think copper was one of the first things it was used on back in the old timey days when it was yeah. first created. Um, okay. What do you get when you have a world-class blacksmith who goes into retirement that just gets the itch every now and then and has to make some knives? Yeah, a you, couple of fun little you, pockets. You get some knives from Ken Kigurasan. Um, we haven't had kitchen knives from him in, I don't know, five years, but he came into retirement to make a very small batch of hunting knives. And these are so cool. I love these leather handles. So cool. Yeah. They form to your hand. And the, it's so and, hard and to show on camera, but they have this really wild, kind of unpredictable wow. Damascus pattern to them. Because he takes old steel from like an old ship's hull or recycled, like he finds old pieces of farm equipment that are made from really quality, high carbon steel. And he, uh, reforges them like cleans up the steel and reforges them to make the damascus to clad over the blue carbon steel that he uses so each one gets kind of a different <clears> patina <throat> this one has kind of a coppery patina just from the, the the steel that he used there's no copper in there but these are really classic like yeah. such beautiful knives and what is i i could be misspeaking here but i feel like i heard that he used like hinges off the door from an old temple or something to make make this batch it sounds right. Kevin Kevin might be able to enlighten us if he's still watching, because uh, Naoto's left, and he's the guy that knows these things. But these are pretty spectacular. They have a super shiny polish to them, and yet they have this really rustic, kind of ancient-looking quality to them. Uh, and then the, <laughs> the leather wrap's really nice. It feels really comfortable in the hand. Um, we have a bit of a problem with wood and horn handles in Alberta in that they often crack when they get to our climate. And so this leather is just like future proof. It's, it's pretty awesome. And it's just going to get better and more beautiful as you handle it. It's going to almost form fit a little bit. Oh, get gross on. He just outdoes himself every time he makes a knife. I love this little tiny one. <laughs> oh, this little guy is so awesome. He's so cute. This would be a ridiculous use for this knife, but I feel like... <sighs> As much as these are built for functional blades, a lot of people would feel kind of bad like just trashing these. But one of the first jobs you do after you, like when you hunt, is you have to like open up the animal to get everything from the inside out. 
and you need a short blade for that so you don't puncture anything. I think that'd be pretty good. Mike, I think you're getting a call there. Okay, moving on, we have some blue number one. Oh, these are from Murata-san. <clears throat> Speaking of folks that aren't making as many knives anymore, um, these are from Takeo Murata. Um, we've been carrying his knives since before I, st I worked at Knifeware, which is, I started like 10 years ago. Um, <coughs> these, one of first, uh, Kevin's first knives was one of these. Um, yeah, they're, they're phenomenal. We used to carry them with his Western handles, but he stopped making Western handles. And so we were able to get some with these wa Japanese wah handles. And they're just so cool. They're, they're really like, I use the word rustic too much, but these are absolutely in that quality. They have that really cool, dark Kurochi burn finish. I think this is probably the first knife with that finish that I really fell in love with. Uh, Cause it's just such a badass look. And you know, coming as a young chef from a world of like, German chef's knives, which are great, but all, all very shiny and polished. To see something that like looked like it had been in the fire was pretty cool. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, it, I was into it right away. Um, and, and if you look at my knife collection, it's mostly knives that look at this, look like this, because it's such a cool design. Yeah, it's awesome. They're really nice and thin too. They look kind of hefty, but they're, they're, they have a really nice taper. The, basically what that means, the edge is really thin. And so it's going to glide through like a sweet potato or anything really dense, really smoothly. And it's even, he's even hammered it a little thinner right here. So it's going to create like almost a little bit of an air pocket. So that means as you cut into something, it's going to kind of lift up over this ridge and break away from the blade. And you're not going to hopefully have food sticking to it. They're just really cleanly done. Yeah. Just yeah. really nice knives. We've got, we got a full range here um, from him. Well, sort of. We've got uh, a couple of smaller shapes. Uh, this little guy, <coughs> excuse me, is a <coughs> Kobocho. It's just a small knife, basically. Um, maybe a little tall to use in your hand, but if you want a small knife to use on the cutting board, especially for just doing quick jobs, that's a pretty great choice. This guy is a little longer and a little narrower. It's uh, 120 millimeters long, so not much, but it's, it's a little bit different. And then classic Santo Kunikiri, shapes everybody should have. Uh, high carbon steel, so high maintenance, but that means they're going to stay sharp really, really nicely and take a really smooth edge. Awesome. Okay, thanks. Was that Kevin? Ships and shovels. Ships and shovels. Ah, uh, what, uh, what, was alternating layers shovels? of ships and shovels of these guys. Thank you, Kevin. But like I saw the one, you so me, but I, I thought Mike was on the phone with you already. The one thing about this guy Kevin is he goes to Japan and he gets to see all kinds of cool stuff. And one of the things that he said about these knives that he loves. They actually look like an old sword. Yeah. Like if you, if you actually the see like a real 500 year old samurai sword, this mm -hmm. is what they look like. They have one in the Glenbow Museum here and it looks really? a lot like this. I hmm. pressed my face against the glass looking at it for a long time. And, yeah, and here we are letting you touch similar, this one. Right? Yeah. I don't know what's wrong with you. Yeah, I had several <laughs> things. I mean, so I've been told. <laughs> Listen, they're just fantastic knives. When Kagura-san goes, he's still around, obviously, making knives. But when he does go, he's going to take you all this fishing? with him. All these, no, Nathan, when he goes up to the farm to live. Oh, like where yeah. Your, to where the, your dog to, went. To, to the, the blacksmith in the forge in the sky. The blacksmith yeah. in the sky. Yeah, the, listen, his, his techniques and his skills are going to go with him. He's not one of these guys who yeah. trained an army of people to, to follow him, right? That, I he mean, did his thing. That was it, right? <coughs> so it's super cool because we've been able to see from when we first started buying knives from these folks. <clears throat> For a lot of them, they didn't have apprentices. And, and we've seen a lot of these people take on apprentices in the past decade, but, but some of them unfortunately haven't. And, and Kigura sends one of those. Yeah. <clears throat> now, this is cool. These, are, these four knives here are made by oh, I Murata. Just, I just did the thing. Oh. Get them out of here. <laughs> they, they're, they are awesome though. And they're under hundred bucks Canadian. They're like 186 for the bigger guys, 156, 132. Yes, yes, Kevin, the answer is yes. Kevin's got a sword, apparently. Yeah, bring it. I want to see it. <laughs> I'll get a watermelon. Oh, we got a Michiko Kyoto. Yeah, oh, this no, is, I speaking didn't of Michiko this. san. Oh, you didn't see this? No. Oh, I'm sorry, Sky. Sorry. Oh, no. Well, yeah. if this doesn't sell on Monday, which it will, but it if it will. doesn't, oh, it's man. very thin. It's I, so you know thin. what? I love the Michiko knives before. 
we often see them in single yeah. bevels because that's the more honorific knife is the single bevel, but... Well, it's also easier to engrave because it's hard to engrave without bending the knife, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially yeah, sure. when it's as thin as this guy. Yeah, because as you hit it, it, it spreads it out. And, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, you can use this. Me. You can use this. I know. Yeah, it's, and it's got like this got more of these. beautiful koi fish engraved on it. Oh, oh it's so awesome. It's so She pretty. is such an artist. Like she's so, just so good. She's got a killer Instagram too. Mm, yeah, follow her on Instagram. All right. Woo! So Kevin said his sword going? is yeah. 400 years old. Uh, I don't know. I would trade it for this thing though. I was just going to say, if you can't afford a 400 year old sword, I think this would be a good runner up. So this is a blade made by Nakagawa and they, then sent to sharpening by Myojin. Oh. What Which a is combo. very unique because you usually wouldn't send your stuff outside of your area, out of your team. Oh, so they, right? like they don't live nearby. Mio I don't think Myojin is, is in that, s you know, sphere. Yeah. Woo! Uh, Myojin-san is, or uh, sorry, um, Nakagawa-san is just a rock star. He makes such cool stuff. Like, look, look at Look that. at the details Ooh, on that. <laughs> They're kind of a little close to my face. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. Yeah, yeah, we don't want to sell a knife with, you know, blood on it. Yeah, it's bad for business, you know. Might get kicked off YouTube. Woo! Uh, CG Martin is asking, well, that's a nice segue. When are you breaking into the sword market? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Oh, well, man. the problem with swords is no one really needs one. The problem with swords is they're designed for one thing, and it's not making dinner. Mm, mm -hmm. so yeah. It's a little less nice than making dinner. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, if you ever get into culinary swords, though, you know, let us know. This cool, this cool knife, eh? This tall 210 Guto. Like, hmm. The height from the edge to the, the spine is usually short or tall for me. Tall, in, in this case, is, is from the, like, just look at that. Cool. Cool yeah. shape, right? It's not like that traditional Guto shape, a bit more of a drop to the tip there. Mm-hmm. Right? Nice and nice sharpening where we've got nice long bevel, so very thin. Uh, yeah, this is cool. This is a, I believe this is a Hatsukokuro Kurokaze. Kurokaze. Um, yeah, look at it. It's a white number two. It's $317. That's a unique little knife. <laughs> All right, that's really cool. Okay, do we have yeah. more questions at the moment? Well, we have a, we have a, We've got a wonderful commercial, commercial from a guy that actually looks strikingly like you mike what yeah our, our next sponsor so uh why don't we roll that and then we will get to the rest of your questions we have an hour left folks so in the meantime pop your questions in the chat we have one hour left to answer them and then we'll be back on monday all right have you or a loved one been affected by dull knives? Are you a victim of dubious sharpening gadgets? You may be entitled to get your knives sharpened. Here at Knifeware and Knifeware, we're always watching out for your fingers. Dull knives affect over 10 million Canadians each year. And did you know you could be among the affected without even knowing it? Did you know you're more likely to cut yourself with a dull knife than a sharp one? Common symptoms of a dull knife can include hating cooking, cutting yourself every time you prepare a meal, carrots flying across the kitchen, and that annoying smacking sound your knife makes when it hits the cutting board. Desire to order takeout, buying expensive pre-cut food, or just not eating at all? It's time to take your kitchen back. Join the millions of Canadians getting their knives sharpened. Save your fingers today. Are you or a loved one suffering from dull kitchen knives? My bruschetta used to be made with squished tomatoes and bruised basil. I couldn't get through a soup without my knife going dull. It's so humiliating to show up and people ask you, oh, why do you have a band-aid on your hand? I cut myself with a super dull knife. Life was hard and I couldn't figure out why my knife was going dull so quickly. I'm ashamed to say it, but I even put it in the dishwasher. <laughs> But then I discovered honing my knife, and everything changed. But now, it's delicious, fresh, brightly flavored. Do you know why? I found honing. But then, I learned how to hone my knife. I can do more for my knife, and in the kitchen. My knife can still do a good job. And I only have to do it once a week. And I only have to do it once a week. 
No more squished tomatoes! Honing your knife is not sharpening your knife. Side effects may include grating knife noises, impressing your friends, and startling sharpness. Remember, a ceramic honing rod is not a steel. If you're hearing unhappy knife noises, stop what you're doing and contact your local knife expert. Ask your local knife store about sharpening if honing is not enough for your knife. To help keep my knife sharp, I invest in a honing rod so I can invest in my food. We are back. I saw these knives. I was up in, in Edmonton at our shop there, and uh, Chris had a stack of knives on the back table. And I did the classic, what are these? And open it up and jaw drop. What, the, like, I've had a Kobunka by Yuki. Uh, so this is, this is made by uh, Yoshimi Kato. So I had a knife, I have a knife made by his predecessor. The Yuki, which you might know from Masakagi, it's a really amazing blade. But this one is better. This one is SG2, and it's got this just crazy cool pattern. It's kind of that, that chevron pattern, but I'm trying to get it so you can see. In the camera, there's like a, a good amount of depth to it. And I don't know how <coughs> he did this. Like, do you think that's a hammer? Uh, yeah, I would, I would assume so. I, like, I would assume so, but that doesn't mean I'm correct. Um, but but like, yeah, it, it's hammered or pressed into the steel some way, but it's, yeah, it's such a cool pattern. Okay. I think if you bought these three knives and you put them on a magnet on your wall, it would look sick. That would look pretty awesome. 210, Bunka, Kobunka. Like, this is a great looking set of knives. Like, we always talk about individual knives. You know, people come to the shop, they buy one knife, they use it, they, they go home and they find that, you know, it's not quite big enough, or they want something a little shorter, or they need something that's gonna do this job. Not often do people really come in and buy sets of matching knives. But you know what? There's absolutely nothing wrong with buying a set of matching knives, and this is a pretty dope set of knives. That's what the kids say, dope. Dope, right? yeah. Is that what, like, kids don't say that now. They just started they? saying dope, yeah. <laughs> Right, yeah. <laughs> About 10 years ago. Yeah. So another 20 and we'll be back. Listen, SG2 is an amazing steel. It's a powder stainless steel. It's so good at holding its edge. Um, it, it's, it's so reliably sharp that it does really outperform a lot of stuff. I also like a lot of carbon steel, like Algami Super, Blue Steel. I, I find their edges are really nice. They don't rust as badly as you think carbon steel would. Um, but I mean, I'm also a fan of white carbon steel too, because anytime you get to sharpen white carbon steel, once you're done, it's easily the sharpest thing in a hundred mile radius because it's just so easy to sharpen. I don't know. Um, Mike, I know you grabbed a Gihei earlier. I did, yeah. For C West, but I think they missed it. So would you mind just grabbing, <clears throat> excuse me, grabbing that Gihei again? And, once and, uh, one and done, sorry. Yeah, it was just over in the Yuto section that I put it back there. Um, for those of you just tuning in, this is the Fall Garage Sale, Knife War Garage Sale unboxing and Q&A today. Uh, so we are live for one more hour. Right uh, basically what we're doing is we've got this big event coming up next week. We've brought back a whole bunch of knives from Japan. Um, new stock, one of a kinds, some smoking deals, some rare stuff. Uh, a ton of stuff that we don't normally get to carry that we don't have space for in our stores. And so we are putting them all on sale from November 6th to 12th, starting at 8 a.m. Mountain Time online and 10 a.m. local in-store in Calgary, Edmonton, Ottawa, Vancouver, and Toronto. Toronto just opened. This is their first garage sale. So, um, yeah, we're showing off the knives now, helping you shop, answering your questions. We're going to be live for just under an hour more. So if you have more questions, pop them in the chat. We can help you out. Otherwise, we will also be live on Monday, starting just about 7.45 a.m. Mountain Standard Time, and we'll be live till uh, about one in the afternoon. So another great chance if you need some help shopping and need some help finding the right knife, you can also message us on, uh, on Instagram or on our website over the weekend, and we can, we can help you that way. All right, Mike, this is the Gihei for C West, right? Hap 40 is such a great steal. I unless you're gonna chip it, then don't do that. It's tough to grind. 
but that also means it's going to hold its edge a really, really, really long time. Um, and, and sharpening it, while it's not difficult to get the most out of it, you need to make sure you're going to go through a progression of stones. I'd say 400, 1,000, 4,000. I, I would definitely go to 8,000. It's such a fine steel that you can really, it, it can really hold that ridiculously fine edge that you get off something like eight or a 10,000 grit stone. Uh, it's just, you know, it's ultimate sharpness. Um, it's, it's basic in a lot of other ways, um, but it's stunning. And stainless steel, I didn't mention that before. Its dimensions are pretty common. Like it's not, it's not remarkably thick. It's not remarkably thin. Um, it's just really good. It's like, the Goldilocks knife. It's just right. Well, like I was saying before, I, I do know someone, uh, I know a couple of someones that have uh, the Gihei Hap 40. It's just their go-to. You know, and, and this isn't amongst a very extensive collection of stuff. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, there we go. That says something to me. If someone who's bought uh, tens of thousands of dollars of knives and that's the knife they use. <laughs> not a small number of dollars of knives, Mike. <coughs> I'm impressed. Um, this oh, it's, is for... that's not me. Oh. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> um, this is for Al, uh, Malik Amrani. Is asking if we have the Tsunehisa Niju SLD Nishiji Gyuto 210. If so, could you show it? And maybe, I don't know, just talk about a little bit about what you like about it. Yeah, I like that it's made out of uh, SLD. SLD's got a great edge. It's like crisp. That's how Ma Masashi described it to me one time. He's like, it's got a crisp edge. And it feels that way. Like, it just nicely bites into things. Uh, I do enjoy sharpening it. Uh, SLD is not, like, technically stainless, but it behaves very similarly. You do need to use the same kind of care you would on a carbon steel knife where you're going to use it and then wipe it dry. You're not going to let it sit there with, you know, liquid or lemon juice on it. And if it does, it's not the end of the world either. It'll tarnish a little bit. Uh, but... Uh, that tarnish you actually want to develop, that'll help protect this, the steel and slow down any sort of oxidation. Um, this is a really nice feel. It's a, I would say it's a, it's a little bit thinner. Like I was saying with the last knife, it's kind of not thick, not thin. This is, I would say, a little bit on the thinner side. Uh, and something I like about this type of a construction is this bevel here. I, I like the textured finish. I like the way it looks. I, but I like how the textured finish is going to break up some surface tension. The knife's going to glide through food easily. But this bevel here, I do like because uh, you may or may not know this, but a Japanese knife made out of three layers of steel. The outer layer or the face of the blade here is a softer steel. And then down here at the edge, the sharp part is the core. And that's a different type of steel. And that's the really hard steel. Now, if we were just to sharpen solely that edge every time we sharpen the knife, it would be like if you sharpened a pencil and only sharpened away the lead. It's going to get really fat, and even though you sharpened it, it's still going to be blunt. Now, um, when we sharpen it to do that properly, we're going to lay it flat on this bevel on a sharpening stone. And we're going to grind away that steel. It's going to expose more of the core. You help retain the original geometry of the blade, kind of when you come down to this part of it. So you've got the same taper, and it's going to cut like it's new. However, that can be kind of a tricky thing to do. And, and, and it's nice when you've got this bevel built in. It does guide you along. Um, so I think if that's something you want to do on your own, if you're going to be doing your own sort of sharpening, um, you know, we have a term you might hear us use now and again, it's, we call that hot rotting. Uh, it's only because there isn't a Japanese term particularly for that. Uh, I, I remember asking Shiba, one of our great uh, friends out of Japan, what the Japanese word for hot rotting would be. And he said, it's called sharpening because that's yeah. just how you do it properly, yeah. right? Well, we're not, you know, in, in North America, we're used to like, oh, you're sharpening. You're just sharpening the edge. You just do the edge, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, this is, I do like this handle. This is a, a white oak, but it's been, t it's been charred a little bit at the back. Just an aesthetic thing. I mean, there's that, that whole process where it, it uh, helps dry and harden wood, but not so much with this guy. Just, just like aesthetic. And it's octagonal. <coughs> so, uh, you know, overall... This is a really great knife, and I kind of just noticed it, but it's $188. And I think anytime you're at sub $1 per millimeter on your blade, you are in good territory. And I can't 
think of a knife that's made with SLD steel, um, that's a 210, that's that price. So that is one stinking hell of a deal. Now, you may know this already, on Monday, 8 a.m., Mountain Standard Time is when the sale begins. If that's a knife you think you're gonna want, what you need to do before 8 a.m. is check your autofill, get your credit card loaded in, do whatever. Buy it online, that's where it's gonna be sold, is online. It's not in the store. They might have different things in store, so you might wanna go there after. Buy it immediately, go right through the checkout. If you, if you tag that knife and you add it to your cart, don't stop and think about what else you might get. Come back and do that. The, 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 the website's gonna run all day long. It's gonna run forever. And it, this sale runs all week long. But if you really got your heart set on something, pull the trigger, go right through the process, that's how you're gonna get it. If you wait, someone else will do that and you will go to checkout and you'll have like an error message when you check out and, and then you'll just be sad and we don't want you to be sad. Speaking of not being sad, uh, Malik, was asking if we only have one of those, and I think with almost all the suit adhesives, we have a, a, a good number of them, right? They need you? We've got 12 Okay, yeah, we've got a good number. So like, they might still go pretty quick, but they're not gonna go like the first minute of the sale. So you, you've got- It's not like the refurbished ones that really do that? Yeah, it's the refurbished or the custom handles, it's the, it's the one of a kinds, but suit adhesives, uh, they have a good size production, and so they, they make, they make enough. I'll be honest, for a second there, I kind of thought that was a refurb. And I'll tell you why. Because when Nauta refurbishes a knife, it's pretty hard to tell. Uh, and also, that price, to me, that was the price of a refurb knife. That is actually quite a ridiculous price. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty great. Okay. Uh, you you want to buy someone a nice Christmas present? That's it right there. Those student heats and knives are so well made, and they're 20% off for the, the garage sale right now. Uh, so yeah, that's a good snag. So Sky is just grabbing me some knives. These are going to be for Land and Leg on YouTube. Said 135 versus 150 Petty. I would mainly be used uh, using it on a cutting board as opposed to in the hand. Okay. Um, also uh, Damascus stainless clad or stainless petties in that size range. Sky, sorry, I forgot to tell you, <laughs> stainless flat or stainless. Um, but what, yeah, are you, what, so are, what are we cutting? Under, under 225 US dollars, which I think is about 300 Canadian, so. Well, buy whatever you want. Um, so let's start with the first bit. 135 versus 150 in your opinion. Board work mostly. Uh, you know, I always err on the side of longer. It, and it depends to me on the, it kind of comes down to depending on the profile and what you're gonna do with it. Because sometimes a 150, might be a really long, slender blade. I think a long, slender blade that's 150 mils is gonna be great even if you're just trying to car carve a little roast chicken or something. Uh, and it's really good if you're using it for things like, uh, like a lightweight boning, like lightweight butchery. Maybe you're not taking out big bones, maybe you're cleaning uh, sinew off of a pork tenderloin. Having that skinny little blade is going to be nice because it's gonna poke in underneath something uh, and then you can clean it. Something like this guy, which is a little shorter, has a taller blade, right? And so if you're gonna be trying to just cut something on a cutting board, uh, that height's gonna be nice, you're gonna get some knuckle clearance. And um, uh, it'll cut like a small chef's knife. This one here is really cool, this camo, camo petty. This is a, this is a, a regular kind of show at the garage sale. This is a VG10, they're quite great, they're tough. These knives, um, I know a couple of my coworkers that have them and, uh, and abuse them and they seem to hold up pretty well. This is a Paco wood handle, all Paco wood. So it's a stabilized wood, so it's gonna be really resilient. And it's got a really long kind of collar here. And the thing I find with that is it allows you to choke right up on the blade if you're trying to do something fine, like slice thinly shaved garlic. But if you wanna cut something bigger and you need more room, you can pull your hand way back and, it, and you can do larger jobs with that. Uh, 150, it's so hard to, it, it, it's, it's not just about the length, right? It's about the depth of the blade as well, right? Where you see this 150 is a lot taller in my, my left hand here versus this guy, which is a little shorter, right? It's a little skinnier. So if you're gonna be doing 
work on your cutting board and you're going to be chopping, I think you're going to want to look for a blade that's a little taller as well as, as a little longer. I mean, err on the side of long, uh, unless you just really want something very compact. Um, yeah, then, then the 135. I don't know. Go with the 150. Yeah. If you're using it on a cutting board and you're not trying to like travel with it or do anything very specific, I, I err on the side of longer. I hope that helped. I imagine so. Uh, okay, <coughs> so next up for questions, we have got Aaron Schoini, uh says, I am 14, love Japanese knives. I want to add a Nikiri to my collection this fall garage sale. What do you recommend? And you know what, for everybody listening, if you are looking to get a Nikiri, these are probably gonna all be great choices. We get a million folks every garage sale, maybe not quite that many, but a lot, and a lot of folks asking about Nikiris um, because it's a great shape. It's one that people are maybe a little unsure of before they get it, so they maybe want to dip their toes in the water and try something that isn't too pricey. And so, yeah, a lot of folks get a Nikiri during garage sale. I happen to notice you didn't have a Manaka or a Mazaki, which are the two Nikiris I want. I want this Manaka, Nikiri, because look at it. Look at that thing. First of all, this steel is ATS-34, which you can commonly find in things like hunting knives and some garage knife making folks will use ATS-34. However, the way Manaka is treating it, he is bringing the hardness level up to a significantly higher level. So it's like in the mid, low to mid 60s. It's a very tall blade. It has this beautiful hammer pattern on the outside. That's going to be great. It's going to break up surface tension, so when you cut with the knife, it's going to drift through the food. Uh, and it's got this nice tall bevel, so when you're cutting something soft, like say you're trying to julienne a pepper, it's going to be really thin down here behind the edge. But if you do cut something thicker, like a squash or, or a turnip maybe, as the knife goes through the food, it's going to separate it slowly, and it's going to cut very smoothly. If you've got a really short bevel, it's going to split it apart and it will feel a little bit like an ax. And sometimes when you're cutting vegetables, like hard root vegetables, you don't want that because it's going to push it apart and break it a little bit. Um, now, Mazaki is my guy. I, I really enjoy Mazaki knives. This is a fully carbon steel blade, but you know what? If you're into these, you'll understand and you will obviously take care of it. Um, I think the best way to to uh, earn your patina, I like to think that you earn it because it requires good behavior, is get a bag of onions, julienne a bag of onions, make caramelized onions because they're delicious and you can put them on so many things. But through that process of julienne a whole bunch of onions, you end up developing a really beautiful patina. I find it actually has like a slight sort of rainbowy blue hue to it. Um, and the one thing we really appreciate about Mazaki the way he sharpens knives, he builds them so that progressive sharpening down the road, which might be you and it might be us, is a lot easier. He's making sure there's no low spots. He, he, he really puts a lot of effort into that sort of future of the blade, which is very nice. Uh, he's thinking about the end user, which is, which is not always the case. Uh, what else? We got this Nigara. Uh, this Nigara is beautiful. We've seen a few of these today. Uh, is this a little shorter? 165 feels like the edge is a little short yeah so it's 165 here but it's 145 ish 145 to, of, of edge if that makes sense to you so this is a little shorter um, and you know what shorter does is it makes the knife a little bit easier to handle sometimes uh, when you've got a nice long blade, it can be a little bit more to control. You get better aim when you've got a bit of a shorter knife. This is nice. It's beautiful. It's got this nice texture. It's got a Damascus finish. It's VG10. Uh, you know, VG10, you see a lot in Japanese kitchen knives. And honestly, that's for a really good reason. It's kind of like a lot of great characteristics. It's nice to sharpen. It holds its edge. It doesn't rust very easily. Uh, and and, and it doesn't chip as easily as some other things. Um, now, now that means when I talk about chipping, for those of you who haven't heard this or thought about it or, or know it, Japanese knives are made with harder steel, so 
that hard steel is allowing us to make them thinner and finer and finer edges so they're sharper and they stay that way for a longer time. But they can chip. And so don't try to cut something that you wouldn't uh, bite with your own teeth. I, I don't want to say that your teeth are a similar hardness to a knife. <laughs> However, the things that you shouldn't really chew on with your own teeth and the things that you shouldn't cut with your Japanese kitchen knife kind of cross over in the same sort of the Venn diagram of things. Yeah. <clears throat> the, the, the same things will chip both items. For example, uh, a road after you uh, crash your teeth into it riding yeah, yeah, a lime yeah. scooter at midnight. Right. So if you hit the bumper of a car with your Japanese kitchen no, actually knife. actually swerve to avoid hitting the if bumper If you swerve to hit the bumper of a car and end up crashing your Japanese kitchen knife into a curb, you'll or probably chip it. Or your teeth in that, in that yeah. matter, yeah. But then you get to have a cool gold tooth, so it all works Thanks, out. Thanks, Nathan, for that expert opinion yeah. on in how not to chip your knife. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> I do have a three more choices. Okay, I know well, you had, you had a yeah. question about Nikiri's. Well, our, our, our boy Aaron said, I'm very into carbon steel as a follow-up, so I feel... Like that will dictate how you talk about these three knives. Dude, I'm going to just go right back to this Mizaki. It's $275. It's an absolutely beautifully built knife. It's actually a little bit longer than, I think it's a kind of comes in at about a 170. Uh, I have a lot of time. I've got one of his Santokus. I love it. I love it. I love it. It feels so good. Even here, right? Like where we're talking about how this blade sort of gets wider as it comes up to the tang or to the handle where you're gonna pinch the knife here. Not only that, is that that starts here. So it's hard for you to see, but it gets wider from that spot. You can actually kind of see it right here. It's just, it is so comfortable to hold um, and, and it's beautiful. So Mazaki, M-A-Z-A-K-I, it's white carbon number two and that's $275. Now this fella here, we got $123. It's a Tsukasa Shiro. So Tsukasa is the knife maker uh, out of Tosa. So it's a little bit rougher looking and the grind isn't gonna be as even. Like there's a little bit of a shallowness here. That shallowness doesn't really affect how the knife is gonna work uh, at first. And, and then it only really becomes an issue as you progressively sharpen the knife and it gets thinner and then you run into that shallowness. So what has to happen as you sharpen the knife is you need to grind down the rest of it if you want to stand on top of a bunch of sharpening stones for a long time, that's a great way to go. If you want to fix that yourself. Um, but uh, yeah, it's beautiful. It's white carbon number one, which has got a higher carbon content. So that's going to be uh, quite hard. Um, and so that means delicate, but also means sharp. Um, and this has a nice octagonal uh, oak handle. The Mizaki is a uh, magnolia and it is a D shape. The D shape is, is that. See? I don't know. Uh, it, it's not an oval. It's got this little ridge here and a little bit more right hand oriented so that ridge kind of sits in the, the groove of your knuckles. It's just comfortable. Get the Mizaki. You're going to own it forever. Uh, now, we do have ever, a couple ever? others here. Sorry? Forever, ever? Ever, ever. Uh, if you want something that's really shiny and beautiful and gorgeous, but, you know, going to hold an edge a long time and not be the most delicate thing ever, uh, maybe you've got someone who really wants to join the club of Japanese kitchen knives, but maybe has a bit of heavier hand. This AUS 10 steel has been showing up as a pretty solid knife that way, but uh, it's gorgeous. It's got this kind of cherry red handle here. Just going to do this properly and pop the box underneath there. Uh, nice, nice, tall Nakiri. Beautiful, nice finish. Yeah, beautiful knife. Uh, $208. That is a lot of knife for $200. Uh, and then finally, I've got this. This is a uh, Tatafusa is the company that's making this. Cool handle. It's, a, it's called Bubinga, that wood. Often used for instruments, like fancy ones like violins and things. Uh, cool Nishiji finish. Nishiji is the term for the surface that we're looking at here under my thumb. And it's meant to be a finish that's reminiscent of a, the skin of one of those nashi fruit, that like nashi pear apple. So this one is uh, carbon steel in the core. So Aogami number two, and we've got stainless steel cladding. So again, when we're talking about these Japanese knives, we've got the three layers of steel, soft on the outside, protecting the hardcore edge. Uh, there's some real benefits to that, like it allows them to put some texture into it that you couldn't put on the core steel. Um, 
<coughs> pardon me, and, and in this case, it allows them to put a layer of stainless steel on the surface. Meaning, from this wavy line here at my fingernails down to the edge, is the only exposed carbon steel. That's the stuff that you gotta wipe dry. That's the stuff you gotta make sure you're not leaving water or, or you know, even worse, something acidic on, because it can actually cause rust uh, or pitting. Now, what naturally happens and what you do wanna have happen over time is as you use it, and use it, and use it, and then wipe it dry, and use it and wipe it dry, you get a gray cloudy look to that core steel. That's great. That cloudy look is actually an oxide layer. That oxide layer is protecting the steel below it. Don't scrub it off. If you want to deal with carbon steel, you need to understand that it will change and it will look like that. Uh, you will get water spots on it, and if it looks dirty to you, and if you want your knife to be super clean, shiny looking all the time, like that, you know you want to get stainless steel. All right, well, all that goes to say, Mr. Scroiny is going to go with the Mizaki. Great Sick. choice, Aaron. Do it. I hope you love it. I love him. So. Okay, Tom Dwan, if I'm buying a nice knife for a Christmas gift, what steel would you recommend? I don't want to give them too much of a fussy chore with cleaning, but also not something that dulls too quickly. So when we talk about buying a knife as a gift, we have about three rules. And the first one is buy stainless steel. Yeah, I, I mean, exceptions to every rule. If that person wants a Japanese kitchen knife for a present and they really want a carbon steel knife, or you know that they are very, very good at taking care of stuff. But if you want a knife that's going to make someone happy and, and not be fussy, then let's go with stainless steel. Now, the other thing is when you get a gift, what you really want to do is open it and look at it and go, oh, wow, that's so cool. And uh, there's a lot of that in Japanese kitchen knives. You can definitely get a knife like that, like that Hap 40 from Gihei that just is kind of a knife. It's got a handle, it's got a blade, it's steel. Yeah, so what? Well, these look rad. Uh, so I definitely suggest stainless steel, rad looking knives. Um, as far as a function goes, uh, these either a Santoku or a Bunka, uh, that's a kind of all-purpose, smaller sized all-purpose knife that uh, you can use for pretty much everything you're going to buy at a grocery store, all the food you're going to cut on a regular basis, and it's a, it's a nice size as a daily driver. Um, if you want something a little smaller, maybe what the person who's using the knife or you're giving the knife to Maybe what they're usually using is a small paring knife, getting a larger petty knife, as we call them, P-E-T-T-Y, petty. That size of knife can do for most people what they need it to, all right? Especially if what you've been using is your little three inch Henkel's paring knife, uh, and maybe something a little bit taller and bigger is gonna be off-putting or scary. Um, and this, um, this, this camo petty, again, is, is a really awesome knife. Um, we get them on and off for garage sales. They're really solid. A, a few of my coworkers have picked them up over the years. Uh, in fact, I've given one as a gift and, and they're really quite a tough knife. Um, and that's because they're not crazy, crazy thin. Thin also, thin, you know, hardness we talk about a lot and equating that to the delicate nature of the knife. Um, but the thinness of it is also very crucial to that. This steel here, AUS-10, this is the Sunihisa JUQ, J U K Y U, J JUQ, AUS 10, AUS 10, AUS 8, uh, ZA 18. Uh, what other kind of steels? Those are the kind of ones that we find are really good for being a little bit more resilient. In Ginsan? Terms, oh, uh, no, I, I think Ginsan is a little delicate actually. Um, yeah, so this is a stunning knife too. It's, look at this, look at this. It's like mirror finished but etched. So you've got this like crazy Damascus. I've never seen Damascus like this. It looks like a big whirlpool. How do I make you see that? That's good, right there. Look at that. Gorgeous. Um, that's a 228 or two, like $230 for that knife. Uh, that's gonna do what you want. Now, if someone's, you know, fears change, the, the, the Western style handle here, this knife with the full tang, is gonna give you more weight in the hand. 
Um, I remember when I first bought a knife, someone said, make sure you just get a knife with a full tang. That's how you know it's good. Well, maybe once upon a time that might have been true. But in our case, not necessarily. Japanese knives with their cool little handles. Basically, it's a look and it's a feel. Right? This is going to feel lighter than the one that's got a bunch of steel running through the middle. Which one's better? Neither. What feels better? That's up to you. This is going to give you a really nice light feel. And, and I know lots of people that started out by just getting that good trusty old uh, western style handle and then once they got one of these they had to buy all their knives all over again. You really get used to having a light knife. Uh, you don't need a heavy knife when it's really sharp and when it's really thin. Uh, so if that person you're going to give a gift to is really special and has been really good this year, this Yoshimi Kato SG2, this steel is wicked. If they're not super heavy handed, I'd say it's a really great option. Uh, SG2 is going to be sharp for, for years and years and years. Uh, in fact, this is one of the first things I gave uh, some of my family members was a, an SG2 knife like this. Uh, still going strong. Yeah, Yoshimi SG2. And, and, the, and this like chevron pattern is very unique. I've never really seen anything like it. It's got nice texture to it. And the texture is really helpful. You know, it's like it breaks the surface tension. It's like grooves in a tire. So, so you don't get that suction to something. Uh, and so the knife doesn't kind of get trapped or doesn't feel like the food that you're cutting is putting the brakes on your knife. And it just slides through really, really effortlessly. Uh, it's $410, but uh, you know, that's a lifetime of, of a knife right there for sure. Okay, what do we got next, folks? Next up would be a Kurosaki with a blue handle. Oh. Uh, Robert was wondering about the size and price of this one because we showed it in a previous YouTube video. Um, this one was the 180 Guto. I think we may have sent the 210 out to the stores already. Um, but yeah, these are totally gorgeous. I'm going to pull these out too just because like, it'd be rude not to show them off. <laughs> Absolutely. Rude not to. So we're talking about this. Our question is specific to this shape and size. Yep. Size and price. And we're just checking it out. All right. We are pretty much bang on 180. That's 179 and a half millimeters. Super nice little hook here on the handle, right? Like, I don't have huge hands, but you can see it fits in really nicely. It balances right here on the collar. Spot on, right? I hold a knife by the blade. You can see as you're holding it by the blade, it's going to cover up a bit of the steel, right? But you can easily pull the knife, your hand back. You're going to have really excellent control with the way it's balanced. Uh, uh, and something I really do like about Kurosaki and almost all of his knives now have this spine that drops down from the handle effectively giving you a taller knife without making the blade taller curve on the choil in here is really nice against your middle finger if you're holding it up against the blade like that especially if you're trying to finely slice something right? you're going to finely chop some ginger or a shallot or something it's nice to get your hand right up on top of the knife uh, like that. This Senko pattern's cool. It's like, it looks like sparks almost. It's like he's got sort of a square or maybe even like a pyramid kind of hammer that he's, oh, I'm trying to line it up here, right? Listen, Kurosaki's knives are very well made. The fit and the finish is about as good as it gets. The quality of his, of his craftsmanship is, is excellent. And that's why uh, you see his knives in some of the fanciest restaurants in the world, because he has become famous for just that, making very, very beautiful knives. And so for fun, uh, I also brought over the 270 and the 300 mil Sujihiki. Did I get that right? No, that's a 240 and a 270. I think 240 is a great size of a slicer if you're going to Carve roasts, it's pretty much all you need. But if you want to have a really beautiful slice and you want to do it in one smooth slice and you don't want to saw back and forth, 
Well, clearly you need a bigger one. And you know, something cool about a Kurosaki knife, like look how tall that is. Uh, if you feel like you're trying to decide between a 270 slicer and a 270 Guto, well, he's being nice. He's made it just a little taller and you can get away with doing both. So yeah, you could chop a whole bunch of onions. You can cut a big turnip with this guy and you can still slice steaks or, you know, slice raw fish with it. I'm sorry, I really want this knife. <laughs> You're not doing a good job of talking yourself out I'm of it. I'm selling them myself, sorry. <laughs> I really hope of, I answered your question there, do. but uh, yeah, do it. Kurosakis are great. I want to talk about this one because uh, somebody, person with a name. Lalsman. Lalsman, with some numbers after it, uh, was asking about this Masashi Hakuin, which is one of my favorites right now. My favorite knife changes a lot, but this is up there right now. Um, this is a 210 millimeter Kyotsuke, great kind of chef's knife shape. Masashi-san is easily my favorite knife maker and has been for a while because he is super skilled. He does this incredible thing where he forges the knife almost exactly to the shape so he doesn't really waste much. Um, he forges a really nice taper into the blade kind of from the tang up here where it's quite thick all the way down to the tip where it's quite thin. And so that means that when you sharpen it, or when he sharpens it, it's thicker back here and thinner up here. And it's, it's just phenomenal. It also means the knife is really well balanced, kind of right in the middle there. Right about there. Which doesn't really matter, but it keeps it from being too front heavy when you're trying to chop and use it really quickly. And so it's just it's a phenomenal blade. Um, SLD semi stainless steel. It'll oxidize very slowly, but this guy isn't really going to rust on you unless you chuck it in the ocean. So... Beautiful knife, simple, stunning. Also, this one is not on my own, this is in stores. You're right, yeah, they're asking about that. <coughs> in stores as well, but limited quantities. So grab it next week, ideally on Monday, because once they're gone, he's not making them again. Okay, what do we got next? Um, Knives. Asking, can you show, uh, I think you're just asking to see these two, um, sorry, the Sakura and and who and who is that? Sorry. Um, Sweet. Okay. Well, let's take a look at these guys. Uh, do they want to know anything particular about them, no, or just take a look? Check them out. Yeah. Um, they, they, we didn't have the 210 that I could find of this guy. But well, imagine this knife, but a little bit smaller. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really simple again. Um, beautiful. You can see just a hint of a primary bevel ground in there. So they really like it's it's thin to begin with, but then it. He grinds it down to a very, very nice thin edge. Thin, but doesn't feel too delicate or fragile, which is good because SG2 is a pretty hard knife steel. And so it is one of the more delicate ones out there that you can chip a little more easily. Um, we're, we're definitely talking laser category. Like this is just gonna glide through anything dense, you know, like sweet potatoes or, or potato potatoes or a big head of cabbage. This guy's just gonna fly through it. I would go 240 personally, but I also like big knives, so 210 might be more your speed. I like big knives. And I cannot lie. Uh, this guy, <clears throat> Munitoshi, again, simple, right? Elegant design, little bit thicker up in here behind the edge. So if you are a little harder on your knives, or you think somebody that you work with might pick it up and use it, or whatever, you just want something that's gonna feel like it's driving through food a little more, a little less laser, a little more workhorse. Um, beautiful knife. I can't remember what kind of steel he's using in this guy. WP2. Right, white carbon number two, pretty high maintenance. I bought a white carbon knife, my first one actually this year, and uh, even compared to my blue carbon steel knife, it can oxidize real fast and rust real quick. Uh, so if you have a kid in the house that distracts you a lot, um, you might not want to use this knife when they are awake because <laughs> it's going to get rusted on you. Not a big deal if it rusts, right? You can just scrub it off with a bit of Barkeeper's Friend or even a bit of baking soda. But uh, it is important to be aware of just how quickly it can oxidize. So, uh, you know, over time it'll build that nice protective patina and that won't be as much of an issue. But you do want to be conscious of the amount of care required by something like this. What else we got? We got a Kurosaki Kodama that somebody wanted to have a look at. 
I think they were asking if we had showed these already, and you know, it doesn't matter if we have, because we're going to show it again. And this is Makoto Kurosaki. Yeah. This is a cool shape. Not a, sorry, not a cool shape. This is a cool blade. Uh, we often talk about the San Mai or the three layers of steel. So we have a soft layer on the outside, hard layer in the middle. It's five layers. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that or not. There are two soft layers on each side. And, and you can see we've got the Damascus here, and then there's the core steel popping out of the edge there. But what's this in the middle? This like smooth, non-Damascus layer. Oh, that's another layer of steel. Sweet. Yeah. Why? That's a great question. Because <laughs> it looks damn cool. Uh, and this is VG10W. It's a very unique. It's actually quite a new type of steel. Uh, w is uh, wolfram or tungsten mm. is the element. So the, that means that <clears throat> Like the Cobalt Special, which is VG10 with an additional bit of Cobalt. This is VG10 with an additional bit of Tungsten. Uh, and uh, I'd love it if someone in the chat would tell me what extra Tungsten is going to do. <laughs> blank, blank, where are you when we need you? <laughs> is, it, is it carbides? Is it, <coughs> is it rust resistance? Is it toughness? What are we getting out of this? Oh, it's cool. It's real neat. Well, um, you're simple. Some people need more answers This than that. guy is really cool. What I like about it, we're talking about simple simple things that I like, uh, it's rough, right? it's got a texture. Uh, when they've etched it, they've etched it a little more, and so the, the layers of steel really pop up, and it just, it feels cool. Hopefully help with food separation, but it just is a neat feature. All right. I'm Konosuke for... versus Garasuki, what's the difference? Size. Size. Garasuki's bigger. Bigger, bigger. Yeah. Not like a little bigger. A, a fair yeah. big, bigger. Like, probably not, overkill and, for most chickens. And, and not just longer, but like longer, taller, thicker. Yeah. Bigger, better, faster. Harder, better, faster, stronger. Yeah. Um, if you're going to get into like those dinosaur chickens that like Cohen is getting right now at his butcher shop. I believe um, you mean dinosaurs, like chickens are dinosaurs. <laughs> yeah, they, they're pretty much dinosaurs. Like the roosters are like four feet tall. Um, they're monsters. Uh, so if you're getting those, you'll want a Garasuki as opposed to a Hanasuki. Same goes for turkeys or geese if you're a hunter. Um, otherwise, if you're planning to do like chickens, ducks, pheasants, whatever, that kind of thing, rabbits, uh, stick to a Hanasuki. You know, probably standard size would, would do the trick really nicely. Manaka N. Length, price. Is it Miojin sharpened? Let's find I'm out. I'm coming over with a Manaka N. All right. And I'm going to grab this other one. Yes, this is from Owl Woodworks. Uh, can I see the Manaka Kasuke with the B1 core and Damascus again, please? Curious to know edge length, price, and if Miojin is the sharpener. Miojin is the sharpener of this Manaka but not this Manaka. This is the Manaka N. This is the Manaka that's sharpened by Myojin. Not both. So uh, the Manaka, Kiritz, uh, Manaka ATS 34 Tsuchimi, sharpened by Myojin, is a 240 mil Gyoto. The Manaka N, which is Damascus, Damascus, which is just an excessive amount of beautiful badass. Okay, look at, if you catch the, the dimples just right, it's like, it's like Bilbo's sword. It, it glows blue. It no, glows blue okay. when orcs are near, you know? So clearly there's some orcs here in the warehouse. Because this guy's glowing blue. But seriously, like it's, it's got this crazy, it almost looks like kind of that oil slick effect that some knives have, but more tasteful. You want to give us a measure oh. on the edge there? Oh, I'm just like obsessed with this thing right now. Uh, looks a whole lot like, oh, a little over 210 millimeters. It uh, looks like about 216. All right, we'll call it 216. Yeah. I've always wanted a 216. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, again, yeah, a bit of a taper, a little, gets a little skinnier towards the tip. Uh, Minaka san, you probably know this, Al, because I know you watch a lot of our videos, but he forges his knife so that it actually gets thicker as it goes from the spine down to the blade. So it's almost like a trapezoid shape. But that, so then when he grinds down that bevel, it creates kind of this diamond profile. And so that really helps with food separation because there's like a ridge along that line, that grinding line. And so the food just like pops off. 
Just trying to see if there's any, when you look at it, if you're seeing any difference in the sharpening. Well, look at these really consistent lines, right? Yeah. I find Minakasan's sharpening is very good, but you do see a little more of the, like, like inconsistent polishing patterns. And I don't mean that as, like, a, as a dig at him. It's just, like, you know, it, it looks very natural. Yeah, well, that's sometimes why it's nice to have a, a blacksmith make the knife and a sharpener sharpen the knife. Yeah. But often we're finding blacksmiths are pretty good at sharpening their knives. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But Myojin sounds pretty... <laughs> pretty damn good <laughs> all right we got any more are we uh, are we done for the day it's almost four o'clock thanks everyone again that's tuned in to hang out with us today well, let, let's make sure we go over our housekeeping yeah yep. well the knife or garage sale starts next week starts monday at 8 a.m mountain standard time now in our time zone that we base the sale off of there is a time change on sunday so be aware of that um so 10 a.m. or 8 a.m. Mountain Standard Time, it starts online. If there's something rare or special that you want, grab it right away. Put that one knife in your cart. Don't browse around. Just buy that knife and then go back and browse around um, because other people are going to try to grab the knife that you want. So you want to just hop on it real quick. Um, I would suggest checking your autofill uh, on you know Google or whatever kind of account you have and just make sure that it's 100% accurate before then. Um, if you are in Calgary, Edmonton, Ottawa, Vancouver, or Toronto, we have garage sales in store in all of those cities. And so the sale starts at 10. People usually start lining up at about 9, depending on the weather that day. Um, and yeah, chefs and knife nerds come and hang out and, uh, and, and come to the shop right when it starts. But the, the sale runs all week. Like There's great yeah. stuff to be had all week yeah. long, especially if you just want a kick-ass knife for yourself or as a gift. Yeah. Also, when you buy a knife, if you spend more than $300 on your order, you'll be able to add to your cart a hat or one of these three t-shirts, and it will automatically populate a 100% discount. Free t-shirts. Knife for Ramones, Ramen Bowl, or Knives to the People. And you know what we haven't done in a while? Spin the wheel! Tell us more about the Clacker Wheel Monday. So every hour starting at 8 a.m. on Monday, we are gonna spin the wheel. And depending on where it lands, you either get a free item or an item at 50% off every time you buy a knife. So um, <coughs> it's good that, that discount or that is gonna be an hour, right? It's gonna be an hour long. Okay. And then we'll spin the wheel again at nine and at 10 and at 11 and at 12 and at one. So there's 11 and then there's a spin again. Oh, yeah, 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 that's how it's supposed to go. Yeah. So, yeah. That's uh, so if, much fun. I'm if, so if happy you well, made that stupid we, thing. <laughs> right? I, a, I want an excuse to, to build that, and B, I wanted to have a little reward for all the people that hang out with us for like five hours on Monday. Um, speaking of which, we'll be live on Monday for about five hours, uh, starting at about quarter to eight in the morning, uh, Mountain Standard Time, and going until we run out of questions or get too tired or lose our voices, which sounds like it'll be pretty quick. <laughs> right now um we're we got some demos we got some frying pan how to's demos comparisons we get, we're gonna well, we're making, gonna make ramen we're gonna make ramen yeah yeah we're gonna have we're fun gonna have fun stuff so hopefully you can join us for monday yeah and uh yeah good luck yeah if you got a question over the weekend um we'll try to answer questions on the help desk on the website uh, but if you shoot us a message on instagram we'll get back to you for sure um yeah. You got time for a couple more bonus questions? Of bonus course. round, let's do it. Of course. <laughs> All right. Uh, Malik wants to know, what would your recommendations for a 240 Guto under 300 be for this garage sale? All right, I'm giving that one to Nathan. And Mike, you take uh, Colin's question. Do you have any 180 or longer petties or Gutos? I'm looking for length, but a super short blade height. That reminds me of that one 210 Moritzbacher Suji that we had a while back. We might have something like that out here. 300 Canadian or American? Uh, I don't know. Is that Canadian or American, Melly? Because <laughs> that, that makes a difference. Well, what, show them anyway. We, we had some <clears throat> Nigara Gutos. Here we go. All right. So, okay. First up, Guto's under 240 Guto, right? Under 300. 
Regardless of what currency you're in, you would be a damn fool if you didn't try to snag one of these Niagara Damascus VG10 240s. These are under $300, the 295, which is just stupid. It's insane. For, for a knife this size, of this quality, of this beauty, is, is unheard of. Um, so I would go for the Kiyotsuke dip because I think it's more badass, but the uh, regular old Guto is still pretty awesome. Uh, really nice and thin behind the edge. So if you want a laser that isn't too light, go for that guy. Stainless steel, easy maintenance. Another really nice thin light knife from Makoto Kurosaki-san <coughs> is this Sakura, made from SG2 stainless steel. So even harder, even more edge retention, but even more delicate. So a bit of a balance there. And then lastly, we got two more. Um, this guy, really good price from Tsunehisa. It's 20% off. I don't know what the original price was, but it's now 273. It's AUS 10, great stainless steel, not too fragile, not too thin behind the edge. So more in that workhorse category. European style handle, lots of steel, full tang handle. So a little more weight in the handle there. A little more of the balance that you might be used to if you are used to European knives. And then finally, Hatsu Kokoro Kumokage. This is a um, Algami, so uh, blue carbon steel, uh, number two. It's a great steel, it keeps a beautiful edge and gets crazy sharp, builds up a beautiful patina. It's gonna change color and darken with time. This guy's 317 Canadian, so just over your budget or under it if you're in American dollars. Really, really kind of unusual shape too, but nice rock to the blade. And what was the other one? <coughs> Skinny Guto Long Petty. Skinny Guto Long Petty. I got, right. There's a couple like, single bevels there. I think this, I, I think the, the camo Petty, that's it's 150 mils. You can make it a Long Petty because of just how long the handle is on it. Right, I find that you can, you can choke up and be on top of the blade, but you can also really easily pull your hand way back on this knife. Just sort of depends on what you're trying to do with it. Uh, otherwise, I think you're going to get a similar feel with the, uh, the Gecko, G-E-K-K-O, the Gecko Bunka from Kurosaki. Uh, he does make the blade a little bit, sh a little bit sl more slim, uh, but it's also really light. It's really light, it's very thin, and it feels like that. Um, but uh, unfortunately, I haven't got like a 180 mil petty. I know that we typically carry a Tojiro uh, Classic uh, 180 mil petty. Uh, that's regular stock in our inventory, but I mean, Tojiro Classics are a pretty great knife. Uh, and then, I mean, depending on what you're doing, we do have a couple of short Yanagibas here. This is 100 and, uh, or it's 210 mils. Uh, and again, it depends on what you're trying to accomplish, but you might find a little short uh, Yanagiba does what you want it to. Okay. We'll be back on Monday to do this all over again. Real quick, if you want to ball out, this is a really nice skinny Yuto. It's a ball 180. Out. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's good. It's Kurosaki. sort of like the Gecko, too, right? Same yeah, very, very similar profile. Yeah. But even a little skinnier. Yeah. Well, thanks, everybody. <coughs> that was fun. It's three minutes to beer o'clock, and I am ready. Um, mm, hold on. Oh. Uh, I think this is 150, <coughs> but... Tall Petty Short Guto. Uh, this is the Hatsukokoro Hayabusa Blue Rainbow Damascus. Yeah, that's right. It's got copper and brass layered into the Damascus steel on the outside. 325 bucks. This is like a stunner. Uh, so yeah, as far as like a small but long knife, this is gonna do a great job. Okay. Awesome. Long, long Petty Short Guto just to me is just like big trouble little china vibes like i got a long penny and a tired, short <laughs> but that's what it did so yeah like, like we're wearing out here but thank you so <laughs> yeah. much this is we a lot barely of fun. talk anymore um so genuinely thank you everybody that tuned in and you know really like appreciate it. you know nathan and i we're literally seeing some of these things for the first time too so this is also for us as much as <laughs> if it is we for sounded you. like bumbling idiots at any point it's because, because we're, we it's were because we're bumbling <laughs> idiots and we're just good at pulling that and one nato off. left us alone yeah, he's, well, he's normally our, our rock, you know, but we're, we're left to drift at sea. Well, without he him is today. the smart one. Don't tell him we said that, yeah. though. Don't we'll go to his head. I'm ending the stream now. Okay, okay thank bye. you. Bye. Have stream. a good weekend. Bye bye. <laughs>